Ladies and gentlemen, hope you're all doing well. It's go time. Late night action. I'm going to be casting tonight, so we are going to be casting probably four different matchups, hopefully. We have a pretty good range of matchups that have been uh, signed up. We have Tomb Kings, Empire, Dwarves, all the good stuff. Yes, yes. So let's get this party started, man. How you guys doing? Hope you're doing well. And let's go see what the tail of the tape looks like for the night. So here we are. I was thinking about playing tonight, but wanted to kind of take it easy, rest the hands a little bit, and uh, yeah, go from there. So single faction tournament. We have the lovely Astrogoth, and here you can see all the matchups. So we got some good ones for sure. Ooh, this could be fun. Could be fun indeed. Oh my god, Subutai and Houseplan. Well, it looks like we're going to go cast that game. That should be a fun one. That's uh, two players who are, I believe, well, Houseplan actually hasn't, to my knowledge, he hasn't played in a tournament this season. This might be one of his first ones, yeah, that he's getting ready for. So we're going to go cast the Subutai Houseplan game. That should be fun. The leaderboard's coming together. So we got a lot of tourneys running. We had one yesterday. This is the top four, and we have a SFT tomorrow as well, and then we have a qualifier for new players on the 16th. So that's being run by Housecat, who's an absolute, absolute chad for doing that. So we got the new player and veteran qualifiers coming up. We got some land battle tourneys, lots of fun stuff. So currently this season, Serkia has been off to an absolute, absolute just run, uh, winning three tournaments. And these were three by threes and SFTs, and then we have Housecat in second, Scander here in third, Scrambled Egg, myself, Charix, Catholic. You can see the whole run of players. Oh, Houseplant did win one tournament. Okay. So it looks like he's going to be trying to win another one here tonight. Yes, yes. All right, man. Let's do it. Let's have some fun. And let me find these bad boys. All right. So I'm going to get Subutai. And uh, he does take uh, a little time to pick his armies. <laughs> Should be okay, though. Lobby code, please. RTK. Civil War must be cast. All right, man. Let's get it. Let's have some fun. Yeah, we had um, one of our top players actually signed up with Nurgle tonight. Scrambled Egg Special is an extremely good player, and he signed up with Nurgle. So, um, yeah, you'll be see, you'll likely be seeing Nurgle towards the tail end of the tournament, which is going to be really fun. All right. So, did I get the lobby code yet? Not yet. I'm just going to have to go find it. So, let me see if I can get this. Oh, man, I have no idea what lobby this would be. There's only a couple with spectator code. Uh, yeah, only a couple here. So I'm probably going to have to message old Houseplant as well. He could be hosting the lobby as well. And let me find him. Houseplant. Lobby code, please. Cheers. All right, man. Let's have some fun. Let's get hyped. Damn, you need to sleep, I know. I just felt like doing it, you know, a little bit later tonight. I prefer streaming at night, actually. preferred to, as opposed to earlier in the day, but... Why is this game so expensive? Yeah, it does suck. Um, in terms of getting into multiplayer, probably the most cost-effective way. Obviously, you get the base game. Uh, and then you just you know focus on, I would say, three factions that you want to play. And, and then it's it's not quite as bad, and if, especially if you wait for sales and things. But yeah, it is, it is a little bit of a problem for sure. The cost of getting into multiplayer is tough. Um, it is tough. Something I've, I'm going to... I need to make a video on it. Probably would be more effective than just telling them in Discord. Is that... Um, you know, they could honestly just make all the factions free for multiplayer. You know, such a small percentage of the player base even plays multiplayer. And if anything, it could be like a marketing tool, right? Oh, this is going to be fun. So I allowed greenskins tonight. So greenskins were considered to be very OP, and many people are banning them in SFTs and things like that. But they only have a 50% win rate this season, and that's largely probably due to newer players playing them also. I still think greenskins are a top three, top four faction in the hands of top players, but um, I decided to allow them tonight. Kislev is banned in SFT because they're just so oppressive, and without picks and bans, you can't really deal with them. Uh, but in this situation, uh, it is going to be Subutai on the Greenskins and Houseplant on the Empire. Houseplant is probably one of the best Empire plays, players out there when he's playing his uh, his best. So, Why do the Ogre Kingdoms? Oh, no, Ogre Kingdoms are fine. They got nerfed. Um, they didn't fix all their bugs, but they did get nerfed to an extent to which they're fair. It's just, uh, you know, you what you saw was is you saw a lot of really sweaty high-level players playing the Ogres because they were OP. You know, you get these... There's a lot of people like that who will just chase the meta and play the most OP stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's the same in every single RTS or competitive environment, right? Um, and they were playing Ogres, and when, then when Ogres became bad, they kind of threw them away, and it kind of revealed the truth is that there wasn't a lot of Ogre mains out there to begin with. Um, people were just playing them because they were OP. Yeah. <clears throat> Kislev is very buggy. Uh, Greenskins are just really strong. They didn't. Re they don't really have any counterplay. Um, th this was the opinion at the beginning of the season. There, ha there were some minor changes in the most recent update. So yeah, we're gonna let the Greenskins fly and see how they do. Flying Taco needs to swoop in. Yeah, Ogres are still good though. I I've had success with them. I played them in a couple matches um, this season and have had a decent run for sure. 
It ain't bad, man. It ain't bad. But this is going to be fun. We got two very sweaty players here going at it. And um, yeah, it's going to be Greenskins versus Empire. Classic matchup. The Battle of Blackfire Pass here on the edge of the Darkwood. So shout out to our awesome map makers. This is a great map, by the way. Really nice. Uh, one of my favorite ones, hands down. Yeah. Uh, Sky Striders got nerfed, which is kind of weird. I mean, they were good and all, but I felt like they're really expensive. Um, really, really expensive. <clears throat> but Ogres are still a great faction. Like, you could totally win SFTs with them. Uh, let's take a look at the stats a little bit while we got some time. So looking at this season, now keep in mind the Kissel stats aren't going to be super accurate. Well, they, I suppose they are, but they, they've been skewed a little bit by the range of skills of play. There's not enough games really to be accurate yet. But Kislev is obviously the strongest faction. Norska is up here, but Norska has plenty of counterplay in my opinion. Like if you look at Norska, I would say, yeah, all these factions. Um, yeah, Korn, I don't know about that. Lizardman can definitely take on Norska. Kislev can probably take on Norska. Um, they have, like, a lot of these are so close. Like, there's only a couple games played, so it's not super accurate. Interesting, you see Vampire Counts doing well. 0-5 against Bretonia. Looks like they're getting crushed by the Bretonians and losing to Zinch, but doing pretty good against a lot of the other factions. But, again, it's still early on in the season. We just have started a new season, so the data is still trickling in. But, um, yeah, Norska isn't bad, in my opinion. Like, honestly, if I had to give you my assessment, I would say... Yeah, Ogres are sitting around 45%, not bad. Nurgle's even doing okay. And Empire's a little bit rough, but Empire is a really high skill cap faction. If you get Empire in the hands of somebody who's like really high level and has really good micro, they can be devastating because grenade launchers, heavy cavalry, you have a lot of units you need to rally, your, your characters can be squishy, so you have to watch out. But in the hands of somebody like Houseplant, they can be terrifying, right? I feel like Vampire Coast kind of sucks a little bit. I feel like Corn sucks and Skaven sucks. Grand Cathay, I feel like they don't belong down here. I just think a lot of good players don't play them. Um, but I feel like Corn, Skaven, and Vampire Coast are pretty bad. Um, Nurgle's also a little bit haggard at times, but they at least have some tricks. All right. So, yep, looks like Houseplant's ready. Let's get this party started. Any chance we get to see the Orc Chungus? Probably not. You're most likely going to be seeing um, a Goblin Great Shaman of some sort. So just trying to snipe the Empire Lord. But Houseplant is, he's the type of player who's going to just bring like a Balthazar Gelt on foot in the back and just like leave him there, <laughs> you know, to avoid his Lord getting sniped. I mean, in my opinion, you go Toddy in this matchup. Toddy is incredibly good. Greenskins are a low leadership faction and they have a lot of, you know, things that are contingent upon their leadership. So having Toddy and Burning Head is, is my auto go-to in this matchup. Typically, I, I have struggled with this in recent times, this matchup. But um, I think someone like Houseplant, he's just S-tier at protecting his grenade launchers and things like that. So I think he'll be able to figure it out. Wow, look at that build. Yeah, this is... So I wouldn't have even thought of this. Because in my head, that build that Houseplant has, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to lose to the board boy Biggins. Right? But I, what I think is going to happen from old Houseplant here. And Houseplant is, in my opinion, the GOAT of Warhammer 3, um, for sure. When we have the highest stakes tournaments, he consistently wins them, you know? Sure, might drop a game here and there, but um, Houseplant is for sure, in my opinion, the go to Warhammer 3. Uh, yeah, so he's got triple triple Knight of the Blazing Sun. Is Are we going to be seeing a Plague of Rust build? So he Plague of Rusts the Boar Boy Biggins, brings them down to 25 armor and steamrolls them with the Knights of the Blazing Sun? That could be a really interesting tactic. I'm curious about that. Or is Balthazar Gelt going to be Blob Punishing? Blob Punishing against Greenskins isn't very good because they just go super wide. But man, this is wild. No, Wurzag isn't the meta anymore. He got nerfed because he was just stupidly OP. Um, so yeah, they nerfed Wurzag. So now you, you usually see like the goblins. The goblin heroes are really good because Rampage got buffed, guys. In the most recent patch, we saw Rampage get a huge buff. You don't need to have any conditions now. So you can use the Night Goblin War Boss with the Fermented Fungi ability to Rampage enemy cavalry and drag them to their doom. Um, yeah, <clears throat> it's pretty cool, man. No, Houseplant's really good at Empire. He's very good. They're one of his mains, for sure. I, I would say he's probably been the best Empire player in Warhammer 3. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know who else really plays. Yeah, I would say Houseplant, Blood Penguin. Um, who else really mains Empire? Um, I play a lot of Empire my, myself. But, um, yeah, I'm not as good as those two at the Empire, probably. Yeah, hard to say. All right, guys. Taking a look here at old Subutai. Subutai is going to be using the Night Goblin Shaman. And he's going to be on foot. Interesting. So, very, very small target. And... You're just using him for the Fermented Fungi. It has a 75 meter range and it rampages, so that's like super, super good. So the meta is definitely shifting back to the Fermented Fungi. Uh, on top of that, we do have a bunch of Orc Boys. And yeah, against Empire, like Orc Boys will, will defeat State Troopers. They're shielded and hit pretty hard for their cost, so it's not bad. And you got Squigs there and Savage Orcs. Just a very wide wah. The one thing I'm surprised we're not seeing is some Archer play. 
like maybe like three or four error boys I think is pretty good for keeping grenade launchers honest. Although at this point, Subutai can use the Night Goblin War Boss to rampage their grenade launchers to their death. But um, what I would think would be the meta would be Night Goblin War Boss on his squig so he can rampage grenade launchers, okay? And then what you do is you bring the River Troll Hag and you fade a Buna the other ones. So basically you can just chain cut down all of those... Um, you can chain cut down all of those freaking uh, those grenade launchers, which are the biggest counter to your build. Turn the guys, uh, turn guys, pretty underrated. Don't stop short. Me. Yeah, I mean, I would say I'm in, I'm a I'm a top five empire player for sure. Um, but yeah, there's not too many of them. <laughs> That's the thing. Like people who actually like play the empire, not necessarily because they're like you know, yeah, it's just like main somebody who like always has them in the repertoire. Yeah, but House Plan's definitely better than I am. So <laughs> let's be real here. All right, so for Houseplant's army, he's got a flagellant front line. It looks like he's going on a... If this wasn't Houseplant, I would say this kind of looks like a bit of a meme build, but he does have the flagellants, which they can honestly go fisticuffs with the Orc Boys. They hit hard, they are unbreakable, and they will serve as a good anvil and also a bit of a hammer themselves for the Knights of the Blazing Sun. So the Knights of the Blazing Sun are just the Terminators as it pertains to killing infantry. They hit super hard. Charge bonus of 80, great weapon strength, excellent melee attack. They do have Buna as well. Um, I mean, not Buna, excuse me. They're resistant against Buna because of the spell resist here of 25%. Kind of like Dowie Cavalry of sorts. And yeah, I'm really curious how he's going to make these work. Because Subutai is just going to be calling in Mass Orc Boy Biggins. But yeah, Gelt was the question. So Gelt is going to be on horseback. And yeah, he's got Plague of Rust and Searing Doom, which is an excellent combo. Searing Doom does a ton of damage for its cost. You just drop this on like a blob of infantry or archers or whatever, or, you know, cavalry. And yeah, it's going to be a Plague of Rust build. So I was correct. I was correct about this. It is going to be Plague of Rust on Orc Poor Boy Biggins using grenade launchers to harry the infantry. And this is what Houseplant is really good at. He's just going to be protecting all of his grenade launchers with his heavy cavalry. Uh, but the Rampage could be really curious. Yeah, Subutai probably should have put his goblin on a mount. Having him on foot is really going to take away a lot of his counterplay. I don't know if this was a mistake. You can see the Boar Boy Biggins are out. And if he gets a Rampage off, okay, he gets a Rampage. And this is exactly what I thought was going to happen. So he Rampages the Outriders. They're going to be charging in, and the Boar Boys are just going to massacre them. So Houseplant is immediately going to be down. Uh, one grenade launcher here. The other grenade launcher is going to be shooting, but really, really good play from Subutai. And I'm surprised Houseplant didn't see that coming. It, it was a pretty obvious tell that the Night Goblin was moving over that way. And uh, yeah, he just is going to be sacrificing a grenade launcher out of the gate. So really, really good opening for old Subutai. That was a great one. Uh, in the meantime, Knights of the Blazing Sun are nearby. Fermented Fungi does have a long cooldown. Uh, it is going to be, what, a minute and a half, is it? Yeah, so there it won't be for a little while. But that was a really, really nice catch there. And uh, he certainly could have avoided that. Houseplant could have just... He's on foot, so he could have just moved away and used the grenade launchers elsewhere. But now his grenades are going to be shooting in. He gets a big salvo on those Orc Boys and the Forest Goblin Spider Riders. And he's actually threatening Subutai's home point as well, trying to maybe threaten a triple cap here and keep him in the pits. Now, ooh, you better be careful with these grenades, man. Yeah, he's, he's getting a little bit danger close with some of these bad boys. And on the backside, we got Spearmen, and uh, they are going to be harried by some Savage Orcs and some Goblins. And uh, Subutai has a big army in the bushes too. But one Knight of the Blazing Sun is probably going to be enough to keep this on uh, this army honest, I would say. So check out this power combo here. We get the Plague of Rust on the Orc Warboy Boy Biggins. So their armor is 25, and the Knights of the Blazing Sun are going to move in. Really nice play here by the Orcs as well, though, using Spider to Bad Moon to give them a big stat boost. But yeah, they get wrecked pretty hard. You can see they're melting, Searing Doom going down. And that is going to be one Orc Warboy Boy going in the trash can. Now, I really like kind of the strategy of Houseplant's build. Because it, historically, if the Empire had the advantage in the Cav game, they could really dominate the Greenskin Infantry super hard because their heavy cavalry were good. But then at the end of Warhammer 2, what happened was uh, Creative Assembly buffed the uh, Orc Cavalry to have a ton of armor, and it completely changed the matchup. But the Plague of Rust there seemed to work pretty well. And it's always nice to see like direct damage spells not being the epicenter of action. And he does have uh, old Subutai triple capped right now. So Subutai is going to need to do something. The way he's playing, a little bit too cagey maybe. He's got a lot of units here. He needs to collapse out on the middle and start sealing objectives. Because Houseplant's going to be really, really cagey on these points. So we do see a Fermented Fungi going down again on the Outriders. They may survive this time though. Because the Rampage is going to be over in 7 seconds. And um, there are Flagellants underneath them protecting them. Now on this side, another nice catch by the Greenskins. Greenskins are able to get the Squig Herds on top of the Outriders with Grenade Launchers. So the Grenade Launchers need to be careful, but Knights of the Blazing Sun coming in for Sigmar, baby. Fully erect. Going to be charging out of the tree line and hammering down these squigs. And those squigs are going to get wrecked really, really hard by Knights of the Blazing Sun. You can see they're just crumbling, folding super quickly. And the uh, Fermented Fungi, unfortunately for old uh, Subutai there, wasn't super great. And it looks like the Grenade Launchers are able to get away. Spider Riders, though, pushing through the very tattered Flagellants and moving on and pressuring. Balthazar Gelt taking sun damage. And now we see the triple push here from Subutai. So Goblins and Savage Orcs moving out to threaten the back objective. 
and the middle objective is being swarmed by the Greenskins as well. So this is going to be a very, very cagey game. Empire's got Flagellants and Empire Knights on the way in. You see a couple Fanatics being thrown. <laughs> that one uh, that one poor Flagellant here, he's, he's trying to dodge them. Those are super OP in Tabletop, by the way. Flagellants are not Flagellants, excuse me. Fanatics are one of the most broken things in Tabletop. So I think that we're going to be seeing Houseplant abandoning the back objective now, most likely. I think that um, it's getting a little bit dodgy over here. He's probably going to relocate and start playing the middle point. Flagellants being uh, sacrificed to Sigmar in the middle, so those bad boys are going to get just absolutely massacred and cut down by hordes of greenskins. But, you know, this is what they want. This is like the Sigmarite power fantasy, you know, going out on your um, naked body, not your shield, I suppose, uh, for Sigmar. Yeah, that's totally it. 68 flagellants, not the blessed number, but close. And on the backside, we do see one Knight of the Blazing Sun. So they started to rotate towards the middle, but then he came back. And this is very powerful, right? Knights of the Blazing Sun are, like I said, Terminators of Cavalry units. These goblins are going to get wrecked. And the back objective is going to be stabilized for Sigmar. It's not going to be going to the Greenskins, which is pretty big. Although the middle does go to the Wa. And the top side here, objective number one, it is still pretty uh, heavily contested. Looks like there are some grenade launchers still very functional in the tree line. Knights of the Blazing Sun rampaging. And once again, we see Subatai's heavy cavalry getting wrecked by the Plague of Rust. So the Plague of Rust power combo. Very, very cool, man. I love to see it. So Plague of Rust goes down to the Broken Tusk mob. They get absolutely flattened by the Knights of the Blazing Sun, or Empire Knights, actually, with grenade launchers, because grenades do really good damage against light armor as well. So he uses the grenades to do good damage against the cavalry as well. And the Empire really taking advantage of its mobile core and not getting caught. I think it's a big mistake by um, the Greenskins here not to have Fate of Buna. A Fate of Buna is, is pretty much an auto-take, in my opinion. Um, you just bring a River Troll Hag and you just cast Fate of Buna on the, either the Cavalry or the Grenade Launchers. It's insanely powerful. Um, as somebody who mains Empire, that's one of the things I really dread when I'm using the... Like, if you use Fermented Fungi plus Fate of Buna, I feel like you could really, really dominate the Empire's mobility game. But in this case, he doesn't... I don't even know if Subutai is called the Cast Route yet. That's very strange. Oh no, he does have a Goblin Shaman. Okay, so he's got Curse at a Bad Moon and Sneaky Stabbin. So he's probably been buffing up his Orcs. And there's a Curse at a Bad Moon going down there. Not bad. Fermented Fungi once again rampaged in melee, but they're uh, only fighting Haggard Goblins. Although they do have the Anti-Large and 44 melee attack, so I suppose they're doing some good damage. Now looking at the value, this is a really, really close game. Absolute knockdown drag out fight. On the back, a couple Flagellants chilling out on the point, but the Greenskins uh, are pretty well secured here on this position. A couple Goblins, though, could lose it to these Knights of the Blazing Sun. The Empire has a bit of an exodus of some of their cavalry. Outriders being pushed back as well. Flagellants and Empire Knights trying their best to fight up on the middle point. Back point has once again been jacked. So Subutai with the scraps. I like this. So what happened was his Orc Boys got routed, right? And then they, um, and then they uh, came back. So the Empire wasn't diligent to protect this. I would imagine that maybe Houseplant's going to be sending some Flagellants to re-secure this objective. He has plenty of time to fight this. Both players do. Uh, obviously, it's very early on in the game, and as the battle becomes more like open field and wide, I feel like the Empire's mobility play might get a little bit stronger. A couple Orc War Boys have come back here, and uh, it looks like the Greenskins have managed to secure their back objective, although a couple Flagellants, these guys didn't hear any bell whatsoever. Uh, they're, they're trying to come around and get this point. A couple grenade launchers lurking in the trees, shooting wherever they can. And we do see the Plague of Rust going down onto Swamp Things. They're not Stone Trolls, so the armor isn't as big of a variable for them. But yeah, I would say Houseplant, the biggest signature of his playstyle is grenade launchers. Like myself, I, I tend to like um, Huntsmen, Spearmen of the Shields, um, Monstrous Lords like Horus Toddbringer, which are very viable as well. But Houseplant has always been, an, I, I usually always have at least two grenade launchers. But his builds will consistently, regardless of the matchup, almost always have like three or four. And his micro with them is very, very good. Um, so we do see the Swamp Things chasing off some of the Empire Knights. Subutai is uh, getting a nice triple cap here. There are going to be some Flagellants heading over to try and re-secure that back point. In the meantime, a couple Spider Riders lurking around. And they're clearly going to be trying to weasel their way around onto the Grenade Launchers. And Balthazar Gel, he's even got his Pimp Cane out. He's trying to fight. But Houseplant's pressing that back objective as well. We do have a couple Orc Boys who are going to be trying to stop it. And um, no Missile Units really for Subutai. He is just doing a pure, as I like to call it, a pure Unga Bunga build, just pure melee. Um, he's got a lot of cavalry and mobility as well. But I, I, maybe he was a little bit nervous about the Empire Heavy Cavalry just plowing through his archers, which he might know Houseplant's playstyle, right? They're clanmates, and uh, I would assume they're kind of in the same circles of communication. And we do see the Boar Boys once again chasing off the Knights of the Blazing Sun. Uh, this time, no Plague of Rust on them, so they will decisively win that fight. The 85 armor, the anti-large bonus, they have a lot of things that are very, very good against the Knights of the Blazing Sun. So slight value lead here for Houseplant, but he is struggling to maintain the objectives. Uh, Flagellants will probably win this fight 2v1, but it's going to be an ugly one. They're going to take a ton of casualties. Savage Orcs are really, really good at just cutting through light armor, and Flagellants are literally just naked dudes with uh, clubs. So I think they'll be able to hold just because of their unbreakable leadership, which is very, very nice. 
We do see the flagellant sitting on the point here, and uh, Houseplant's trying his best to clean up his backfield and stabilize his uh, his grenade launcher core, which he has done. We do see the Night Goblin War Boss. He's waddling around trying to find his home. And in the back objective, it looks like some uh, some flagellant 69, baby. The blessed number of Sigmar. It's still going. Uh, they might be able to win this 2v1 fight, especially if some of the grenades move over. So you can see the maneuverability of the Sigmarite army certainly paying uh, huge dues here. But Subutai has passed them on points. This is a really, really, really scrappy game. But Greenskin leadership could come into question here in the fourth quarter as they start to get tired and the Waz start to run out. Because the Greenskins have had WA for most of the game, right? But you can only do it so many times. So they're going to be, uh, you know, running out of steam to an extent. Uh, the Greenskins do have their cavalry back. Certainly a little bit of housekeeping needs to be done. And on the backside, we got some Wolf Riders coming around. Uh, is he? Yeah, the objective still is in control. And the Wolf Riders could actually kill these Flagellants, likely. Especially if they uh, uh, help the Savage Orcs before they die. And that would maintain the objective. Because it looks kind of like Houseplant's starting to take over the mobile game a little bit. What are these? These are Outriders Grenade Launchers. He's just grenade launching. That's just what he's doing all day. And some heavy cavalry Knights of the Blazing Sun coming in. He needs to unsummon these ones or pull those bad boys back in. And Orc War Boy Biggin's going to be taking a fight for some Demi Halberds. Interesting. So we see some Demogriff Knight Halberds coming in, but look at Cursed a Bad Moon. It also applies a uh, melee defense debuff, which is really, really clutch. I love that play by Subutai. Very, very cool. So debuffs the Knights of the Blazing Sun, or the Demogriff Knights, excuse me. But there's going to be a fat Searing Doom coming down from Gelt, which could be helpful. But these Demis are getting the business pretty damn hard. But so too are the Orc Warboy Biggins, but from a cost perspective, that was a winning trade for the Greenskins. And Subutai was down by about 600 value, but when he got those Demogriff Knights with Halberds, that changed the dynamic of that fight for sure. What a good scrappy game between these players for sure. This is a really, really, really good match. So Grenade Launchers, 185 kills, 90 kills on these ones, and 158 on these ones. So they're just going balls deep on the formation. I really like this play here by Subutai. Using the Goblin Wolf Riders, he should have charged the Flagellants instead of just kind of trickling in, because now he might actually lose it. Uh, to the flagellants there, but he is maintaining that objective. And every little angle of pressure you can put on a player like Houseplant is super important. And Houseplant's going to need to get objective soon. Um, he is threatening the back point. Subutai's going to be sending some Orc Warboy Biggins over there. The middle objective looks to be folding up, though. The Greenskins, uh, I think, are losing ground. And it's rapidly going to become a Helm's Deep situation on the back objective. Um, it's not... It, yeah, currently as it stands, I think if Houseplant gets the objective soon enough, he would just barely win on two objectives. Subutai's forces do seem to be running out of steam, but... I mean, this is a really, really hard-fought game. A couple Stone Trolls making their way out. Knights of the Blazing Sun do, uh, they do some good damage because Stone Trolls are weak to fire. No, they do have good armor, though, as well. I really like the Curse of the Bad Moon as, like, a debuff spell. It's kind of neat. The Dynasty Curse, right? Slower speed, armor, a bunch of different, you know, pertinent stats. Greenskin's going to be bringing out Broken Tusk Mob. Middle objective is belong uh, belongs to the Greenskins right now, but it's going to be flipping in a second. And the Wolf Riders do refresh the cycle charge. That was a good play there. Because Wolf Riders, they, you know, not slouches. They hit okay. Can probably beat up, you know, 20 or 30 flagellants, although their numbers are getting a little bit low. We'll have to see. The back objective, though, is being threatened. Empire's going to be sending some Knights of the Blazing Sun over. So finding, it's like finding a morsel of food after uh, later in the night. That beat up Knight of the Blazing Sun probably will beat those goblins. Uh, middle objective does flip. Back objective for the Greenskins looking a little bit dodgy. And in the middle, we do get the Broken Tusk Mob with Sneaky Stabbing and Spider to Bad Moon coming in. Really nice power combo of buffs. And that is going to be nasty. Their leadership sauce to the gills right now. Their melee attack and weapon strength looking really, really good. And it's crumping time, boys. Them pigs is hungry. And uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun going to take some big damage. But Gelt, once again, getting some work in there with those Searing Dooms. Those have been really good. Only 1,000 value, but that's about as much as he costs, honestly. So it's good. And yeah, the Broken Tusk Mob here might be able to carry the middle. Um, the middle does belong to the Empire now. So it looks like Houseplant was able to take that. Outriders with grenade launchers charging into melee. And he'll, they'll probably promptly be unsummoned. And this point is owned by the Greenskins. Houseplant better, uh, he better get on that, man. Because Subutai is getting pretty close to uh, closing this one out. Forest Goblin Spider Riders on the other side. Going to be chasing down the last of the Flagellants. In the middle, uh, looks like the Empire was routed. Subutai with the rally here in the fourth quarter. A couple Spearmen are going to be hustling up. Back objective is going to be flipping to the Empire. And now the Heavy Cavalry is going to be coming back in. And the Greenskins did not hear any bell whatsoever. We see the little Goblin Shaman here cackling all the way to the bank. And those Orc Boar Boy Biggins. And Savage Orcs going to be hustling up. Ooh, this is looking to be a good one, man. Looking to be a very, very close game in the fourth quarter. Here we have the Knights of the Blazing Sun and the Flagellants. 48 models left trying to win this grind. Knights going to be disengaging to let the Flagellants take the beating and refresh their cycle charge. Subutai, though, going to be force pursuing here. But we do have more heavy cab on the way in. And I don't know. I think that Balthazar Gelt might be running low on Winds of Magic. So now the Orc Warboy Biggins most likely are going to be able to pull this game out. Uh, a couple Spearmen coming in. And this is like... Why I think you need to mix in more spears, spearmen with shield in this matchup, is just to give you more kind of grind on the objective against the Orc Warboy Biggins fan. But 
we're going to see what happens, man. Back objective is firmly controlled for Sigmar. Uh, looks like he's going to be pulling everything to the middle, assuming that Subutai isn't going to be trying to ninja that one anymore. Flagellant's here getting massacred, but that's what they do best. Uh, value trading is very, very even. Has plans up by a couple hundred, but he's massively behind on, on points, like massively. He's going to be trying to sneak some cavalry around the side here, but I don't think old Subutai is going to let that happen. I can see the Empire getting the middle objective when the, the Spearmen arrive, but um, he brought the Spearmen out a little bit late, I think. A little bit late. So moving in are the Orc Warboy Biggins, going to be slamming into the Knights of the Blazing Sun. And on the other side, the Outriders with Grenade Launchers hanging tight, man. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to get it in time. It, he would have to triple cap these objectives. I mean, if anybody can do it, it's certainly Houseplant, but he's rapidly running out of time. Uh, we do see the capture weight in the middle starting to flip as the Heavy Cavalry do move in. Balthazar Gelt going to be intercepting the Orc Warboys, Boys, maybe. Um, does he have any Searing Dooms left? Hard to say. A couple Spearmen, that's a lot of capture weight, are going to be moving up. But once again, the Sneaky Stabbing is going to be in play here. Sneaky Stabbing, baby. I dig it. I dig it. And uh, that is going to be another bombardment going down on the face of the Orc Horbo Biggins. Very, very nice, man. This is a very good game. Both players have played well, for sure. It's been uh, quite a scrap. A couple of Flagellans trying to ninja that back point, but no ninja today. That is for sure. Spearman moving up on the point. And we do see the objective starting to flip a little bit. And once again, the Spearmen are going to get that grind going. Are they going to flip it in time? Subutai is going to be threatening the back objective with some squigs, which I really like. The middle is going to be flipping, but it's not going to be quick enough for him to get the triple cap. Um, yeah, just a little tighter objective play, and I think the Empire pulls that one out. But the Greenskins were actually surprisingly resilient. They really stood the test of time, and uh, they, they fought off the onslaught of the grenade launchers. GG well played. Game one, it's going to be going to old Subutai on the Greenskins with a nice upset there in that match. GG... Well played, man. I love that game. That was really cool. Uh, and honestly, I know a lot of you guys are, you know, the Greenskins are very, very strong, yes, and are much stronger than the Empire overall. But uh, Subutai also played extremely well. His his objective play was really good. Um, even though he lost a couple engagements early, he had some nice fermented fun guys in the beginning. And his cavalry play generally was quite nice. And also his composition of units that he called out was quite good. I think that in a game that's this incredibly close... The one deciding factor is the Demogriff Knights failing, right? It was a close battle. He called out an expensive cavalry unit, and it did nothing. It just got wrecked. The Demogriff Knights with Halberds got smashed, and I think that was the turning of the tide. I think if he just didn't bring out the Demogriff Knights and instead brought out, like, five Spearmen with shields, uh, I think that the Empire would have won that game. I just think there was minor stuff here. Yeah. Minor stuff. All right, guys. GG well played. Hopefully you enjoyed that. That's uh, the first of many games tonight. Very fun indeed. And let's see what uh, the scoreboards look like right now and how it's all going. All right, all right. And uh, here we go. Cool, man. Let the fun times uh, fun times flow. All right, tournaments. I would imagine that was one of the longer games because that one was very sweaty and uh, very, very intense there. Yeah, there's still a couple to finish, actually. So we started at what time? 6.30, so it's been half an hour. Since we started, yes, yeah, so we have another 15 minutes before the rounds um, run over time. So, Prepare for the Bear has won. Scrambled Lake Special has defeated Sunshine. Trex has defeated Goose. Uh, Eco has defeated Rock. And um, Platypus, yeah, all these games are still going here. But I would imagine most of them are on the cusp of wrapping up here. I would imagine that is going to be the case. All right. So, let me get this. All right. Just need to do a little bit of uh, admin work on the old leaderboard, and we should be good. So what did you lose your fanatics to on tabletop? Oh, they're so OP, dude. I, I haven't faced them myself, but I've watched them on many battle reports and they just are busted. They're really busted. Yeah. Statistics time. Yes, very soon. We already looked at the stats pre-turny, but um, yeah. We'll look at all the damage on the units. I would imagine the Knights of the Blazing Sun did pretty good until the, the Plague of Rust maybe ran out of steam a little bit. Hard to say. Hard to say. That was a very competitive battle. That was. That was very competitive. Yeah, it's very fun. All right. <laughs> See, which I says that was a really sweaty one. Uh, sure. So just need to do a little bit more admin work. Okay. And then we drop you out and we just need to fix your score here. Should be fine. Outstanding, man. Outstanding. How you guys all doing, by the way? Hope you're doing well. Uh, it's just turned in. Would you rather subject your wrist to rock climbing or arm wrestling? Probably rock climbing. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm like just like suffering, are, are you like just like a Slanesh Hellraiser demon trying to put me through misery? 
Uh, I used to arm wrestle a lot. I actually have a video of me arm wrestling. I could show you guys. Oh my god, yeah, from the from the college days. I was uh, like, I used to arm wrestle a ton. Like, I was very good at it, very very good. But now I suck because my hands are basically crippled with this autoimmune disease. Uh, I'm putting up missing posters for Lost Banshees. Have you seen one lately? We haven't. You know, you do see them occasionally. Like Banshee is like a a single terror unit isn't isn't a bad choice. I forgot to look at values. Oh well. We'll get we'll get to it. You guys more or less can use your imagination, so we should be fine. Uh, yeah, Ogre Kingdoms are more fair now. Yeah, they got nerfed. Uh, and, and even with some of the issues they have, they're fine now. It's not too bad. So only a couple of games left to go. Please post it. What, the arm wrestling thing? Oh, you guys actually want to see that. Lancer versus Great and Pasha versus Poseidon and Alls versus Bob that Builder. Okay, cool, man. So we're getting there. Tomb Kings are really fun. I, I love playing Tomb Kings. They're one of my, I would say Tomb Kings isn't one of my mains, but they're up there. They're like in, they're in my top seven. You have no idea. I'm glad. Yeah. I have a 10 month old and a kitten that just wants to sleep on me. <laughs> I need something to watch. I got you obscure. I got you, man. Sounds like a good life though. Sounds like you got a solid life there, buddy. I've been playing a ton of Slanesh. Slanesh has been, I, I love the way Slanesh plays. They're very fun. Um, I've gotten to, so this season I won one tournament with Slanesh and I got to the grand finals with them another time and I lost that. Um, and I got to the semifinals with them again. Like, I've been having a lot of success with Slanesh. They're, they seem very good. Very, very good. Uh, so here's a, yeah, with my wrist, I, so I had carpal tunnel and ulnar tunnel, which was fixed by my surgeries, but I have an autoimmune disease, which um, it attacks my tendons in my connective tissues in certain areas of my body. So it attacks my wrists, it attacks my hamstrings, uh, my Achilles heel. It's a nightmare. Yeah, it's a nightmare. It's, so that hasn't gotten better, but I can push through it to an extent, but it is painful. Yeah. I need to know before a Nurgle meetup if Skinwolf condoms will break from contact. Oh my god, dude. It's getting gnarly, Lich. <laughs> hope, you're, hope you're doing well, man. Oh my god. This, the Nurgle meetup. Wow. Yes. Any idea who, who those top seven would be for you? You mean top seven players or top seven factions? So if I'm playing in tournaments, um, I can... I can comfortably play Empire. So Empire, I'm pretty good at Kislev too, even though they're OP. I, I still know how to play them. So Empire, Kislev, Slanesh for sure. I'm pretty okay at Nurgle and Zinch. Um, Tomb Kings, I would say I'm okay at. Aside from that, Warriors of Chaos, I'm also, I would say, another one of my mains. Yeah, probably those. Yeah. Eat more meat and make some... Dude, I do, man. I do. Yeah. Did Total Tavern website die, or is it? It's probably your internet. Yeah, it's your internet. Everything looks fine on my end right now, brother. So we'll be starting the next round in just a second. Um, yes, here we go. One game to finish. So we can look at our undefeated players right now. So Alls versus Bob that Builder are the only ones. And you can see in the tournament here, um, we have Scrambled Egg, Subatai, Flamaster, Ecos, Platypus, Trex, Dustman, Lancer, and Prepare for the Bear, all who have won their first game. Yeah. Weird to see Houseplant, you know, but he'll be back. Houseplant will almost 100% win his next three games and have a chance at the top four. It depends on how well Subutai does. If if Houseplant wins his next three and Subutai wins all of his games and goes undefeated, then Houseplant's chances are pretty good. Uh, it, it, it's a lot of variables, you know, depending on tiebreakers and things like that. Yeah. Yes, yes. I need more pierogies. Oh, dude, I love pierogies. Yeah, it's so good. Every time I, I'm like at an airport in Poland and they have like a little pierogi shack, I, I always like, I always just feast. It's so good. Yeah, Slanesh is great fun though. They're great fun. Okay, so we should be getting started in just a second. Thank you for your uh, patience, my friends. I know it's a little bit slower paced. Classic Total War. Many of you guys have probably been here for years, but you have to wait. Uh, no, I'm not playing. I've been playing in a ton of tournaments on my own time. And I figured let's uh, let's put some shine on other players and uh, and see what factions that I don't because otherwise I, you would just be watching Slanesh and Empire and all that no not playing in this one tonight hey Sharon you got me to listen to Limp Biscuit with all your talk about them any similar bands you could recommend oh man I mean are we talking new metal you want new metal recommendations oh man I mean there's so many um do you want okay let me ask you this Olaf do you want bands similar to Limp Biscuit like that are new metal that same genre or music from that time period that might not be musically similar to Limp Bizkit, but like could kind of still be from that era and have that same feel to an extent. Yeah, I know it's a bit of a weird question. 
AoE stream, I'm not sure. Um, probably maybe tomorrow or the next day. I know we're doing Age in the next few days. Hey, it's Professor Pwn, dude. It's the Dark Lord. Yeah. Yes. All right. How are we looking? Are we all set here? Okay. Matches are done. We're going to go to round two. Let me make sure there's no admin work. Let's get it, baby. Round two in tonight's SFT is on. And we are going to advance the Swiss. And now we have an even number of players with the drop, so we shouldn't have anybody in a buy round, which feels good, baby. Let's go. And here we are. So round two fight. And everybody's there looking good. Let me tag the goblins in Discord. Goblins is the uh, Discord role we have for tournament players. All right. Next round is live. All right. So here we go, baby. So what do we want to cast? Uh, looking at matchups, that could be fun. Ooh, Scrambled Egg versus Platypus. But I know that he's had a little bit of lag. So let's do Prepare for the Bear. Although, does he have lag issues? I'm not sure. Huh, I'm not sure. Hmm. We have a couple. So Prepare for the Bear. We could do that game. Hey, we'll cast yours. Lobby code, please. Is your internet... All right, so jumping into another lobby, just gonna message a few players here and we should be all set. Okay, I'm looking for your response all. Similar time period, probably. The genre is cool, but the time period is cool. Okay, so Olaf, uh, I would highly recommend Soundgarden. And well, Soundgarden's more like 90s, but okay, Audio Slave. Audio Slave is one of my all time favorite bands. If you haven't listened to Audio Slave, they're really, really good um, from that time period, for sure. Foo Fighters, I mean, you've probably heard a lot of these. But Audio Slave would be one I would highly recommend. System of, of a Down isn't bad. I saw them live. It was, it was pretty fun. Um, let's see. Okay. And um, let's find this battle. Checking on our Kislevite champion. All right. So we got Prepare for the Bears Lobby. It's probably sad he can't play his beloved Kislev. But they're just way too OP for this format. Yeah, Creed. I enjoy Creed. Okay, we got Norska versus the Beast Ben. Oh, this is going to be a fun matchup on Border Low Landing. See, this is the advantage of me not playing every time is you get to see different matchups and different players too. Yeah, I mean, okay. If we're like incorporating mid to late 90s and early 2000s, yeah, you got, you got, uh, yeah, Linkin Park, you got, I actually like Korn. Uh, Linkin Park, Korn, Limp Biscuit. Uh, Audio Slave, Soundgarden, Foo Fighters, Nine Inch Nails, uh, let's see, uh, Disturbed. There, there's so many. There's so many bands you could go through. Yeah, and I'd give you some newer recommendations as well. I love Rage Against the Machine. Gorilla Radio is like one of my all-time favorite songs. That song is so freaking good. Yeah. The New Metal Era was really fun. It was really fun. I love Deftones. Yeah, Deftones are really good. And Deftones are, have a really, like, wide range of, like, styles, too. Like, there's probably, like, of all the Deftones, there's there's probably, like, half their albums I really don't like. But then there's half of them that are just, like, God tier. It's weird. They have very nuanced style. Deftones are great. Yeah. Some 41 and Simple Plan. Wow. Boney M. No, Daddy Cool. That's, that's, uh, that's, he did the, the Ra Ra Rasputin song, I think, Boney M. Yeah, that's, that's, like, a 70s reference song, if I'm not mistaken. Breaking Benjamin, yeah, they were fun. They were fun. They were definitely fun. Uh, we can call that genre early. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny, Matt. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, Godsmack, I didn't like Godsmack as much as Disturbed, but they had some good songs. They had a couple good ones. Um, but yeah, I, I, if I had to like recommend of all of those, I would say Audio Slave is probably like, yeah, is one of my favorite hands down. Audio Slave has such good music. So Audio Slave, if you guys don't know them, it's the same singer as Soudengarden. Garden. It's Chris Cornell. So it's Chris Cornell's uh, kind of one of his, I wouldn't even call them a side band because Audio Save was pretty big. But um, it's Chris Cornell and then they have the, I believe it's the bassist from Rage Against the Machine as well uh, is in that band. And, and like a lot of times super bands kind of suck. They don't suck, but they're not great. And they, they're like, just do one album and disappear. But they got Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. Well, it was his band, I think. And then they had um, the guitarist from Rage Against the Machine, or excuse me, the bassist. And the bassist is super iconic um, from Rage. He's amazing. Tom something is his name. I can't remember. Oh, man, but he's he's awesome. Is it Tom Morello, I think? I can't remember. 
Dude, Tony Hawk Pro Skater soundtrack was so good, man. It was so good. Yeah. But like listening, um, yeah, Audio Slave is a band I can always go back to. Like, oh man, Doesn't Remind Me is so good. And like, oh man, they have so many good songs. So many good songs. So let's see. Yeah, Like a Stone is like one of the best songs ever. Like a Stone, I Am the Highway is like so good. Doesn't remind me. Um, Be Yourself is really good. And if you like songs like Gorilla Radio, there's a song called Coach Ice from um, Audio Slave that is just top tier. Yeah. Is not Tom Morello plays guitar, is it? Okay, maybe I got them backwards. He was the guitarist. Got it. Like a Stone is such a good song. Such a good song. I love Rob Zombie. I do. But Rob Zombie Rob Zombie's kind of haggard. There's like... There's a couple songs you like and then everything else just sucks, <laughs> at least for me. Um, he's more of a gimmick. I wouldn't like, you know, outside of listening to like Super Beast and Dragula, you know, and maybe Living Dead Girl, uh, I don't jam too much to that. Yeah. Doesn't remind me is really good. Y'all's music preference is making me feel ancient. You know you like it, Jonathan. You have to embrace it, man. You got to do it. All right. So the next round is uh, in full effect. Let's get it, man. Let's have some fun. Show Me How to Live is really good, too. When I was in high school, I jammed to P.O.D. a little bit, too. They were fun. They had some good songs. Like, um, <laughs> what's that P.O.D. song where they're playing, like, table tennis and it's, like, super intense? Al like, Alive is a great song by P.O.D. And, um, and Boom. I think it's called Boom. Here comes, yeah, he's like, boom, here comes the boom. Yeah, ready or not, here comes the, yeah, yeah, that's that's another one of their songs that's really good too. A Faction War Tournament. Yeah, I got to get that on, the, I got to work on that. Rob Zombie is a guilty pleasure for sure. Yeah, they are. When the worlds collide, oh my God. Insane Clown Posse? I always felt, oh, I, I really like Red Hot Chili Peppers too. I, for, I can't believe I forgot them. By the Way is one of the, the best songs ever. I love that song, By the Way. Oh man, it's so good. So good. Youth of a Nation is great too. Yeah, that was like the one of the theme songs of like being in high school in the early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah, fun times, man. Always down to talk music with you guys. POD reminds me of elementary school. Same, it was like eighth grade for me. I remember listening to it live and when I was in like seventh and eighth grade. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of stuff, man. Good Charlotte. Oh, my God. Yeah, they were kind of emo, sort of like emo rock. I don't even know how to categorize them. And dude, how many of you guys jammed to Bat Country uh, by Avenged Sevenfold? I know Avenged Sevenfold's a bit of a meme, but dude, that's, that album had some great songs on it. I know you might find it cringe now, but I think everybody at one point enjoyed a couple of Avenged Sevenfold songs. Like that song, the song itself, Bat Country, is so good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, some early 2000s stuff. Yeah, Linkin Park is for sure goaded, 100%. All right, guys. Enough about music. You're here for Warhammer. We'll uh, talk music in between rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be taking a look at Prepare for the Bear. It's going to be rocking Norska, and he's got a front battle line of Marauders and Marauders and Marauders. So not really good infantry, but Norska and Marauders are pretty awesome because as soon as they get in combat, they immediately start to get buffs. So you get physical resist, you get leadership and melee attack. So it's pretty great. Uh, you got those with Javelins in the secondary. Javelins are excellent, excellent at um, taking down Minotaurs, uh, anything big, really. So Minotaurs, Razor Gores, Jabber Slythe, whatever. Any big monster, these Marauders are going to be able to help deal with. Spears in the secondary. And this is a cool tactic, by the way, in terms of formations. Uh, so you have the Marauders get run over by the Minotaurs, and then you have Spears waiting for them in the secondary. So when they try and push through, they meet Spears, and then they meet Javelins. It's a really, really nice formation. And look at this. We got Hodor. Yeah, we got the uh, we got Hodor, man. We got the Norskin Giant. How cool is he? So Norskin Giants, you know, same as a regular Giant, more or less. And Giants are a good monster. They're cheap, they cause terror, and they hit incredibly hard. And just like Tabletop, Giants are very good in Tabletop as well. So, um, so yeah, that's that. Now, looking at the Beastman Army, the Bray Herd is going to be rocking a bunch of Ungors. Very, very cheap. And a million Raiders. Raiders are an amazing unit. Very powerful. Um, they, they look unassuming, but they hit reasonably hard in melee, actually, even with 26 weapons rank. Uh, they have stock so they can creep up. And if these Ungor Raiders are allowed to form ranks and take down that giant, it's going to be a big problem for sure. On top of that, we got the Bray Shaman of Traderkin. So Traderkin, he's here to party. He's going to be dropping some fat spells onto the Norskin characters and heroes. Traderkin just does a ton of damage. It's really good for winning isolated fights. Uh, that's for sure. And last but not least, it's going to be Gorbel. 
So Gorbel is down here, and he's looking pissed. He's looking to run for president. And uh, that was Heir of Carthage, I believe, who started that meme, which is a pretty good one. Al Gorbel. And um, yeah, he's got, he can fight a giant. A giant will win in a 1v1 fight, but the Gorbel with cycle charging and a little bit of caginess is going to be able to get a ton of value in that position. So, um, oh my god, three days grace. <laughs> Oh my god, you guys need to, you got, we need to cool, cool it on that. Yeah, that was a great time though. Music was fun in the early 2000s for sure. I felt like, yeah, subject for another day. All right, so the battle's soon to be on, and both of these armies are going to be unga bunga ing on the middle of the map. So, you know, the objective is functioning as they always should have, you know, as they always have, forcing the players to fight, and uh, that's good. They're going to be opening up here in what, 25 seconds, give or take? Yep, about 23 seconds, so it should be fun. So Trader King Caster is going to be uh, coming out to party, and it is going to be on the... Uh, what are you going to target? Probably just going to be sniping Wolfric. Like, if he can get Wolfric and the Giant in a Trader King, okay, that's not a bad target. It's going to be hitting Wolfric here and also Marauders and some Spears. So it gets some decent value, and Wolfric is going to be taking a bunch of damage. I mean, that spell is very, very good. That was overcasted, so it does cost quite a bit of Winds of Magic. I think it's like close to 18, give or take. But being able to chunk Wolfric down, you know, 20% of his HP, I would say, is 100% worth it. And he did get two other units as well. So yeah, just trying to wear down that bad boy and uh, probably wishing he had brought Throg at this point. Throg can eat Traderkins and just heal through it like it's nobody's business. But Wolfric is going to be having some issues for sure. On the other side, we do see a Beastman ambush in the tree line. So it's going to be Zangor. Zangors are excellent here. They defeat the Marauders. So we got Ungor Raiders and Zangors. I love this ambush here. I really, really like this by uh, Trex. I think it's going to be super fun, and uh, Norska is not going to be expecting it. They do, of course, have some Marauders and some basic Marauders on the objective, but the Beastmen should be able to steal that. Now, on the front line, Raiders are going to be unleashing, and we do see uh, Morker. Uh-oh, Hodor, Hodor's coming for him. You better watch out, man. Hodor is going to easily, easily smash him in combat. It might take a while, but yeah, he's going to he's gonna take those hits for sure. So Morker does get clubbed in the face right out of the gates, and we do see the Ungor Spearmen engaging against the Chaff Marauders. Goreherd's on the other side against Marauders, and there is going to be the first magic from Norska, which is going to be what? Burning Head, probably? So Burning Head does go through, gets a nice melt. These Marauders easily going to get through the Spear Line, and it continues through the uh, secondary route as well. So very, very good Burning Head. Now, most of the units have engaged on the fronts. Goreherd's against the Marauders. Goreherd's probably win that fight. They're just a little bit of a higher tier infantry unit uh, compared to baseline Marauders. We do see some Norsk and Ice Wolves trying to sneak around the side here by Prepare for the Bear, but we do see Trex calling in some Centigors. So the Centigors are a pretty good answer against these Houndos, and they do get the flanking collapse, so we are probably going to be seeing the Norsk and Hounds get karate chops here by the Centigors, unless these Marauder Spearmen maybe find a way to move in and help out. Now on the top side, the Beastmen ambush is in full effect. I love that the Beastmen get to ambush here, and the Zangors, uh, they have a good charge bonus as well, being a Gore unit. They're kind of in between a Gore and a Bestigore in terms of their quality. But Zangors will just beat the brakes off Marauder Spears, and over here we have basic, uh, basic Zangors as well too. So uh, yeah, this is going to be an objective that for sure flips to the Beastmen here in a minute, as the Norskins are going to get repelled on that point, and it ain't going to be a bad time, or ain't going to be a good time for Norskins. Uh, on the middle though, we do see some of the Ungor Raiders being caught up in melee, so a little bit of sloppy micro here. These Raiders should be fanned out, and like a little bit deeper set, but you know, it is what it is. They have gotten caught. Norska is actually crushing the Beastmen in terms of value in many regards. And a lot of that probably has to deal with Morker getting uh, whooped on here, man. Wolfric coming in and, and doing a lot of damage against him with Hodor the Giant as well. So the Beastmen are going to have to find some value back because, man, the Beastmen are getting folded up like a piece of paper here in the front line. We see the Beastmen crumbling here, here. Their spear formations are getting owned. The Burning Heads are just doing, uh, you know, a lot of damage. And I'm seeing a lot of Norsk and Unga Bunga on the battlefield. And the Beastmen are just looking like they're being routed in pretty much every position. One thing that was very weird about the Beastmen build is it didn't have any Minotaurs. Um, so Minotaurs would have been nice, like Butchers of Kalkengard, to help break some infantry positions. Oh, and we also see Gorbel losing his fight as well. So Gorbel is taking a head-on fight with Hodor here. And even though Gorbel is great at this, Giants, you know, are slow. And if they catch you, they deserve to win, for sure. And this Gorbel is getting whooped on. So not looking uh not looking too good here oh look at the slow-mo pause very epic yes the duel between these two characters continues and uh gorbel is down to about 1200 hp morker the pimp claw is going to be coming in to maybe help as well but it looks like he does retreat back on the back objective though the beastmen have ninja'd it and the beastmen are a weird faction that can sometimes come back from bad situations i don't know what it is about them but they can gorbel's trying to fight Finally, some Minotaurs with Great Weapons have been called in. Hopefully, for the sake of Gorbel, um, the Gorbel's melee defense will hold firm until the reinforcements get there. Some of the Javelins going to be compromised here as well. So we do see these Angors charging into the old Marauder Hunters with Javelins and a couple Houndos trying to slip through as well. So the Beasts of Tashnar, what are they looking for? Um, if they can get on the Minotaurs, that's really cost-effective. They're anti-large and infantry size, and these are anti-large Minotaurs. So they would actually, they would beat the Beasts of Tashnar, but it's not going to be a great fight for them, right? 
The Beast Sun probably want to get some spawn over, which is what they're doing. So very well played there. We do see the Chaos Spawn from Trex moving over to Intercept. And the Hounds, yeah, they get steamrolled by the Charge and the Minotaurs with the Chaos Spawn helping. So that ended up being good. You still don't want to charge he Hounds head on into Minotaur units. You would have wanted to wait for them to attack the Giant and then you counterattack them. Charging into their, their fully erect charge is going to be very, very tough for sure. So looking at the high ground objective, the uh, or I guess the home objective here of the Norskins, the Beastmen still have their clutches on this one. The Zangors and Raiders holding on to that. But Norska looks like they're going to unga-bunga that one back. On the back objective, we do see Norska moving up with quite a bit, a couple spear units hustling. And on the back side, we do have um, Rotter Horsemen throwing axes uh, who are kiting Centigors. So probably going to be able to outmaneuver them and pull back to some reinforcements here. So the Centigors will chase them through the tree line, uh, maybe pick off a couple models in the foliage, but then are just going to be lured into an ambush and probably die. Now, this is really the epicenter of the action. We do see Hodor getting a little bit beat up here. The Beastmen do pull some, some value back, but for the most part are heavily, heavily outgunned in the value game. We also got Condom Wolves coming in and a second giant. Okay, the dreaded double giant build coming in. I love it. Yeah, and the giants are metal, man. In some matchups, giants are really good. They're very weak against Ungo Raiders, but if you shut down your opponent's Raiders, I mean, they will dominate. They will dominate many of the Beastmen units. And um, yeah, obviously this Feral Manticore is going to be heavily outmatched. We got Condom Wolves coming in. Condom Wolves are uh, not great against infantry, but if you, you know, they'll still be okay. They still have decent weapons rank, so you can stack them on with your troopers and they'll do well. Uh, Hodor is still just pushing into the backfield. Uh-oh, he's coming, baby. The Bray Shaman's going to be in some trouble. Hodor is going to try and club him down, but the Bray Shaman, at the last second, probably going to get away. Does he take that hit? He does, and he shatters. Okay, that's a big play. So Hodor just going the distance, man. He gets back there, and um, he immediately shatters that Bray Shaman. That is really, really big. Norska basically taking over the game. It looks like the Beastmen have been folded up here. We have a Giant here. We have a, a, a Flamecaster still very much in good shape. And Wolfric and the Giants are probably going to be able to easily bully Morker. With the Hunter of Champions ability and no more Traderkin, there's not going to be any big blob punishes. More Condom Wolves going to be coming in. Uh, and the back objective also looks like Norska may have a chance at it. There are some Ungors still back there fighting and a couple Raiders in the trees. Got to be trying to help it out. But it looks like Prepare for the Bear and Norska's Ungabunga is probably going to be pulling it out. Probably going to be pulling it out. Yeah. The other giant just kind of sitting semi-AFK. I would imagine that uh, Trex will probably tap out here relatively soon. We'll have to see. Marauder Spears move again. Beastman, uh, great weapons uh, do charge in, but unfortunately for them, they are charging into spear units, which is not what they want to be doing. Certainly not going to be feeling good. As those big battle axes uh, clamp down, Centigors, the throwing axes, are a call out to try and finish off the giant safely, which is a good idea. Raiders are obviously your best bet. Like, here you have an easy kill. These two Raiders plus the Centigors should be able to kill this giant, or at least get it really low before it moves back into combat. And you can see it's starting to take a little bit of damage, as the French would say. So, here we got Skin Wolves arriving into the battle. Morker being a menace, you know, he's always a bit of a menace. Um, the back objective is being controlled by the Beastmen still, I think. Yeah, it looks like they're just barely holding on to this one. Norska was cleaned up here. The ambushes in the trees were enough to kind of shut them down. But Norska is simply going to be winning the middle point here, probably. And then from there, they can just uh, slow push the back objective. I do like that the Beastmen were able to find an isolation on this Hodor. He looks like he's just looking into the sunset here. He's like, oh yes, look at the lovely sunset. Uh, so he's going to be eating some Centigore throwing axe shots. So they get their missile attacks. And the big man is at 1200. He turns to face his new prey. And is going to be charging them. But he's going to be breaking here in a moment at negative two leadership. Not going to be great for sure. So back on the point. Like, isn't this weird? Like, prepare for the bears, like, super head on value. But it still looks like the Beastmen are, like, fighting pretty well. Um, we do have some skin wolves here. They definitely need to bounce over and help out old Wolfric. You don't want him getting hunted like that. They're trying to kill Morker. Just let the giant deal with Morker, right? So now we've got a big blob fight. It's going to be a couple Minotaurs, including Butchers of Kalkengard. No, just basic ones. And the Manticore is going to be attacking into the giant. Wolfric is going to be charging back in on his mighty steed. So it looks like he's going to be eyeing old uh, Morker the Shadow Gave. And there has been a lot of healing. So there's some healing kind of to factor into the situation as well. Uh, as far as the objective goes in the middle, firmly under the control of the Norskins. Norskins do have throwing axes and hounds and skin wolves coming in. And it looks like the skin wolves are going to be ambushing these centigors, which a little bit of a miss micro. They do get caught there. So the skin wolves do come from the side, the condom wolves, and then they're going to get frostbitten. So the frost doggies are going to flank in on the side. And uh, that means they're dead, basically. Their speed's going to be down to 67. So even the skin wolves can outrun them. And the Norskin ice wolves are going to chew them to pieces. That's going to be that. Um, we do see Wolfric being hunted pretty heavily, but he does have the Skin Wolf support, so probably should survive. The Chad Giants this game, they've just been going all day. Probably not an insane amount of value, but yeah, not bad. About 7-800, and he's still got a lot to give. They're also really, really good damage bunges, right? Really good damage bunges. So, yep, Manscore is getting beat up. Negative 21, that Giant's giving it the dirty. It gets clubbed again. Man, 
These giants, uh, their, their DPS is pretty consistent. I guess he, he sees the Manticore as a kindred spirit and decides to let it live, so he lets that thing fly away, which could be a mistake, but he's going to be turning his sights on Morker once again. As far as reinforcements go, we got basic Marauders coming in and more Marauders and more Hounds, and the Mobility Goon Squad here doing very, very well. These Skin Wolves and the Norskin Frost Wolves are just hunting, just getting a lot of value. These Centigores going to get chewed down as well. As far as the back point goes, it is in the clutches of Norska, so it looks like Norska did ninja it with some horsemen, I suspect. They probably got some horsemen back here and were able to get the ninja. As far as the value goes, it's a massive value difference. Um, I can understand how the Beastman player might feel like they have a chance, but they really don't. As somebody watching from the outside in, this game is a thousand percent over. Trex played a good game for sure. I just think um, he got folded too, too hard. He took like a lion engagement against Norska, right? Um, a vegan giant, yes. So, like, what happened in the beginning is we saw a Beastman line and a Norskin line, and they just they just clashed, you know? They just went in at, and Norska is usually going to win that. I think the Beastman need to be a little bit cagier, use their missiles, try and force Norska to overextend into them, and more, I love the ambush from Trex. That was probably one of my favorite things, was his ambush here in the beginning was really good. So, here's what you do, right? You ambush, you take Norska's back objective, and then you don't engage them here. You pull back. And then Norska goes to deal with their back objective, that's when you attack. Beastmen are... It, it, they can do head-on fights, but his army comp wasn't made for that. It was mostly spears and raiders. It was very flimsy front line. And he took a head-on fight, I think, that was um, a little bit too favored for old Norska there. So that was very fun. It was very, very fun. GG, well played. All right. So looking at the value, Traderkin got a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but yeah, none of the heroes did super good. I love the ambush in the beginning, but overall... Um, yeah, you need Butchers of Kalkengard, number one. They're like an auto-take. Those units are so freaky good. One of the best units in the game for sure. Giant 1700 value. Caster with Burning Head did good. Javelins were able to get 1500. And uh, even Old Wolfric did some decent work despite being focused very heavily. So, yeah, All right, all right. GG well played to those mighty champions. So they will report the score. And uh, let's see what the brackets look like. Was that really one of the first games to finish? No, it looks like Houseplant won his game very, very quickly. And what we can do, since we have a little bit of time, if somebody wants to play me in an old land battle, uh, we can do that. Because that was a quickish game. So we will do this. And I kind of want to play a little bit of, um, of Chaos Dwarves. Because that's what I was going to play tonight. If I was going to play, it was going to be the Chaos Dowie. So I want to play the Dowie Czar. So the lobby is just called T. And anybody's welcome to join. Anybody is welcome to join. Because I suspect like we're going to be sitting here for a while. Um, considering only two games have finished. So we likely uh, will have some time. Yes, yeah, so if anybody wants in here, come party. Yeah, I think Sirtha actually be added to the game as a, a playable legendary lord. I think that'd be really fun. Like a chariot master or something. Yeah, I, I don't know. And the, the model's already in the game. Like, they, It's not like they need to make a better model, right? Just throw throw Sirtha in there and do it, dude. You know? Just let the, let the boy feast. So if you want to get into this lobby also, you're going to need to have the map pack on, the total tavern map pack, because that's the uh, client that I am on. Yes, yes. The Empire. Empire is, you know, they lost the game earlier, but it was a very, very close game. It was a very, very close match. Any update on the Battle Report channel? Yeah. So we are we are currently painting everything. It's it's a process. You know, it's taking a lot longer than I expected. Um, so we have a lot of Tomb Kings left. Not a lot. Um, let's see. So the Empire is ready. Warriors of Chaos are ready. Because I don't want to start putting up Battle Reports until we get um, a consistent amount of armies to rotate, right? So... The thing is, if I have three armies out of the gates, and then my friend Subutai, um, who I know in real life, he has a Beastman army. So that's four armies. That's going to give you a lot of matchups, which we could rotate over the course of a couple months. Um, but the Tomb Kings are, let's see. So we just need to paint six Ushapti Great Bows, 20 more Skeleton Spears. Um, the Monarch, yeah, the Tomb King himself, and then the Royal Standard Bearer. And then the army is ready to play mostly. Yeah. Kistle of Ban makes me, makes me... Yeah, the Kistle of Ban needs to be banned, though. They're pretty OP. It's wild how good frickin' um, Norska is. And without, like, having been up... No updates for years, you know? All right, guys. I don't know if anybody's on the map pack. That's probably why we're not getting folks in here for the land battle. We might just have to wait it out, then. Uh, that has been reported. Okay. And if you guys want to play a land battle match, join up right now. We could have a duel of fates on the Flats of Kislev or Galbraz. One of those maps. Those are those are pretty good ones. Yeah, we'll do Galbraz. It's a, it's a great map. It's a great one indeed. 
Totally get it. Don't rush your painting. Yeah, we're getting there. Uh, we, I paint every single night. It's not much, but I do get a little bit. Oh, and we just finished the Screaming Skull Catapult too. I just finished that last night. So that one's done. It's an old metal model. Man, that thing is just, just crusty and old. A bot game? You guys want me to play a bot? Oh my god. That would be really haggard. So no worries, man. No worries. But yeah, so we're going to have Empire, Tomb Kings, Chaos, and Beastmen out of the gates for our stable of armies. And then um, Wood Elves are going to be the next one that we get our hands on. I'm just waiting uh, waiting on that. Uh, but yeah, Wood Elves are going to be the next on the docket for the army, which is going to be very, very fun. I'm super excited for that. Um, after Wood Elves, I don't know what we're going to do. I was thinking maybe Vampire Counts, but we already have an undead army. Dwarves? Dwarves? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe a dwarf army eventually too, but uh, Vampire Counts seem fun to me. Chaos Dwarves would be cool, but their models are basically impossible to get. Basically impossible. You know, it's it's so hard. So right now we're just waiting for the next rounds to start, guys. It's going to be a, a hot moment. Um, if anybody wants to join in and play some land battle, we can do that in the meantime. Yeah, only two, uh, three games have finished. Okay, so players are starting to finish, which is good. Maybe it'll be quicker than we expect. Give me a sec. Sounds good, Allied. I'm waiting for the Skin Wolf one, yeah. Uh, I'll join you in a minute if no one is joining for your first MP battle. Oh, there you go, buddy. I'm basing up my low-care Dreadlord, Jewelist Blades, Blood Armor, and 10 Corsairs. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's go. Dark Elves have some really good rules. I love the Shades. Shades seem awesome, dude. The Shades um, for the Dark Elves, their rules seem really, really good. There's, by the way, if you guys are like just interested in old world tabletop, let me show you something. Um, so there's a website where you can um, just kind of like play around with armies. So here we go, cool. So it's called old-world-builder. And this is where I'm like working on the list. So I'm thinking about bringing, these are the two tournament lists I was thinking about bringing. Um, and what we have so far is a Tomb King on foot. So he's going to be leading a, a batch of skeletons. A Royal Herald, a High Priest who's going to be on um, either on the Dragon or on foot. I'm not sure yet. And then another Mortuary Priest with Illusion. So we have a Necromancer and then we have an Illusionist. We got 40 skeletons and they're going to be with the Tomb King. And they're going to be supported by the Priests, resurrecting them. Standard of the Cursing Word is really, really cool. So basically there's a banner the Tomb Kings use that I think is gonna be very good. Um, at the end of any phase in which one or more models in a unit joined by the bearer, so you put him with 40 skeletons, loses a wound, the unit that made the attack must take a leadership test. And if they fail it, they take damage. They take D3 hits, uh, which is pretty cool. So if you have like a shit ton of skeletons and they're just dying in droves, uh, they, they can do some really good work. So you use necromancy to lower their leadership. They fail leadership. And let's say they killed, um, if this is the suffers, uh, unit suffers, yeah, D3 strength, three hits. Yeah, it's pretty rad. It's really, really cool. So I like that one a lot. I think that's very fun. We got two Shopti Grapos to kill dragons and monsters. So Shopti Grapos um, are pretty cool. They do multiple wounds and um, they're strength six and they have really good range. So, um, and on Tomb Kings also have this special rule called the Arrow of Asaf where um, units with the special rule never apply any modifiers to their hit rolls, even if they're obscured, shooting at long range, whatever. Tomb Kings always hit at their natural ballistic skill, which is really rad. So Shopti Great Bows are going to be awesome. We got two Tomb Scorpions, Screaming Skull Catapult, and a Necro Sphinx in the army. So that's the um, that's the starting army I have right now. For the Empire, we have a Grand Master on a Demogryph, and he's going to be using the Sword of Justice, Enchanted Shield, and Laurels of Victory. So he's like a monster hunter. It's really fun. We got state troopers, empire knights, two great cannons, two demogriff knights. It's um, it's very very hyped. It's very very hyped. Okay, I think I got a game on my hands. Oh, we got the Delhi Sultan. All right, so let's have some fun, man. Let's have some fun. Okay, and um, let's get our army blocker up. Yes, yes, should be fine. Uh, I I do, I used to play a lot of 40k. I used to play a ton of 40k, but I've been taking a bit of a break from it. I've been taking a bit of a break. All right, so that looks fine to me. And for you, so we got Allied Trex from Age of Empires. If any of you guys know our Age of Empires community, you'll know him. He's a great guy. Um, all right, so what magic do we want to bring? Probably you, yeah. That's going to be pretty nice there, buddy. Cut that, and then we can bring you and you. So we have a match, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun indeed. All right, so we get you back there. We get you. Man, Chaos Dwarves are such an expensive faction. It's pretty bonkers 
how quickly you go through your funds when you're playing the Chowi, you know? It's insane. Any advice to beat the Shredder of Lustre will be nice. Any advice to beat with the Shredder? Don't bring, Ally, don't bring the Shredder of Lustre against Chaos Swords. Would be my advice to you. It's going to have a bad time, uh, more than likely. All right, so that looks good. And then from here, we can get a bunch of Chaff units. All right, and um, a couple Hobo Goblins, maybe. Do we need Hobo Goblins? Not really. I think we're okay. And um, yeah, I think we can squeeze in one of these. That's going to be pretty good. All right. Good luck, have fun. Good luck, have fun. Let's get this party started and do it. And do it. I think that's going to be enough, actually. Two is probably overkill. Ah, it's never overkill, man. It's never overkill. Uh, I got any. Just doing a little bit of admin work here. All right, so checking. Palpatine voice, do it. You could bring the Shredder of Lustria. That would be that would be quite a play. All right, so I'm dropping you. And then we got this. Let's fix you and go from there. I know we all expect high elves in this Lanesh Lord pack, but any thoughts? It would have to be, it would have to be. I mean, it would most likely be elves, yeah. High elves have gotten so many updates, right? You got the Queen of the Crone, you got the Eltharian one. They have a lot of new units for sure. All right, Allied, let's get this party started, buddy. Let's get it started. Let's have some fun. Uh, let, Okay, I got to mix in like a fun unit versus him. You know, something something that has a little bit of flavor, I think, would be the way. Uh, all right, so we got two of those. And then we want to get maybe you and then we can throw in another couple sneaky sneaky lads sneaky sneaky and cool all right let's fire it off man let's have some fun so a little uh, little intermission battle between myself and uh, allied see if he gets me here today should be fun I don't know. I always feel a little bit like I lack confidence with Chowie, that's for sure. He's playing against the Delhi Sultan, and it is. I know. <laughs> Thrones of Decay give... Um, yeah, Thrones of Decay, I would probably guess like... I bet you will start getting some teases in like late April, and then like it'll come out in um, like May would be my guess. I hope we don't have to wait all the way to summer, dude. That would be That would be rough. But, you know, we'll see. We will see. Round the round is done. What really? Holy shit! That escalated quickly. All right, so let's um, advance the round. Okay, I know you guys want to see this, so we'll we'll do it. So advance the Swiss, and where are we at? Okay, man, Bob, I did not expect that to finish. Okay, I better I better try and win this game fast, because then you know while the players are coordinating. Okay. So looking fine. We're just going to try and win this one quickly. I don't know how it's going to go, but, you know, land battles are like that. They can be very finicky, right? So there's a chance we can just win it quick or just get steamrolled quickly. Hopefully it doesn't become like a knockdown, you know, drag out fight. But the round has been advanced, buddy. Thank you for the heads up there. All right, cool. And then um, let me just message the players in Discord. Let them know that the tournament has started. And uh, goblins, rounds three is live. All right, so round three is up, and um, I'm going to find a match to cast, and I'll tell them to wait for me. Should be fine. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do... We'll do Bob that Builder. He's great. Uh, Bob Dat, can you wait for me to start your game three? We'll cast it. Lobby code, please. All right. So I just told Bob we're going to cast his game, see how that goes, and um, let's see what the Delhi Sultan's got. All right, so we're immediately going to start. Okay, he clearly is a man um, after my own heart here with the dreaded Dread Saurian. So let's go ahead and scoot up a little bit, Bale Taurus, and keep you guys kind of on guard duty. We got a couple feral cold ones of the wings as well, but you're going to get it's 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 what I like to call shriek in time. He does have a slant of life, but I think we can just kind of you know pop that thing down. Yeah, this guy no bell heard whatsoever, by the way. No bell whatsoever. All right, stop. That's a good enough position. 
uh, get this train moving up a little bit sloppy there and we can form ranks with you form ranks with you and yeah the dread saurian is going to start getting poked a little bit the howda on that thing is surprisingly good it, it does some good damage we'll start spirit leeching it and um i do have the 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 bull centaurs nearby too who can kind of deal with that so forming ranks with these forming ranks forming ranks um yeah i mean it's pretty scary if it tries to penetrate through my front line we'll we'll be ready hopefully with these guys all right so let's go after here jump on this bad boy train can move in charge charge and on the sides i think we're all right Ooh, there actually is um what's it called oh it's a little bit dodgy isn't it all right so let's get a breath attack on that bad boy and now we got some flyers coming into the wings which is going to be very scary so it's already at half health it's very beat up we got the bull centaur renders working on it and let's take our big lord and just fly in all right so we're screening okay the chowie infantry are holding I'm a little bit nervous about my rockets in the back getting wrecked, but we do have this guy really, really smashed up. So now there's going to be some flyers coming back, so we need to help out. So we're going to pull back and try and deal with this. We do have the goblins who can do some work. Dread soaring is very low. Let's get the train to come across. Oh, we brought star chamber guardians. All right, that's pretty cool. All right, so the train's going to come this way. And now we're going to go ahead and attack this when he decides to do something. Are these Colossodon hunters? I think they are. So we're going to see if he wants to target my lord. And what we can do is we can land on the ground, right? So we land here. Let's send some more of these hobos here. And we'll see if they follow us onto the ground. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But the Dread Saurian is getting a little bit low. But I don't know. We got a lot of value. But his healing is pretty pretty respectable, for sure. Let's get the Bale Tauruses in there. There seems to be the Bull Centaurs. Uh, flank should be okay. The train was able to get in and uh, circle around. So he's going to come after my train now. So we can just, like, kite him. While we value trade elsewhere. Yeah, Goblin Infantry should be okay there. And is he going to go after my lord eventually? Maybe. Looks like he is. So what we would do is we just detach. He's being very cagey with his uh, his dudes here. But the big beast is almost down for the count. If we can finish that thing off, that's going to be great. All right. So how are we looking? Yeah, train. Just run into the skink cohorts here. Pull you guys into the secondary. And um, yeah, he's getting another heal again. And once again, we're going to spirit leech. I need to kill that thing. It's, it's kind of weird. It's something you can ignore. Like, I probably could have killed the slan by now if I just focused it with the Death Shrieks. But overall, I think I think just killing it is going to be nice. He needs to commit his um, flyers to one of these engagements, for sure. All right. Let's keep shooting here. The train is then good. Let's move you guys this way. Get the train running here. And now he's, he's landed in the back. So he's come to fight. Let's get the Bull Centaurs back. Although, yeah, we need to get them back here to help out. Although, the Goblins might be able to get the job done. All right. Let's screen those guys out. And um, once again, we come back here with the anti-large. I feel like like I brought a, a lot of anti-large, but I'm still like hurting for it a little bit. You know, I'm like, God damn, this is like not easy. All right, that, that freaking healing from the Lizardman is very good. Very, very good. All right, so we got those guys pretty beaten down there. Um, the Death Shrieks need to keep shooting at Homeboy here. So keep shooting, keep chasing here. And we can use the Death Shriek to blast. Let's get the train circling and just running over whatever we can. Pull these Hobgoblins back. And cool. So they're finally broken, and we can Spirit Leech again. Let's get you guys set up here. And how are we looking? All right, so the Dread Saurian is taking it like a champ. We're probably going to get him eventually here, I think. Croxagores are mostly offline. Trains are just going to run over any reinforcements, and we'll keep Spirit Leeching this thing. Could be a mistake going after it, but, you know, it is what it is. We're going to try and make it work. So we have the Battle Toad here. So let's go get the Breath Attack on the Dread Saurian. I think that's going to be nice. Form ranks. Uh, you guys go here, and form ranks, and form ranks. I even told him not to bring the Dreadsaurian, but he's clearly a man, you know, a man of, uh, of conviction. So he's able to get it. Yeah, it's likely GG, but he does have those Temple Guard. The Dreadsaurian is almost down. It's almost down. We still have our anti-large boys, and it looks like our goblins will be able to handle business here. Let's pull you guys back in. And you can go across. Those are Colossodons, so I don't want to mess with them. They're very, very scary. The Dread Beast is still steady, despite all of this, which is hilarious. Let's get the train to go run these guys over. And um, thank the Dark Gods, I still have access to uh, <laughs> the Father of Darkness. Yes, hash it. So I can use my Baelator's character to attack here. He's going to do a lot of damage. He's pretty strong. So we'll attack. Oh, okay, that was very weird animations. Very, very weird. Like, it's ironically, I don't feel like I've won yet. You know, I feel like we're still in the danger zone. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's get you and do this. And the Bull Centaurs are nearby. So we're going to use those to collapse on this. Let's get some Chowie in there. All right, it's wavering, finally. Jesus. Are we going to get a break on it? If I can break it, we're good. I think it's over at that point if we break it. But, like, if that thing manages to live and he shuts down my two Death Shrieks, then we could be in huge danger, right? Come on, Bale Taurus. Kill it. Fire everything. Fire everything. Oh, God. Where's my train, dude? I think I just need to even call in the train. He might even be able to weasel this out, dude. He might find a way. Um, the Bull Centaurs are clearing this out. 
I will have another Spirit Leech in a second. He's got 1,200 HP, so Homie's straight up healing cap now, but there's so many layers of buffs, which is just insane. Train's on its way back. A um, couple Chowie Warriors fighting there. And you know what? He might flip this around. He might flip this. Yeah, we're going to try and get the Death Streaks away. Let's pull you guys here. Rear charge in. He's got 1,400 HP. Uh, the Bull Central Renders are offline. The Train needs to get back here and help. I don't know if my Lord can carry this, guys. He might find a way. I need to get the Death Streaks like, out of there. Holy shit. Holy shit, the Dread Saurian's living. Oh god! Everything's falling apart! The Chad Saurian, I love it. I, he, he defied my... Uh... <laughs> Come on, Death Streaks! Oh god, I think, I think the Sorcerer Prophet will escape. I think he's gonna be fine. We need to get the train coming in to party. So the train's gonna go try and kill the Dread Saurian. It's haggard, but it might work. Okay, so these guys are chasing these little skinks offline. I think my lord will come back, maybe. He might get chased off though. At that point, I just lose, right? Okay, so, the tra oh, he's back. Okay, that's, I knew he would come back. Yeah, because those, those guys were too low to really do a whole lot. Okay, we need to stabilize the, I get a spirit leech off. Let's go breath attack here. And let's just keep running down troops where we can. All right, and yes, yes. <laughs> Fire everything. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, the Dread Beast is like holding on for dear life. But the problem for him is I'm going to rally my rockets, right? Um, he is at 170 HP. That thing has heard no bell whatsoever. Okay, so we just need to stabilize both of our Death Shrieks and we can just nuke him, basically. The trains will just methodically clear off infantry. Okay. Let's charge here. Uh, we got the Hobo Goblins coming back in. You guys can try and take on the Croxagore Dundees over there. Sorcerer Prophet's getting it, and um, now we got two missile launchers. So let's get those guys online and just start giving that Croxagore the business. All right. So you're moving. You're moving. And, um, yeah, we have this guy at 170 HP, bro. 170 HP. That is so absurd how Chad that thing is. Okay, the rocket should get it here. Yeah. <laughs> we got him. And now we just blast blast them into the Shadow Realm with our artillery. Because we just go spray fire mode and we just we just gather up everybody. Let's get you guys here, you guys here, you guys here. Sorcerer Prophet's gonna go. And now we just now it should be pretty doable. This was a really good fight though. It was very fun. Um, do I have enough for a Buna? I do actually, so I could just save up for a Buna. I don't think I'm gonna need it. Alright, so let's get you. And um, yeah, alright, so he's got a couple little skink bastards moving in there again. Let's get the goblins going after him too. And we could save for a Buna. It's going to be a while, though, before that finishes. Let's get the train in there. Keep shooting you guys. Uh, a couple of the flyers are coming back in. Dude, this game was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. Hopefully, I can just get him on army losses here. A Buna will definitely just end the game, too, though. Let's attack his battle, too. That might just, uh, might, <clears throat> might just give me the dub. Okay. So, I have a lobby to go to next. Okay. So, attacking here. The Death Shriek are still going strong. We are trying to take out the Battle Toad. Arguably, I could trigger army losses a little bit quicker by just going after the um, the Battle Toad, right, with the two missiles. Yeah, that might be better. So let's just go here and just missile launch the Battle Toad to the ground, and we'll just save up for a Buna here. Yeah. All right. So, uh, what did he say? Okay. So just doing a little bit of admin work on the side. Let's get our train out of here. I was like, oh, this will be like quick one way or the other. I'm either going to lose. It's like a big dread beast or it's just going to, you know, I'll we'll just shoot you with a pistol here. Let's get the goblins to go fight here and uh, just keep nuking here. We're going to have enough for a Buna soon. It's 22 wins of magic, so it's pretty intensive how, how much it costs. A couple Chawi warriors trying to fight valiantly on the flanks there. Okay. So we get hit with the Blood Statute of Spite. Let's finish off the Battle Toad. It won't army loss him though, because he's got those freaking unbreakable uh, Temple Guard. If they're near a Lord, yeah, they're unbreakable. So that's army losses there, GG. Uh, man, that was a really good game. He played really well, man. Has he been practicing? Cause this guy, uh, the Allied usually only plays Age of Empires. I didn't know he was this seasoned in, uh, in this game too. Granted, both of our builds are pretty haggard, but... Um... Yeah, the Dread Beast was good. Buna is going to make uh, those guys melt. And um, now I can minimize and do admin work. Okay. 
Outstanding. Man, that was something, dude. Okay, we got to jump into our lobby real quick here. We'll look at the value like really quickly, but dude, the amount of healing he did was nuts. It was nuts. Um, 3,000, 2,500, 2,800. His Chad Sorian got 3K too, so. GG, man, that was a really good game, Ally. It's super fun, brother, super fun. All right, so let's get into our lobby. We Hopefully we didn't delay things too much, but you know, the rounds usually go long anyways. All right, he's playing Demons of Chaos here. Oh, that's fun. All right. Cool. And here we are. All right. I lost you. The Shredder of Lustre will come back. He will. Dude, I was impressed with how well you did. That was It was great. Okay, Demons of Chaos versus Ogre Kingdoms. So, yeah, start when ready. When ready, and thank you. All right, I guess that we'll be more careful with our intermission games. You know. Um, yeah. Okay, so we got Ogre Kingdoms versus Demons of Chaos. They actually weren't even ready yet, so it's fine. I cannot guarantee good play, but I can guarantee memes. All right, let's go. Ally, did you have fun with it, man? I hope you had fun there. You did really good, man. I thought I was in trouble. Initially, I thought it was going to be quick. I was like, the Death Streaks will kill that thing fast, but then it totally changed up. Of course, the Delhi player is a monster how to enjoy her. I know, I know. Bob, let's go, baby. We got Red Olgor. Oh, and the Blue Scribes. I'm so happy I decided to cast this game and not one of the sweatier ones. This was this was 100% the right decision. 100%. All right. Okay, sorry guys, just had a little bit of admin work. And um, and yeah, we're good. Thanks for being members, Melody and uh, Bob, for a long, long time. We've been on this journey together for many moons. And it, we shall continue on. Good times coming this week. We're going to have an Age of Empires tournament, not tournament, but a stream, um, exploring some of the fun stuff. Uh, Dune tournament this weekend. So we're going to be battling on Arrakis for some sweet spice. That'll be very fun as well. Uh, Blue Scribes are a complete meme pick. Yeah, complete meme pick. So um, in the front, he's got uh, Blues, which are good against Ogres. They're somewhat stalwart, and they have shooting against Ogres Light Armor, which isn't bad. Red Olgor is, um, on some ways, good against Ogres. I mean, Red Olgor, <laughs> he brought everything. Oh, my God. He does have Hell, uh, the Hellblade, but Gorefeast, if I'm not mistaken. Does he have passive healing? Yeah, he's got Gorfi. So he heals in combat. So that's actually not bad. And he's anti-large, so if he's not being shot, he can definitely kill ogres. Right? Um, the Blue Scribes are just an absolute shithouse meme. But that doesn't mean they're not going to be fun. I mean, you can roll some good spells. And lastly, we do have a Soul Grinder of Zinch. So Soul Grinders are, uh, are, of Zinch are good. They have anti-large javelins, which is excellent. And they can also fight pretty good in melee, too. So I like that. I think it's very fun. Now, looking at the Chungus Kingdoms, it is going to be a battle line of Ogre Bulls with Iron Fist. So we got a bunch of those. With Noblars in the front line, and the Lord Kit is going to be a great Maw Caster, just looking to cast Troll Guts and heal. And triple Noblar Scrap Launcher. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Here we go, baby. So, yeah, these things are good against demons. They're good at killing blues and pinks and, like, static infantry. And, you know, anything that's kind of a slower infantry unit will suffer. Uh, but Red Olgor is going to get that booty. He's coming for it. And it looks like the scraps are actually being thrown at the blue scribes. Also, the um, Soul Grinder is a good tech against them, but how the Ogres counter a Soul Grinder is using Lead Belchers. Lead Belchers just set up shop and they'll rip shots all day and get you really, really good value. So this is going to be really, really fun. I'm super excited for this. Thank you guys all for joining. I know it's late at night, but cool to see so many people showing up and partying in the old Warhammer community. Red Olgor is coming for blood, dude. He wants it. He is the legend of this, uh, this community, man. Red Olgor is, is a mythical creature, and when he appears, the old world trembles and despairs. Just imagine, like, I just imagine some dev at CA just like, yeah, it's like, okay, we'll just call him Red Olgor, dude. There you go. All good. Just, like, literally probably thought of his name in, like, two seconds. That's pretty classic. All right. So Javelin's still going, and he's sniping. Oh, the Slaughtermaster is getting hunted, ladies and gentlemen. Red Olgor is coming for him, and he does get in there and do some charge damage and retreats. Very tactical Red Olgor. Oh, and the Blue Scribes? No, that's going to be a Troll Guts going down on the uh, Slaughtermaster. So he already heals himself. The Blue Scribes haven't cast any spells yet. 
And so far, the Demons of Chaos are going to be hanging out in the trees and being very cautious, trying to use their single entities to skirmish a little bit before moving out the rest of their army. Which makes sense. With Triple Scrap Launcher, you don't want to show your army until the objectives open up, right? You're going to be having a uh, bad time if you do. So the Ogre Chungus here is being javelin pretty hard. Um, and we do see the Scrap Launchers trying to throw them at the Soul Grinder. Uh, they're terrible against anything that is an infantry. So, I mean, yeah, typically Scrap Launchers, you want them on pinks, you want them on blues. Uh, the Scrap Launcher targeting needs to be fixed. If he wastes all of his ammo shooting at the freaking Soul Grinder, he's going to lose this game 1,000%. He's going to have a really, really bad time. So we do get pinks coming out of the trees, and more pinks and uh, blues as well. The best thing Demons of Chaos has against Ogres is for sure the Screamers. Screamers are going to be good, for sure. Um, but yeah, Shadow's setting up shop, man, and Bob the Builder's coming out to party. He does have his little popcorn bandits on the way, so there they go. And uh, Nurglings will defeat Noblars in combat, if I'm not mistaken. Just their HP in tandem with their uh, poison and their staying power. I think they barely win that fight. And uh-oh, Blue Scribes are doing something. Oh my god, he got a Doom Bolt. So he got a Lore of Darkness. So if you guys don't know how the Blue Scribes work is, they, they automatically roll spells. So you get five random spells, and every single time you cast a new spell, it generates five new spells for you. It's a really meme. Super fun, and they do have a little bit of shooting as well. They, they shoot from their disc, so you can do some poking damage against the ogre characters. Meanwhile, on the other side, uh, we do see the ogres pushing in and uh, swarming the objectives pretty hard. I think the Demons of Chaos need to show their hand. If they sit back here too long, they're going to have a bad time. So sadly for the ogres, there's not going to be any meat here. And we do see the scrap launchers switching onto a good target. So well played to Shadows here. He switches onto the appropriate target and starts to massacre these pinks. And these are ogre bulls with iron fists. They are shielded, but they are going to get uh, killed by screamers pretty efficiently. Uh-oh, Red Olgor, the Prince of Slaughter, with Van Hell's Dance Bacab from the Lore of Vampires Deathbringer active. Dude, he is sauced. 900 weapon strength, 74 melee attack. We see this Slaughtermaster getting butchered by Chad Olgor. He's coming in. He's got his big beat stick here. And it is going to Pound Town for sure. All right, so we see the Slaughtermaster running away. I would imagine Red Olgor is going to hunt and uh, make sure to finish off that prize. Demons of Chaos slow pushing out of the trees, and they are going to be securing this objective as the Nurglings overwhelm the Noblars, and the Screamers kill the advancing Ogre units. And honestly, uh, Chad Olgor getting in there a little bit too quickly. Yeah, he's, he's, able to, he's able to finish the job. All right, here comes Chad Olgor again. Oh, he lands. His mighty demonic wings opening, and the Ogre's probably got like one or two more hits left. Yeah, he's got 500 HP. Chad Olgor gets him. Looks like that was a blue fire from the, uh, from the Blue Scribe, so they did get a Zinchian spell. And he's shattered now, so you don't even need to technically chase him. Now, on the other side, the Ogres are going to be trying to swarm. Shadows does set up a flank here with some Mornfang Cavalry, but is going to be caught slightly out of position. And uh, is also going to get tar pitted by Screamer. So overall, I think Bob is starting to take over the game a little bit. Ogres still are doing very well on objectives and have crumbled a couple spots. So we do see Shadow over here. He does manage to crumble down the Nurglings defending the back point, and he does steal it. So Bob, even though he has killed the uh, Ogre Lord... You better be careful to make sure he doesn't yield too many objectives to the old ogres. And that can sometimes happen if you go a little bit too hard in the paint on um, SEs and big monsters. You can struggle to control the battlefield, which is kind of interesting because that's how it is in Tabletop 2 at times. If you go too many big monsters, um, you can sometimes struggle to really have battlefield agency. Um, unless you're playing like Age of Sigmar or something. Age of Sigmar is a little bit different. Like, you know, big, big kind of huge models are very, very powerful. And people speculate in Old World they might be as well, but I feel like... Not having enough boots on the ground in Old World is a big problem in terms of, uh, you know, clearing things out. Because something to uh, articulate is, in Warhammer the Old World, if a huge monster character on a dragon attacks my state troopers, uh, I can issue a challenge with my state trooper sergeant to that dragon. And the to the character on the dragon, then, if he doesn't, he has to fight me, basically, or else he doesn't get to fight, right? Um... So then all of that big dragon's attacks have to get wasted on the champion. So the champions are like a one-time buffer against like huge character attacks, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I've seen that be pretty good at taming big characters. So characters can accept challenges, monsters can, uh, characters can accept challenges and sergeants and like champions of squads. All right, <clears throat> so on the backside, we do see the pink cores shooting away and the side objective firmly under the control of the demons. So objective one is controlled by the blues. So we see double blues right here as well. And on the other side, we got blues and pinks advancing up, heading towards objective three. It does look like Bob is starting to push back the Chungus Kingdoms. His consistent wave of demonic pressure from all of these pinks is doing some work, although those triple uh, triple throwers are still doing a lot of damage as well. 
Chad Olgor looks like he succeeded on his quest of killing the Ogre Lord. Currently looking at the leadership, it is negative 16 because the Ogre Lord did flee all the way off the battlefield here, right? We're going to see how this uh, plays out. Red Olgor is coming back, probably going to be diving in, trying to take this out. We do see Deathbringer and Demonic Onslaught. 900 weapon strength, absolutely sauce to the gills. Steroided juiced, and he hits like a truck. You can see that big Nobular nob Scrap Launcher almost breaking instantly to that huge influx of damage that he was taking. But Ogres, they have a second wind. There's going to be a lot of bulls coming out, but the bulls will not be on parade for that long because there are a lot of screamers on the battlefield and a lot of shooting, which is going to be very excellent. And man, Red Olgor is going super, super hard here, man. This thing is broken. It's at negative 42. He crushed that scrap launcher in a matter of seconds and is already at 2k value. So the meme of Red Olgor is uh, certainly living on. Ogre is just getting a huge Death Star and just kind of aim moving forward. I do think that our Ogre player is a little bit newer from what I can tell in his movements and stuff. But that's not to say he's not doing he's not doing bad at all. I mean, Bob is a seasoned player who does tend to meme. But Bob is also... Oh, he used the Ogre Army ability or the Ogre spell. So the Blue Scribes did the Ogre Power Fist on them. Oh, that's so funny. But Changebringer is also coming in. Oh my god, the Changebringers. Demons of Chaos also got these things. These things are just nasty. And this entire Ogre Army... Totally blobbing up, and it's just going to get melted by the Changebringers. Oh my god, that's some damage. You can see they're in a bit of a mass exodus right now. The Warp Flame melting all of them. Bob taking over the battle. Likely going to be routing all the Ogres and getting a triple cap here. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that is going to probably be it here pretty soon. But what I was saying is, is I do think that the Ogres player is a little bit newer. So firstly, shout out to you Shadows for throwing your hat in the ring, playing some games against strong players, and putting up a great fight. Um, secondly, though, Bob, though he likes the meme, is a very competent player. Bob is a, a seasoned veteran of competitive multiplayer. Um, also ma makes a lot of our maps. A lot of these total tavern maps that you are seeing and playing on have been made by Bob. Uh, he's one of our great map makers, so shout out to Bob as well. Yeah, big damage, triple cap, ogres on the run, and um, that's likely going to be it. We have the change bringers up in the sky. I didn't even think of these. I think in the next tournament I'm going to play Demons of Chaos. I have to admit... Bob has inspired me. And I think that the Demons of Chaos have some tech, actually. I think they have some teeth in the meta. As long as Kislev isn't around, I think they're going to be okay. Um, so Broken here. Objective 3 is going to be getting taken. The Ogres do rally some units over here, so all their cavalry and units uh, are prepping. But really, they're just going to get Red Olgord in the face. Red Olgor is going to jump in and take those guys to Pound Town. You can see those cavalry on the way back in. Blue Scribes have gotten how much value this game? About 600. Not bad. Could be worse. Second wave of Ogres moving, but probably going to be easily dealt with as the Demons of Chaos... Uh, oh, the Ogres actually rallied some units back here, but I think the Pinks will probably be able to hold their own there. Bob with the home field advantage. Yeah, I think Bob actually made this map, if I'm not mistaken. We'll have to ask him afterwards. Changebringer still roasting, doing some good work. Value is about 9.8 to 5.6, so the Ogres with Troll Guts are probably still down by a couple thousand. Dude, the Changebringers... Oh, look at that! And he got the Searing Doom ability from the Lore of Metal, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what that was. So the Changebringers, or excuse me, the Blue Scribes are just rolling random ass magic, which is so funny to see. And now we get some Seekers of Slanesh. Seekers are a good unit in this matchup. They're okay. If your opponent has Iron Guts or Elite Cavalry, Seekers can be good at hunting them. And in general, they're just a fast, rapid response Cavalry unit, which if they get a Devastating Flank like they just got now, it doubles their charge bonus. So with Devastating Flanker here, uh, their charge bonus is going to be doubled. So they have a charge bonus of 80, and that makes a massive difference. You could see these guys are, um, yeah, just getting cooked by those Seekers. On the back objective, Ogre is trying desperately to wrestle it back, but Chad Olgor is here, and he also has a Soul Grinder of Z to double terror causing units. Not that it stacks or anything, but um, obviously it's a little bit of built in redundancy here. And Red Olgor is just so cool looking, dude. Of all the Demon Princes, I mean, Grand Vomitus is really cool too. The Nurgle Demon Prince, I think he's incredibly rad looking. So yeah, big karate chops coming in. Objective is uh, still held by the Demons of Chaos. Terror routes are on the way. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Shadows tap out here. He's mainly sending in Noblars at this point, and I think that is going to be all she wrote. Oh, was that Slicing Shards of Slanesh? That might have been Slicing Shards. Yeah, that was Slaneshi magic, wasn't it? Yeah. That's a really powerful spell. It does a shit ton of damage. It does a lot if you can get it going. So Red Olgor is uh, still here. And where is he going to be going? Yeah, he's just going to be using his anti-large attacks. Currently, his value is sitting at 2,400. So he's about paid for himself. It's about as much as he costs. We got some Seekers preparing and some Flesh Hounds. Yeah, Demons have a lot of good units. I mean, Flesh Hounds are great, Nurglings are great. Seekers are a good cavalry unit situationally. And that is going to be that. Red Olgor with Dance Macabre. Yeah, that was really cool. I agree. That was super fun. All right, so let's see how this round's looking. And, uh, wow, even with that, even with us joining late, there's still a lot of games going. Not a lot, but a fair amount.
So that was a fun game. That was like a nice break from the really sweaty matches because the rest of the tournament is going to be mostly sweat. So we got a few games going here. Refresh the bracket. And um, so Bob's done here. So we have Pasha and Subutai, Poseidon and Sunshine, uh, Prepare for the Bear and Alls, Ecos and Lancer, and Scrambled Egg and Dustman. I believe that's an undefeated match. Scrambled Egg and Dustman, yeah, both undefeated here. So they're fighting it out. Did ha is Housemite still playing? I think he is. He didn't drop. Yeah, he beat Flamaster. Flamaster is a really good player. He's very, very good up-and-comer here. So Houseplant lurks in the wings. I don't know if he's going to qualify. His success is really tied to Subutai because Subutai defeated him. So if he loses, uh, if Subutai loses, then Houseplant, you know, in a way loses as well. And it looks like Subutai lost his second match. Did he? Yeah, he lost the Dustman, actually. Okay, so that's not helping Houseplant's tiebreaker, that's for sure. All right, all right. GG, well played. GG, well played. All right, just reading this here real quick. Yeah, Bob with the home field advantage, I know. Bob, did you make that map? I think you did. We can actually go look. Um, hold on. So we're going to go to the workshop and do this. And uh, all right. Cool. And let's go ahead and get this. So here's our, um, in case you guys are wondering, hey, thank you, uh, Storm. Storms, thank you for becoming a channel member. Greatly appreciate it. Really helps out quite a bit, my friend. Thank you, thank you. So we're going to look real quick. So this is the Total Tavern map pack. Look at that. That sweet five-star rating with 352 ratings. Oh, baby. Talk dirty. Um, shout out to all our map makers. So yeah, you can go here and you can see who made all the maps. Wacka made a ton of them. He made a lot of really good maps. Wacka Wacka is the individual who curates this and like manages a lot of it. So man, he does... Big shout out to him. He does a lot of work. Yeah, Bob did Borderlow Landing, um, Lost Temple, Altar, Halls, Rift. Yeah, a lot of the ones we use in tournaments for sure. He did not do the one we just played on, though. The one we just played on was the... Um, who did that one? And then we have Sunshine. Sunshine's playing in tonight's tournament as well. Great player. She's certainly very strong. Um, Borderlow Landing was Bob. That, Borderlow, I think, is one of our all-time GOAT maps. It's really, really good. Who, who, made the, who made that one we just played? I'm looking here to see who made it. Um, maybe he did. I don't know. Bob can probably answer it. All right. So let's head back up here and do this. Not my map. I did the first two in the finals map. Lost on my own map. Oh no. Storm, thank you for joining, man. Really appreciate it, man. What's Professor Pone's favorite ge geographic region in war? That's a really strange question. Uh, but he's a high elf enjoyer. Pone is like, he, he always has those kind of takes. He loves the High Elves. He likes Rings of Power. He likes the ending, ending of Game of Thrones. You know, he, he got... Pwn's the man, but, you know, he, he likes the High Elves. So we have to forgive him for some things, you know. <laughs> we have to forgive him. Making a Total War Warhammer map in Age of Wonders should be possible. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, you, you could. He's a High Elf enjoyer, though. Pretty sure it's a Wacka map. This is one of Wacka's maps. I love this one. It's really good. All right. So that was a great game, and let's refresh and see how the rounds are looking, and uh, who's going to be claiming the tournament tonight? Find out on the, tonight's tourney. A couple games to finish. Should be over very quickly. Only two matches, so Dusted and Scrambled Egg Special, and Ecos and Lancer. And looking at these signups currently, um, wow, we do not have too many undefeated players, to be honest. Um, Scrambled Egg and Dustman are playing for an undefeated spot, and Lancer, and okay, that's why. So we'll cast one of the undefeated matches after this. That'd be fun. Subutai dropping another game there, it looks like. No, nope, he won it. Why does he only have one Swiss point? That can't be right. Oh, it's a, it, I need to refresh this the old-fashioned way for it to update there. Yeah. All right. So this is what the top four is looking like right now. Uh, but it's going to be changing here in a moment after a couple games finish. Houseplant creeping up there. He's there. He's, he's, he's lurking in the wings. It depends on who he gets in the next round to an extent. There's a little bit of randomness to it, but it is what it is. Wack has been making a ton of maps for single player, and he's making versions of them for Don. That's so cool. He didn't have to roast bone like that. Dude, we always do. Yeah, Wack is the GOAT. He is, for sure. He is indeed. We need to have another map making contest. We could even just submit maps that have been made recently, too, and have a contest to see what people think. A little voting and all that. Yep, no Kislev tonight. Kislev's pretty filthy. I, I was able to play them in a couple tournaments recently, and I just like... They're so broken. They're so broken. Kislev in Dom mode is just so foul. 
I don't know. Um, does anybody here follow the land battle? Does land battle keep track of? I don't know if there's anybody who's like taken the the head of land battle and kept track of stats and all that stuff. I'd be curious to see how Kislev is in land battle because I just feel like they're just, they would be oppressive there too. Maybe not as much so. Maybe not as much, but yeah, I don't know. Their amount of healing they have and all that stuff is. Um, Poseidon Empire is crazy this journey. Is is he a, is he a very good Empire player? Yeah, is he? Well, it looks like he's in the RTK Discord, so he's probably pretty good. It's a strong reign of uh, run of players. Looks like Sunshine defeated Poseidon here. Very well played. He's really good. Yeah. He did drop his last game. Uh, did he win his other ones, though? Let's see. Maybe he did. He won game one and uh, lost game two and game three, too. So his chances of top four are pretty much out. If you lose two games, you're pretty much eliminated. If you go three and one, uh, you have a chance, depending on tiebreakers and things like that. Yeah, I just played a very fun game against Poseidon's Empire. Cool, man. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. Very cool. Uh, did you feel like you needed to take a shower after playing Kiss if I did? I felt really bad. It was, um, do I have it? I don't think I even saved it. It was just like, and it was against Scrambled Egg Special. So I was in the, um, what tournament would it have been? I think it was like from a couple nights ago. And let's see here. It was, which one was I playing in? It was, yeah, it was this one. So this was a tournament two nights ago. I got to the grand finals and ended up losing it. But I, I beat Scrambled Egg Special in the semifinals with Kislev. And I just felt like an absolute degenerate. Um, and he, but he, he let me play them. He had the choice of the matchup. And he chose to play against Kislev. So he thought he probably had an answer for them, but they're just so filthy. And then I lost in the finals with Slanesh against Bretonia, which is, it feels pretty hard. I feel like Bretonia definitely has the edge there, but it's it's a really fun matchup. And I have won it before. Uh, this is going to be four rounds of standard, and then we have a semi center grand finals. Kislev is disgusting in land battle as well. Yeah, I bet it is. I bet it is. I just can't see them being fair in any situation. It's probably even worse in land battle, because like, yeah, you can't, you can't even like really beat them on points, right? Yeah, you just, you just get it, man. All right, round is finished. Everything's looking good. Let's advance to Swiss. All right. No, 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 you're not out of the tournament. It just means that you don't have a chance of reaching top four. So you can keep playing and getting practice, but your your, your chances are, uh, you know, are a little bit lower. So let's do this. All right. Top, uh, all right, round four is live. All right, goblins, it's go time. Let's get it. Let's see what matches we want to cast. Um, I'm trying to avoid like seeing the same faction over and over. Um, we got Scrambled Egg and Lancer could be fun. Scrambled Egg is playing Nurgle. He's he's Scrambled Egg is one of our top players, and he's also a Nurgle main, um, which is really not main, but he's really good at Nurgle. He's like good at the bad factions and makes them work against top players. I heard whispers that he beat some top, like actually was able to beat top players on Kislev with Nurgle. So um, yeah, Scrambled Egg is currently ranked number four uh, on our uh, tournament circuit. Very, very strong player. And um, let's go ahead and uh, see what's up. All right. So I'm going to cast Scrambled Egg's game because that'll be fun. I'm, I'm curious to see some Nurgling. Yo, lobby code, please. All righty. Let's party, man. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Okay, so brackets. Yeah, everything looks fine. We have Scrambled Egg versus Lancer. Alls versus Subutai. Houseplant is playing Prepare for the Bear. We'll see if it's enough. And I need to find the Scrambled Egg games. He is playing against who? What's that, guys? I think he's playing, uh, what's that player's name? Sorry, guys, my geriatric brain is struggling to remember things. We'll get to the bottom of it one of these days, I, I assure you. All right, Lancer. There he is, too. All right, so let me find Lancer. Lobby code, please. All right. So they're going to send me the lobby code. I'm going to cast Lancer versus Scrambled Egg Special. Uh, this is going to be Nurgling time versus... Uh, what's the other one? All right, so we got Nurgle... And what is Lancer playing? He is playing Dwarves. Oh, Nurgle versus Dwarves. Okay, this is kind of a fun one. 
Uh, this was a, I played this in the tournament the other day for Subutai. It was my Dwarves versus Nurgle. And I feel like the Dwarves have a pretty good shot here. But it is kind of dependent on the map to an extent, right? The map is the map is a big variable here. Yeah, Kislev Sleds are pretty nuts. They need to buff, like, the... Chariots in general are kind of haggard unless they're, like, the Kislev ones. I don't know. Like, the Chaos Chariots, I would love to see them be better. Like, Gorby's Chariots, things like that. That'd be really fun. Old man's turn remembers the Fred Durst times. I do. You know what's really funny is Fred Durst lives like five minutes from me. He lives in the same town. I, I've seen him in town a couple times. We're, we're, we're technically neighbors. Yes. Frosted tips and Timberland boots. Oh, yeah. I had Timberland boots for a long time. I think I wore them up, up through the early 2010s. How many greenskin mains are there? Uh, they're really good. Yeah, greenskins are top tier. They're very good. They're, they're pretty easy to play, too. So... The meta greenskin play is very... I mean, you can play them... There's a lot of weird play. Greenskins can even go artillery. They, they're, they've are they got some dynamic play for sure. Oh, okay. Is, is, okay, so Gumbo is his lobby. All right, so let me jump out of here because I accidentally just stole the spot of his opponent. Surprise, scrambled egg. It is I, your new opponent. Okay. So we know what his lobby name is now. So we'll find that in a second. You got to love the classic haggard peer-to-peer -peer connection. It's the best. All right. So here we are, baby. Does he, he wasn't wearing a red hat when I saw him. No, he was wearing a beanie. Yeah. Hey, Turin, how do you play into four flamers of Zinch's dwarves if your opponent is fully committed to shutting down your organ guns? Or, uh, it, it's it's a little tricky, but yeah, you can go... Flamers of Zinch get wrecked by basic missiles, like crossbows. So if you're playing against, like, demons, you would just bring a bunch of rangers. You would bring, like, four or five rangers. And, um, yeah, that would, that would be fine. And are we talking Bryce? Are we talking Landvalor? Are we talking Dom? Because it's a little bit different. Oh, Slanesh Chariots are terrible. Yeah, they're terrible. Yeah, they're really bad. They, they all need to be kind of reworked. But we got Lancer on Dwarves for a Scrambled Egg Special on Nurgle. This is fun. We're getting a good range of uh, matchups tonight. This is the Thrones of Decay. Early look. But yes, honestly, Dwarves don't struggle that much against Flamers. I mean, they, they're still used against them, but um, you can use Rangers, Quarrelers, uh, Artillery... You know, anything. Chase them with Slayers, whatever. And, uh, you know, all those things will work pretty well. Yeah, they'll get it. Let's get Nurgle versus Dowie. You got Lancer, 13702. Very metal. Again, Scrambled Egg special. Scrambled Egg, our uh, rank 4 player on the leaderboard right now. I believe 4 or 5 is what we saw. He's off to a very good start this season. The next time you see Fred Durst at the grocery store, please tell him. For my childhood, thanks. I will. I'll thank him on behalf of all of us. Yeah. I will. I mean, I, 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 there's still some Limp Biscuit songs I really, I actually still listen to, you know? A lot of those bands I, I don't jam to as much, but yeah, there's some some LB stuff that I like to throw on every now and then. Yeah, they're great, man. So Nurgle, um, how I play this matchup is I like to use Exalted Heroes of Nurgle, two of them on horseback or foot, and then you bring them around with Festus and have this disgusting healing goon squad. Because the dwarves can't really produce any combination of heroes that can beat Festus and two Nurgle exalted heroes, in my opinion. And then you just bring Fleshy Abundance and um, Rancid Visitations. So if you have two champions beating on like Felix or Gotrek and you Rancid Visitations after that, you're going to kill that character really quick. Aside from that, you can use uh, Hounds. Uh, Hounds are quite good against Dwarves. Furies are okay, but they tend to crumble a little bit quick. Um, I still think bringing two Furies in your build is, is a staple. Because uh, you need something to keep Gyrocopters honest. And Furies can chase them around, so. Yeah. It's going to be good, man. It's going to be good. Uh, I'm looking for your response, Bryce. Okay, in Dom mode. Yeah, so in Dom, you would just go... Are, and are we talking about Zinch? So I assume you're talking Zinch because of Doom Knights. So you would just do a front line of um, Dwarf Warrior Great Weapons backed up by Dwarf Miners with Blasting Charges. You would probably go five Rangers um, and you would bring Thoric with Rune of Slowness and then uh, have Slayers guarding your backfield, your artillery, and then have maybe one or two Thunders and really deep set in your army. And um, the Rune of Slowness you can use to slow down Doom Knights and then you just you can counter the Screamers with your Dwarven shooting, with your Corlers and Rangers, and then you counter the Doom Knights by casting Rune of Slow on them and shooting them with Thunders and guarding, um, uh, probably honestly, just a cannon. I wouldn't even mess with an Organ Gun. Just get a cannon there. Um, although Organ Guns are okay against each. So yeah, you can you can just guard it with Slayers. Just have a Slayer sitting right on top of the cannon crew, and it's going to be hard for them to really shut it down easily without taking a lot of casualties. So 
so that would be my um, my advice. <clears throat> Those would be my my tips there. Haunt the Vale is another cool map, and um, we're gonna be starting soon here. We'll see what the players are gonna be playing. All right, so I don't think anybody's done with this round yet. People are still playing, yeah. Shadows, unfortunately, poor guy got the buy round. He went out. He went out like a champ, though. He did great. He fought the mighty Bob the Builder. Yes. Uh, Gotrek, Felix, and Thoric is a really good combo. Yeah, it's a really good combo. But um, the two Exalted Heroes of Nurgle with Festus should win that fight. With proper micro, they should win it. Festus can just heal them passively, and his, his sniping is actually pretty good with uh, Rancid Visitations. Especially on Felix, because he doesn't have the um, spell resistance stuff. So, yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, Scrambled Egg is ready, and Lancer is preparing the Dowie. Both these players are undefeated, I think. I actually don't know Lancer. Let me look at look up Lancer on the old leaderboard. I'm gonna I'm gonna figure this one out here. All right, so the mystery must be solved here. Oh, I still need to update the season on the leaderboard. I'm such a potato. All right, so let's go to our leaderboard real quick. Here we are, and see Lancer. Okay, so this is his first tournament of the season. He's currently three and zero, so he hasn't lost a game yet. The season, it's his first one, so we'll see. We'll see how that all unfolds. So you can you can always come into Total Tavern and see who the top players are at any given time for the season and all that. It's always a good time. And yeah, what is the best way to go down a hill? Is it rolling, rolling, rolling? Oh, that's pretty good, Hammond. I like that. I love, oh, that song is so good. That's that's a guilty pleasure song, hundred percent. All right. Wow, Plague Bears. Yeah, that looks pretty similar too. This this style works as well. Double Cultus is very good against Dwarves also because they're super hard to kill. They have regeneration and they can just chase your missiles and summon um, Plague Bears on top of your cannons. So if you try and bring artillery against Nurgle, they can summon uh, demons on top of it, which is pretty good. You have to get close, but I would say it's very possible. It's very, very possible. Let the Nurglings feast. Yes. All right, loading in, just hanging out. Let's have some fun, man. Let's have some fun. It's another cool map. It's kind of similar to the one we saw earlier, but this one does have that kind of side area. This is very good for Nurgle, um, this area here. Oh, you guys can't even see my cursor. I hate when I do that. God damn, I'm such an idiot. Okay, where is this? All right, I'm just going and turning my cursor back on. I've probably been casting all my replays this way too. Uh, oh, it should be visible. You guys should see my cursor, right? Huh. Very weird. Well, anyways. Hammond, thank you. Thank you for the fiver. But essentially, dwarves um, or Nurgle would be very good at pressuring this side objective here, the one between the trees, because it mitigates dwarven shooting. Nurgle also has a lot of great weapons. That's kind of their whole faction gimmick, is that they're the great... Like, Zinch is the halberd guys. Um, Slanesh is like the anti-light faction. Nurgle is the anti-armor faction. And Korn is like, you know, just generally hard-hitting, like a generalist, right? Um, but yeah, Nurgle does have a lot of AP against the Dowie. Let's take a look at the Dowie army here. So this is going to be Lancer, currently undefeated this season. Only three games, though, so it's not like, you know, undefeated with 20 wins. Still a very good accomplishment. Uh, he's got a bunch of dwarfs with great weapons. Nope, no just basic dwarves. Interesting. So going for the shield of Dowie, which uh, they will hold longer than the great weapon variant, but you also may lack armor piercing against Nurgle warriors. He's got Corlers into the sunset, double gyrocopter. So he's got the Royal Dowie Air Force. Got two of those, and Thoric Iron Chad is going to be on the anvil with a fair amount of runes. So he has Rune of Speed, Rune of Slowness, and Rune of Wrath and Rune. Wrath and Rune is good against Nurgle, Marauders, and Plague Bear, so I definitely recommend that. And Rune of Doom, which I don't know if he knows it got nerfed. It's still quite good. You know, you can have it in a blob, and it's going to buff the boys up, but yeah. Not quite as good. But this is the Dwarven tactic on this map. Okay, so you get your two, you get your Dwarven army together, and then you move up and you just press on this objective and this objective, okay? So you just ignore objective three as the Dwarves and you just use this open field. Yes, there are some kind of sparse trees out there which will block some of your shooting, but you can play around it for the most part. Um, trying to fight in the bushes with Nurgle is not gonna be something that's very good. And for the Nurgle army and Scrambled Egg Special, he's certainly a very good Nurgle player. He's gonna be rocking the Occultus here. So cultists do have the uh, Gate of Nurgle, so once they take some damage, you can summon on top of the Dwarven Missiles. Aside from that, we got Chaos Warriors with great weapons, an excellent unit, um, absolute destroyer of Dwarven Army, absolute destroyer. If they can avoid getting focused by missiles and artillery and things like that, they'll do some good work. And we have a Sorcerer Lord of Nurgle. Now, Scrambled Egg is very interesting with how he plays Nurgle. He loves to use the Sorcerer Lord, which I don't blame him. This guy looks metal as hell. 
And basically, he's going to be spamming two cheap spells, the Miasma of Pestilence, as well as the Stream of Corruption. He's just going to be dropping the base on these spells, and uh, that then triggers the Lore Passive, which is the, did he bring it? Yeah, Children of Nurgle. So every time he casts a spell, his entire army is going to be getting healed for 0.80% uh, of its HP, which is pretty good. It's very, very good. And uh, Plague Bears are what I'm interested in. Plague Bears, I always felt like we're a little bit haggard against Dwarven shooting, but we're going to see. I, I would wager the first call-in for Scrambled Egg is going to be throwing axes out of the Vanguard or, or Furies, the chase. Furies are pretty good for keeping gyrocopters honest because you can't just let the gyrocopters uh, sit and shoot, right? You can't let them just, you know, pop shots at your Lord and your Chaos Warriors and your characters and all that stuff. Scrambled Egg is a really, really good micro player. So he's going to be able to dodge this pretty well. But the Royal Dowie Air Force has arrived, and they're looking to butter some bread. Oh, actually, these are the Steam Cannon variant. Really interesting. So he went double Steam Cannon, and we do see a couple Furies coming out. So that's one thing I uh, that's one thing I do enjoy about Domination is how there's less um, build roulette, right? Like, so if Nurgle came in without, um, you know, Furies in uh, Land Battle, for example, they would they would just get wrecked by the Gyros. But here you can kind of adjust to what your opponent's doing. Now the Dwarves can counter the Furies by with their own call-ins, right? Uh, but the Furies are going to chase them. What you do if you're the Dwarf player in this position, you just pull them back to your formation and you just use them more defensively, right? That's how you roll. Uh, they are taking a little bit of damage right now. The Dwarf player definitely uh, lack, uh, lapsing in micro a little bit. Letting that Gyrocopter get feasted on by Furies is not something that you want to be doing. And it's not something that ever should be happening. Gyros are incredibly quick. And you can just pull them back to your formation and cackle here. So we do see the Dwarf Warriors moving up. His Lancer starts to rip shots. Dwarf Formation going to be moving out. Scrambled Egg Special has set up with his two cultists here. So he's got his two cultists on the objective. And uh, Objective 3 is going to be his. And he's just going to push up. And this is the Nurgle strategy on this map. You go here and here. So you just basically do that and you slow push. And then you can also use some hounds to flank down the alley here on the far side. So yeah, this Gyrocopter tried to get away. But uh, the Dwarf player's micro did slip there. And he loses a Gyro very, very early on, which is... There's not, yeah, it's unfortunate. It definitely shouldn't happen. Um, Rangers are being called in. He's going to need some Slayers at some point, for sure, maybe to deal with those characters. Although I guess these are just foot characters, so Slayers won't be super good. But I do like the mass amount of bows. I think that if he micros well, those bows can be, uh, you know, pretty devastating for sure. But having one Slayer just to defend your backfield, I feel like is always a pretty good idea. No Marauders with great weapons, but the Dwarf player does call in a whole bunch of the Miners with Blasting Charges. So Lancer does have a couple of those. Big shots uh, ripping into the Chaos Furies, but they are able to dodge it. They're not gunshots, so they're a little bit easier to dodge. And he kills a couple Furies on the way, but overall, um, yeah, they're going to be running. So the Dowie Legion is moving forward to engage against Nurgle. Nurgle does have the objective advantage, obviously. So they're going to need to play. And we don't see the Cultists being sent into combat. I think sending them in and just letting them, you know, get into the Blasting Charges here would be very, very good for Scrambled Egg. Uh, for the bows, folks in Chaos Warrior Great Opens is tough because they have a lot of armor, but it's still worth it since they don't have shields. So the shots will connect in high volume. Uh, Plague Bears are obviously the more high value target to shoot. Not high value, but easier to kill. Chaos Warrior Great Weapons are more expensive than Plague Bears, but Plague Bears are easy to kill for missiles. They only have 30 armor and they die incredibly quickly. So the Dowie player is going to need to advance because um, Nurgle is just going to be sitting here cackling on the objectives. And my head cannon is Nurgle's like spreading a, a plague in the lands and uh, the dwarves are trying to stop it. But if you let him sit on the objectives too long, there's going to be some disease in time. All right, so we get the steam cannon coming in. Gyrocopter is going to be immediately retreating. Bows need to move up. The dwarf player needs to not... He's playing a little bit too cautiously here. I think that the dwarf player needs to force the engagements to happen a little bit quicker. We do get Dragonback Slayers being called out of the woods. And uh, Nurgle's just going to be parking on these two points and is going to be enjoying their best life. It would be pretty insane to see Nurgle, uh, you know, take on like the Greenskins or something like that in one of the later rounds. Both these players are undefeated in today's tournament, um, so they both have a decent chance of uh, of qualifying for the top four, even if they lose. No guarantees. It depends on the tiebreakers and who had the harder opponents earlier on, right? That's a big factor as well. So Thoric is finally sounding the horn of war. We get the dreaded Total War Warhammer slideshow. It's my favorite. And uh, yeah, classic CA. Please, they're never going to give us servers, but we can always just cry about it. So, you know, it is what it is. So yeah, now the Dow we are moving up. We got some blasting charges moving up to intercept the Chaos Warriors. Um, bows are, uh, yeah, getting ready. But his maneuvering, he's, he's, he's getting ready to shoot. But yeah, he's out of position. His formation is not set. Cultists are going to get into his missile line very, very easily here. And uh, it's going to get messy. It's going to get messy very, very quickly. Blasting charges do need to go down to the Chaos Warriors. And now we get Battletoads coming. So Nurgle is going for like a full surround. They're pushing in from every angle. And the Dowie missiles are going to be ripping fat shots into the Plague Bears here. 
which is incredibly cost effective. So the Nurgle, the Dwarf player does know the value of shooting at the light armor, and he is doing that well. Plaguebearer is getting, uh, not melted, but certainly taking some damage. Thora going after Cultus is good. He will defeat a Cultus very easily in combat, but the only downside of targeting the Cultuses is that they are going to, um, they're going to be able to get their summon off, because you can't really do their summons unless. More Furies being called out of reserve, going to be diving on the missiles. You're going to need the Dragonback Slayers or something to deal with those. On the outside here, these Chaos Warriors get a nice square engagement against the uh, the, the Dwarves. I know it's like a Dwarves and Dwarves mixed up in my head. But the Chaos Warriors should take them to Pound Town pretty hard. And we do see the Nurgle Toads getting a nice isolated engagement against a unit that can't really fight them terribly well. And the Dwarf Missile Line is still shooting reasonably. We do see the Rune of Doom going down, Thoric slapping it. And you can see it's still not useless. It hits the Dwarf Warriors here and these Dragonfire Pass Boys who are doing okay. But Nurgle's getting a good envelopment. It looks like they got around the outside. And the Dwarf Army seem to be a very awkward, awkwardly positioned. Uh, and now the Chaos Warriors are just going to get in and just give these guys the absolute dirty. So yeah, Chaos Sorcerer Lord is here. He's really tanky and actually an excellent combat character too. The Chaos Sorcerer Lord does have passive regeneration, which is really good. It's, it's a lot. This item actually exists in Tabletop as well in the old world. It, um, it gives you a, a ward save, basically, a regeneration save. Very, very good. But yeah, cultists have gotten onto the missiles, so the Dowie missiles are going to be shut down. And um, when Nurgle's ahead of you on value, the dwarves typically should always be ahead of Nurgle on value. Always, uh, in the beginning. So the fact that Nurgle's ahead of him on value probably means that this is going to be a pretty decisive victory for Nurgle, I would say. Just kind of what I'm seeing in terms of the positioning of the players and the decision making, uh, it does seem like Scrambled Egg is a more of a seasoned player. But still a very good showing from the Dwarf player, but um, it, it just looks like the Dwarf missiles are all being, like, made... Contact is being made with all of them. Looking at the value, 31 against 24. Nurgle doesn't have a ton of healing in their, their spells, but their passive lore magic healing is going to be healing up the entire army. So every single time this Chaos Sorcerer Lord is casting spells, uh, he's going to be causing problems. Forsaken are also quite good for Nurgle, just like one or two. You don't want them as a main battle line unit, but as a, a re reserve unit. So when you bring them out of reserve, they're fast, they hit hard. And those are things that Nurgle often lacks is speed, so having them come in and, you know, sweep things up is quite good. Uh, dwarves are holding on to this point, but it's going to get ugly here. Toads are sweeping through. We do also see the Forsaken pushing through the battle lines. And the Dowie are, um, Slayers are battling Furies, which is not good for them. Furies actually do reasonably good damage against Slayers because they're infantry sized. And uh, looking at the objectives, though, we do see a little sneaky sneaky coming in from the Dowie here. So Miners of Blasting Charge is going to come and try and snake this. <clears throat> but... Nurgle responds with some uh, warriors with great weapons, or excuse me, marauders. So those Nurgle, uh, those Nurgles, those warriors or marauders are going to be heading over. And uh, if the blasting charge gets off, maybe the miners can win it. But we'll have to come back to that engagement in just a second and see. So objective number one, controlled by the dwarves, but not for long. The Forsaken have arrived, and Forsaken are also a really hard counter against the Slayers as well. So if you're able to get Forsaken on top of Slayers, it's going to be uh, a really, really bad trade because Slayers rely on their bonus swords large to an extent and are also very, very uh, lightly armored. Forsaken have, you know, 60 plus weapon strength against light armor, so it's, it's brutal. Slayers move it in to fight Toads, but the formation is pretty much broken. The Dowie seems to be in mass exodus. You know, Dwarves aren't going to win frontline fights against Nurgle in a straight up fight. What they're going to win is with missile support and staggered formations. But here's the thing, the Dwarf Formation was a little bit um, simplistic. He had a front line of Warriors and, and Bows that were really bunched up. Now, if you want to play Dwarves against Nurgle, you need to have some space. So Dwarf Warrior here, 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 and here to control more of the battlefield and then have a Bow here, a Bow here, a Bow here, one here, and one here. So what that does is it makes it so the Dwarven Missiles can all cover one another, okay? And uh, it's, it's much harder for Nurgle to shut everything down that way. And then it's, the Slayers can basically sit between those formations and bounce to wherever they're needed. In this way, the Dwarves had all their missiles in a spaghetti line, and it's so easy to shut that down. It's so, so easy to shut that down. We see Nurgle taking over the game, triple capping. Dwarves are, are fighting valiantly just because Dwarves have super high leadership and everything. But most of the missiles are on the run. Miners are being called in. On this side, the Great Weapons did get Blasting Charge, but they're still going to find a way to win. Nurgle Warrior um, Marauders with Great Weapons, they have good enough stats and, you know, Poison, Armor Piercing. Miners are only really there for the Blasting Charges and a little bit of a roadblock. Aside from that, their fighting prowess is very, very poor. So hopefully that was an illuminating lesson for any of you guys who are aspiring Dwarf players. I actually think this matchup is pretty even. I think that Dwarves or Nurgle can both win this. Um, but this was obviously pretty decisive for Nurgle. Even though the value is not, like, super far apart, with healing taken into account, it is very, very far apart. But Lancer did really well. He won three games tonight and uh, was able to get some good dubs in there. But Scrambled Egg is going to be showing why he is a top five player in the world right now. 
and is probably going to be closing out this game pretty soon as the points are trickling in. Dwarves don't really have any chances of getting the objectives back and uh, hard for me to grasp non-phallic images. I know, I'm sorry, I failed you. I failed you. All right, there's going to be a Rune of Wrath and Rune going down. Going to tickle some of those Chaos Warriors. Flammable, not bad at all. On objective three, yep, Chaos Warriors or Marauders are going to be defeating those Miners. More Chaos Warriors moving up in pretty much every direction. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it. GG, well played. I'll show you that formation for Dwarves right now so you can kind of visualize it. Yeah, Scrambled Egg Special is really good. He's a Nurgle, uh, he's a Nurgle main. His build was great. Everything was clean. The execution was good. And no complaints there. For the Dwarf Army, I think the Steam Cannons aren't very good. I think that the Brimstone Guns, if anything, maybe would be better. Or the Sky Hammer. Um, he had two cannons. Cannons are good against Nurgle. Having like one cannon I think is good. But yeah, the build wasn't bad for the Dwarves. It was more so the positioning in my experience. So we're going to go and show you guys um, a little bit of a different setup here. All right. GG well played to those champs. All right. So let me get in here and just versus AI. So if you are playing... All right. There we are. Cool. <clears throat> so dwarves. This is obviously land battle, but the starting army will be kind of similar. So you would uh, an idea against Nurgle that isn't bad is going for a hero squad. Um, so Thorax pretty good. You can get him, and I like to just bring him on foot because the Rune of Doom is okay, but it's not as good as it used to be. So just bring him on foot with Rune of Slowness. And from here, you can do a uh, Thane and Gotrek is actually a pretty good fighting team as well. You can also just throw in Felix. The Thane is much cheaper though. Um, so he's good. Yeah, the Rune of Dismay is kind of fun, lower speed as well. And for Gotrek, you don't really need to bring anything. So a hero squad like this is a very good opening. So I recommend Dwarf Warrior Great Weapons as your main battle line with three Blasting Charges. And then um, Bogman's Rangers are also a very good choice because they're super durable and they have regeneration. So even if they get attacked by Furies, they don't really care that much. You could do some Bugmans and some basic Rangers, right? And then um, from there, you could just mix in some Slayers. So Slayers, <laughs> Slayers. And if this was domination mode, I would have a cannon in reserve. I would have a cannon, right? So slayers and slayers, and then you just get like another blasting charge, okay? So I'll show you what this formation would look like right now. Yeah, he's an Urgle main. He wins games with them, dude. It's very frightening. It is. He even tried to take on my Kislev with Nurgle, which was very brave the other night. And it was a good game, with all things considered, how OP Kislev is, but Kislev is just so stupid. I feel like my Chihuahua, which has like two brain cells, could beat people with Kislev. <clears throat> All right. So a couple matches still to finish here in the fourth quarter. Uh, top four is looking to be Scrambled Egg. Subutai likely going to be in top four. Yeah, he beat all, so he is. Platypus is there. Houseplant, his tiebreaker is a little bit weaker. We'll have a couple matches left to finish still. So here's how you go. Yeah, Thorgrim, you could do Thorgrim too, honestly. He's 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 pretty okay in that matchup. So you'd have your Dwarf Warrior great weapons in the front, okay? So kind of like this. If you're deploying a Dwarven army against Nurgle and Dom even too. Like that, and then you stack. You want to stagger things to make it so they can't shut too many things down at once. So you have this, and then you can get your Bugman's Rangers. Set them here, set them here. And then these Rangers are a little bit more deep set, like this. So that you can crossfire, and uh, this map's a little bit tricky, but you can then cover everything, right? Then you have your hero squad in the front. You can use them to beat up the cultists. So if like if you're playing that Nurgle build and they have those cultists, you can rune of slow and you can kill them very quickly. Gotrek is also really good against demons because he himself does magic damage, so he can kill like the plague toads well. Then you put one slayer here and one slayer here, okay? So this is a really strong formation. Um, and then on the outside, you're going to have one of your reserve units here and one here too. So this is a very stalwart formation that is resilient against being dove. It has really good missile pressure, plenty of um, armor piercing with your great opens, blasting charges, and characters. Uh, and the bows are also good. And you would, you would have a cannon in reserve. Um, you can bring a sky hammer too, if you can manage to secure the skies. But I would say a cannon is going to be nice. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. A little, little something something about that. All right. So, refreshing. We're going to be going to the top four after this. Houseplant won his last game. So, let's see how that looks here. I think his tiebreaker is a little bit too low. So, not quite going to make it. And two games. Two games to finish. I don't know. One of them might have some relevance on the tiebreaker. So, we're going to, we're going to kind of hang tight until that happens. But as it's currently looking right now. So, we have Scrambled Egg Special, Subutai, Dustman, and Platypus in the uh, top four. So... 
There, there are some tiebreakers that could affect it, though, because there's still a couple games going. We have Pasha, who was um, winning a lot of matches. And I believe Pasha might actually have a chance of qualifying, too. Yeah, Pasha is on two wins, I think. Let me check. No, just one win. Okay, but he did play some of the players, so he could affect the tiebreakers. And, and I believe Flamaster, as well, has a chance of affecting the tiebreakers. So we'll just hang tight for a couple minutes until the top four is ready. Does Lady Turin have a favorite faction? Wood Elves. Yeah, Wood Elves. Anna is a big wood elf enjoyer. That's hands down her favorite because she grew up in a forest. So for her, like the aesthetic of the wood elves is really cool. Yeah, and that, the wood elves are, I like the wood elves. Of all the elves, I would say my ranking would probably be wood elves, dark elves, and then high elves would be my least favorite in, in order. I, I love dark elves though. I think dark elves are super cool. You got like hydras and medusas and shit. That's so rad. So cool. Dwarves would be much better with anti-infantry slayers. Something to mass. Um... Well, dwarves are already pretty good against infantry, honestly. Dwarves have access to tons of firepower against infantry. Blasting charges are amazing. And their baseline infantry are pretty resilient. Like, yeah, slayers slayers are definitely very good. Yeah, they're very good. Very good indeed. I have no idea what dwarves are going to get in an update. Round finished? Hell yeah. All right. Thank you, Flamaster. Hope your tournament went well today, boss. Let's refresh this. And everything is done. All right, so we got Scrambled Egg Special, Subutai. The only undefeated player today in the early rounds was Scrambled Chad Special. Oh, yeah, Nurgle all day. So we got Nurgle, we got Greenskins, um, and then I know Platypus is playing Tomb Kings. Uh, let's cast the Platy game. That'd be really fun. We'll do that. Platy's a great player. Great player indeed. All right, so let's advance this to the top four. Everything's looking fine and advance the top four. Yes, yes. Let the Nurglings feast. All right, so let's see the top four is appearing. And um, so we got Platypus versus Dustban and Supertai versus Scrambled Egg. I actually want to see if Nurgle can beat Greenskins. So let's put it to a poll. All right, so top four. And we got Supertai versus scrambled egg special and then we have uh platypus versus dustman very fun very fun games and platypus versus dustman good luck have fun thank you to everybody else who played tonight um and dustman is playing what dustman is playing lizardmen okay so lizardmen versus tomb kings or i think i want greenskins nurgle so I want to see if it's possible for Nurgle to win that. In my experience, Nurgle usually loses, but I'm taking notes tonight, man. Lobby code, please. All right. Thank you. All right. Cool. So we got the lobby code for old Subutai. Him and I are pals in real life. We, we play, he's the only person that plays Old World with me. He lives, he lives kind of far. Well, about an hour and a half, but we meet up and play every two weeks or so. All right, what the hell? Does he have a fancy lobby code or something? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Uh, wrong password. Wrong password. I don't know what his password is, but we'll figure it out. All in due time. Dwarves are missing. Doomseekers, Cult of Grimnir, Slayer Pirates, Goblin Hewer, the Thunder Barge, Demon Slayers, and I forget if they currently have Dragon Slayers. Yeah, I don't think so. Cool. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look to be the right one. Oh, maybe that lobby was the old one. There we go. All right. Okay. Okay, perfect. It was just the wrong lobby. Uh, got it. Got it. Was wrong lobby. Okay, so we got the Greenskins facing off against Nurgle. Man, I don't know how Nurgle deals with the Mass Error Boys and just like the fightiness, you know, that the Greenskins have. It seems tough, but yeah, we're not in the we're in the semifinals right now. So currently, um, and by the way, if you ever want to follow the tournaments, you can go to Total Tavern and um, check it all out. And it'll show you what like where we are in the tournament. But I've advanced to the final four. So you can see the final four are going to be Platypus, Dustman, Subutai, and Scrambled Egg Special. So we're doing Subutai and Scrambled. Um, Scrambled's Nurgle for Screenskins, and then we have Lizardmen versus Tomb Kings on the top. So Tomb Kings made top four too, which is pretty exciting. So 
We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Dwarves getting a war wagon would be really funny. Oh my god, imagine how toxic that would be in land battle. I, know, I think land battle has a lot of restrictions on war wagons. I think you're only allowed to have three. Yeah, which is, which is whatever. I mean, I don't know. Are war wagons really that oppressive? Like, is the Empire really that oppressive of a faction that you need to limit one of their better units? I don't know. Like, I don't see Empire being oppressive in land battle. I see them being good and decent, but... What does corn need to be viable? Corn needs a lot. They need a lot of buffs. They need to, they need like a priest character that has like prayers similar to runes. They need to get buffed in their melee prowess, in my opinion. Mark, the dumbest thing ever is that Mark of Corn makes their melee, like it lowers their melee defense. I think they should remove that penalty from Corn. It's really haggard. Like, just remove the penalties from the marks, you know? It should make them unique and cool, not like shitty. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah, corn needs. I'll, maybe I'll make a video on how to fix corn. Rune magic isn't bad. Like rune of slowness is good. Wrath and rune is pretty pretty decent. Um, probably just those two are the only really viable ones though. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this match goes. This should be a fun one. Um, the map is for the semis. Did I accidentally put the same map twice in a row? No, it's Glinty Two Scrag. Okay, this is. I did win this matchup in a tournament a couple weeks ago with double Soul Grinder cheese. Um, I don't know if that'll work tonight. Glinty, Glinty Tooths is map. <clears throat> All right, just making sure they get the right maps. Yeah, Rune Magic is pretty haggard in campaign for sure. In, in multiplayer, it's, it's niche. It's niche. It's not like terrible, but it's not great either. Not having magic, your faction needs to really make up for it another way. You know, like dwarves make up for it because super high leadership, great armor, um, it's just super stalwart, right? Even their like cheaper units have high armor and good leadership. Corn doesn't really like corn isn't that much better of a fighter than like Nurgle or Slanesh, right? And they don't have magic also to boot. So it's it's a couple things that are a little bit tricky. Dwarf goat cavalry, that would be something. That would be something for sure. Oh yeah. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's have some fun, man. Top four is upon us. The players standing ready to fight. Greenskins versus Nurgle on Glinty Tooth's Crag. Kind of a choke point map, which can maybe help Nurgle. But the only downside is the Greenskins have like a huge firing position on that hill, which they can just bombard Nurgle from. So I actually think that Subutai, I don't think he would do this because he's more of a more of a meta style player. Um, except he plays vampire counts, which aren't meta. So in some ways not, but, um, doom diver catapults. I think going double doom diver catapults on this map could be disgustingly strong. Uh, cause if Nurgle tries to bring in like Festus or a, um, soul grinder, you can just kill them pretty quickly with those. Speaking of Dune, saw that. Yeah. The Dune movie was great. I, I, I didn't mind the changes too much, you know, like in the first movie, they changed a handful of things. Um, <clears throat> but like it was pretty insignificant. Like they changed, um, you know, they changed Shawnee's dad, you know, uh, but I didn't know whatever into, into the mom. It, 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 none of that matters. So that was, who cares? That was an insignificant change. It was totally fine. The actor was great. And this one, um, you know, they cut out the, uh, they cut out a handful of things. I don't want to like spoil anything for you guys, but these are just like differences from the book. So I guess it's not like a spoiler, but they cut out the, um, the child that Lady Jessica is, is pregnant with um, in the books is already born at that point. And it's like a talking two-year-old who's really creepy. They cut her out, which probably is for the best. That probably would have been really haggard with CGI. And like it would have been kind of corny maybe. I wasn't upset they cut that out. I thought that was fine. Um, a couple other things here and there. You know, like the, the characters and the way they act and... Like, I don't remember, like, Fade Rautha in the books having much of that kind of, like, warped sense of honor where he, like, is like, oh, good fight to the guys he kills and stuff. I just remember him being, like, a scheming, kind of cheating, you know. I, I But I actually liked him in the movie better than the books. I thought that was good. Yeah, they cut out Thufir. He wasn't there. Because in the books, Thufir gets captured by the Baron and is, like, subjugated by him. And, like, the Baron implants a kill switch in him, basically, and forces him to work for him, you know. Why didn't they use guns in the first movie? Because it was all guns in the second. Um, so in the first movie, well, the personal shields are a big deal. 
on Dune. That's why like guns aren't as commonly used, but where you saw guns being used in um, the second movie was during the spice raids. So when like the Fidekin and, and Paul and Shawnee were raiding the spice, the guns were being used by the Fremen to destroy the machinery from a distance. And also, you know, mostly it was still knives though. Like when it's uh, like person on person, it was mostly still blades, except when there's like a high powered gun, it apparently nullified the shields from what I could tell. But yeah, book fade is a bit of a boring villain. Yeah, I agree. He's not as good. And in the, in the movie, I thought fade was better. Yeah. I, I thought fade was one of the best parts about the movie. I thought that he was, he was awesome. He was really good. Yeah. No one can be Patrick Stewart as Gurney. I, Patrick Stewart's Gurney was fun. Have you guys seen that? Oh my God, it's like the most haggard thing. So the David uh, Lynch movie, um, Patrick Stewart, Battle Pug. So in the original, um, yeah, here we go. This is like the corniest shit ever. So in the 1984 version, here's Patrick Stewart. He plays Gurney Halleck and he goes into battle in one of the scenes holding a pug. So he has like, he has a pug in his arm in this fight scene when the Atreides, who just like looks so haggard. Oh my God, look at this. He's got a battle pug, dude. Oh my God, it's so haggard. The 1984 one is, is something, it's a, it's a weird experience. You could tell some drugs were being done when that movie was made. The Fremen got fixed, by the way, in June Spice Wars. So they, they had a hot fix this week. Yeah. The David Lynch one is fun, dude. It's not bad. It's just janky. It's really corny. It's really corny. Yeah. They could have just had a four-year-old like in the David Lynch Dune. They could have. Yeah. Patrick Stewart is a Chad. Yeah, oh, Patrick Stewart's the man, dude. He's great. I mean, how can you not like Captain Picard? Captain Picard is the man. Oh, dude, this is like the exact build I brought. It's very close. I went Warriors instead of Plague Bearers. That was the only difference. So Scrambled Egg Special with the uh, double Soul Grinder build. This is like Nurgle's only only way to really get this. So what you do with Nurgle is you use the Soul Grinders to kill the archers, okay? So these fat chunguses, they sit back and they use their bombardments to kill all the archer units. And once the archer units are dead, Nurgle can actually win the fight. Yeah, they can win the fight. So we got Plague Bearers, uh, Triple Plague Bearer here. We have the uh, double cultist of Nurgle, as well as Festus the Chungus Lord. Festus is going to be doing spell spam, so he just has stream as well as uh, Miasma, which is going to be triggering the uh, Children of Nurgle passive and healing the army. So, yeah, it's basically just use the cultists as well as the uh, soul grinders to kill the archers, and then you just grind them down. That's basically how you do it. Why do people bring plague bearers against greenskins? Uh, plague bearers have a lot of HP, so they have like almost two thousand more HP than a warrior. And they hit really hard compared to a warrior too. Now, very weak against missiles, but it's kind of a bit of a gambit because by going for plague bears, which only cost 700, uh, you save you know 150 gold, and it allows you to get the soul grinders and the cultists. They're both viable strategies for sure. Yeah, they're both they're both viable. Now, looking at the army here, I like this from Subatai. I think this is a great tech. Azag is awesome at sniping Festus. You just fly over Festus's head and spam Spirit Leech on him, and then you dive him and snipe him. And if you manage to do that, you basically just win the game. So Subutai is on a run today, man. He took down Houseplant in the first match, not an easy foe. And um, he's going to be having to take on the Scrambled Egg Special now, which is another very tough opponent. So, But, you know, once you get to the top four of tournaments and things like that, you know, you're always going to be having tough foes. It's it's everyone everyone who gets there is pretty good. So Archers in the back are uh, going to be Orc Air Boys and Orc Air Boys. We got some Trolls moving in, so it's going to be River Trolls and Squig Herds. And the green tide is going to be moving up and around. I would imagine maybe some horsemen get called in from Nurgle here. He's already going to be starting the Spirit Leech on Festus. Interesting. So it will do some respectable damage. But Festus with his healing elixirs should be able to heal back up to full. But it's clear that Subutai is expecting him to get healing caps. And is just trying to move that along. And, and get all that healing off the table and uh, go from there. So I think, I think Scrambled Egg has slow internet. Every game I cast with him is a little bit laggy. So hopefully it's not too bad for you guys. But it is what it is. You got you to gotta get off that Wi-Fi, man. I'm telling you. it's uh, Just get that hard wire. Run it across the house, under doors, over the ceiling. You know, all you can do. Yeah, Greenskin's got a swarm coming and a pretty big blob in the middle as well. River Trolls are going to be the call-in. River Trolls are decent. You don't really need the armor on them against Nurgle since they have like plenty of AP. Uh, so just getting the cheaper troll, the River Troll, with the minus six melee attack or is really not bad. But it's Nurgle in time, and for Subutai, he just wants to make sure his archers don't get shrecked. Shooting Orc Warboys is also pretty cost-effective, I would say. 
You can see Subutai is doing a little bit of dodging. He's trying to get his uh, squealing pigs down here and uh, going back and forth. And uh, the Soul Grinder is just kind of sitting there and saving their ammo. Uh, Scrambled Egg's a pretty seasoned player. He's not going to let that happen. But yeah, the Azag tech is really good. Um, and Nurgle might not have brought anti-air, right? Because Greenskins aren't really known for having an air force. So he might have been like, oh, I don't need throwing axes. I don't need uh, Furies or anything to keep Azag honest. And in this case, uh, yeah. He's going to continue terrorizing the skies. He does also have these slag as slashes. This was a really good item. He gives melee attack and leadership to nearby units. Incredibly strong item. But yeah, Festus is also kind of beat up. And Scrambled Egg did not bring the, uh, what's it called? The uh, Fleshy Abundance. So he's relying on the Elixirs to heal, which is a little bit slower. It takes time. It's 0.10. It's not insignificant, but it does take a little bit of time. Total War Slideshow, baby. Let's go. You got to love it. Gamers still use Wi-Fi? Dude, you would be surprised. How many people in our community, I like, I play against them, they lag. I'm like, are you on Wi-Fi? They're like, yes. I'm just like, oh my God. How, is, how do you do this? Why do you do this? I actually don't know where Scrambled Egg is from. I, I, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's, it's a tricky thing. You know, Total War is a peer-to-peer -peer game. So, it, it, and it's a shame because it has all the makings to be like a top-tier RTS game. With a little bit of proper support, you know, from CA, um, some efforts. Like Total War Warhammer could be like, it already is a modern classic in my opinion for RTS. But... It could be pretty next level if it got like consistent bouncing and like like quick hot fixes um, for like blatant issues and also got like servers. This game could be like god tier in terms of multiplayer. But hmm. so the battle is on. Soul Grinder shooting up at the Savage Orc Air Boys. They're going to be missing. Subutai is going to be moving in with his Orc Air Boys, maybe. But like the thing is, Nurgle's the one who has to advance here, right? So it's Nurgle in time. And for Nurgle, um, how do you play this? It's tricky. Pushing Objective 3 is a little bit dodgy. Subutai is camping really far back with his army to keep the Soul Grinders out of range. And he's going to force Scrambled Egg Special to move up, right? So he's playing it correctly. Subutai is using his magic. He's, um, you know, getting the good value with Azag on, uh, on Festus. And Festus is going to be approaching his healing cap a lot quicker than you would expect, that's for sure. Soul Grinders pulling back and Double Plague Bear sitting on the side. I think you got to go for like an Alpha Strike here on the top. Yeah, this is good. So we get two Marauders called in. Uh, Marauders will lose the Savage Orcs, for sure. Savage Orcs are pretty good at butchering lightly armored units. Almost 40 weapon strength in Fizz Res. They Savage Orcs will get crumped by demons, though. The Plague Bearers will annihilate them in combat. I use Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's rough, dude. It's rough. For, like, competitive Total War, like, Wi-Fi is just so brutal. I mean, I, I was in a college situation where we had to use Wi-Fi for one semester, and I remember, like, raging so hard in StarCraft because I would just be lagging. This was, like, when Wings of Liberty came out in the, back in the day, and it's just like, ugh. It's rough, man. It's really rough. Up in the sky, though, Azag, another Spirit Leech down. Festus at about 70%. Nurgle is going to be prepping to push the high ground here. And uh, that's the idea, I think. You just, like, leave your Plague Bearers here and, and move here. And then just go for this with everything and use your Soul Grinders on the high ground to get cost-effective shots, right? Uh, we might see Azag go for a dive on a Cultist. He totally could. Uh, he could attack a Cultist character and do some good damage. Soul Grinder shots ripping, but honestly, he's not getting that much value. I don't know why he shot a Goblin unit. I mean, he does do some okay damage to it, but the Savage Orcs are right next to it. I'm not sure why he would take that shot here, but yeah, he needs to play the objectives quickly, though. If you let the Greenskins get too far ahead, you're going to have a pretty bad time. So Festus is healing still. Uh, Lore Passive has not been activated. It looks like the Wounds profile is in full effect here, so he is uh, currently uh, he is wounded. I'm too weak. Although, has it, has it gone through yet? I don't think so, no. I don't think it's actually the first tier of wounds has gone. Wi-Fi isn't always bad these days. A good router and a clear line and you won't have any issues. Uh, you'd be surprised. With peer-to-peer, because -peer, like, the thing is peer-to-peer -peer connection like already taxes you because it's like connecting to like another person's internet and you don't know where they are. They could be in Europe or America, Asia, you know, wherever, South America. So you want to already have the best situation and the, and the most stable connection you can have. Soul Grinders get a good shot there finally. Those Orc Air Boys get wrecked. One tactic that's really good in this matchup is to send uh, your cultist characters to get surrounded, okay? So if you're playing Nurgle, you send your cultists to get surrounded, and then you use the uh, Soul Grinder bombardments on top of them. What Scrambled Egg is not doing at the moment. Now, Greenskins are coming down from their rat's nest. We see Subutai advancing with everything. So he's got a big onslaught coming. In the meantime, Scrambled Egg does have some Plague Bears and Forsaken there, and Nurgle is going to be trying to get going here. So here they come. Festus does get blasted with the Spirit Leech again. He's going to be uh, approaching that healing cap, like I said, very, very quickly. Hmm. Imagine somebody with Wi-Fi and a VPN. Dude, don't put that evil. Don't put that evil. Yes. 
And look at this, Azak going in, taking advantage of his good sniper abilities. And he does miss the first attack. Nurgle cultists are pretty resilient. They don't have super high melee attack, though. So Azak should be able to connect. But Supatai looks like he doesn't want to stay there. Is going to be backing off. And we do see the Miasma Pestilence going down on the Orc War Boys. A good target. Is going to fend them off for now. And now we got Marauders against Savage Orcs. And on the flank, Squigs and Archers are going to be getting in position. And Festus needs to get up in melee to make sure he's providing healing. In the meantime, the Soul Grinders are able to get some decent damage against these Savage Orc Air Boys, but there is going to be a second one coming in. Soul Grinders definitely want to switch their shots onto that bad boy if they can. Uh, currently, as it stands, they are targeting the uh, Orc Cavalry in the back, which isn't a terrible idea, but Archers are the antithesis of Nurgle. It's like, it's the worst situation for you. Subutai pushing all three points, is it, which is interesting. Uh, so he's going to be attacking into the Plague Bears. I think this is a bit of a mistake here without the Archer's support, but when the Archers get up, you get these two bad boys. Then you can start moving up. Just let the error boys tear down the plague bearers. And then from there, you can start advancing. So, so here we have it. Squig's going to be nibbling away into the plague bearers. Spirit Leech going down on Festus the Chungus Lord back here. And he's getting close to half health. He's got to be kind of threatening that, uh, that you know, healing cap here soon. And I don't know how this happened, but Subutai managed to slip through here with some orc savage orc, or excuse me, some orc biggins. And he's actually attacking the soul grinders with the anti-large attacks. Talk about very cost effective. I mean, he should just stay there and keep grinding, but it looks like he's going to be getting his charge off into the Plague Toads, and they'll do some respectable damage there as well. Festus once again getting Spirit Leech. It looks like it just wore off. Azag going to be popping in, and on the backside, we do see a lot of the Nurgle units getting pounded pretty hard here, as this is going to be some Marauders getting wrecked up in the front line. We do see the Marauders losing to the Greenskin Troopers. Plague Bears, though, do win their fight against the Greenskins. Uh, Plague Bears are actually decent against Squigs, too. They hit quite hard against Light Armor, so they can kind of wear them down but it's Nurgle in time man he's keeping the value close which is all that Nurgle really needs to do to win this so error boys in position and now the green going to be threatening the objective number two so pushing on all three fronts you can see the green skins value starts to spike when the wall goes down because their whole army just gets absolutely sauced and error boys will wreck plague bears you can see these plague bears are losing their fight against the savage orcs and the forsaken here taking a very rough fight too the forsaken got a downhill charge but it was into goblins which sure they'll massacre but squigs are anti-infantry armor piercing so Squigs are an excellent counter against Forsaken, although the Forsaken might find a way to win. But, you know, even still, that's like 350 plus, you know, a couple hundred. So looking at the value, though, Scrambled Egg Special is creeping. And Azak does go in for a bit of a gooning attempt. He does land, gets another Spirit Leash. If Festus were to be killed or driven off the battlefield, I don't think there would be much that Nurgle would do from that point. I mean, they're really relying on their magic. Having access to that spell spam and the streams of corruption, which you've been seeing, it heals the entire Nurgle army every time he does that. They kind of pick slightly similar banners, which is a little bit troll, but, you know, it is what it is. So Objective 1 is currently owned up here by the Greenskins. Objective 3 by the Greenskins. And down here, it looks like Nurgle is able to hold the line. The Forsaken and Plague Bearer tag team did break through the Greenskin chaff front line. You can see the Goblins are going to be running. And the Forsaken also bum-rushing down. And, yeah, they're just absorbing those shots like absolute champions. And one of the arguments for Plague Bearers instead of Warriors also is that Plague Bears have more HP so they can absorb their counters like Squigs very well and they benefit more from percentage-based healing. So Nurgle using their uh, lore passive is going to be doing that, right? So once again, the wall goes down and Scrambled Egg Special is actually up in value here. They're cackling pretty hard, but Greenskins are up on points. So if the Greenskins can just maintain a hold on two objectives for a long time and then just fall back and win on their last point, that's going to be pretty big. Azag being hunted by the Soul Grinders, and Soul Grinders are pretty good body bodyguards. Festus is a healing cap, so he's getting a little bit danger low here, but the fact that the Greenskins are behind in value and Scrambled Egg Special is, um, excuse me, healing a lot, that's going to be really, really tough for the Greenskins as this game goes on. So we see a lot of Toads, a bit of air fire coming in though. Savage Orc Air Boys doing what they can, and here comes another nice charge from the man. It looks like he decides to pull back at the last second, realizing it was a little bit dodgy. Tear route going down to the river trolls. Looks like they're completely broken. Is he going to get old uh, Festus? Spirit leeches obviously are quite good. Festus does get hit again, I believe. Really close to his healing cap. 2,000 HP. Azag is not the tankiest of boys, though. He only has 32 melee defense. Um, so he needs to retreat. Soul Grinder's getting a lot of damage on him. This is not good for Subutai. This is really not good. If the Greenskins lose their lord, that is a disaster. Now, on this side, is there going to be a counter push coming in? We see the Greenskins on the high ground. Orc air boys cackling wherever they can. Shoot again to the uh, Plague Bearers. Plague Bears versus Night Goblins. Oh, the Fanatics have been loose. The OP Fanatics clubbing through these guys, taking them to the club, taking them to the candy shop, baby. And that is uh, that is good value right there on those Plague Bears. Plague Bears are pretty close to crumbling down. And this is what where Nurgle struggles in this matchup is when they have to push. They can be picked apart by the missile fire and the mobility pretty hard. But on the defense, you know, it's certainly easier for them to fight in this uh, static position here. 
But Azag does get back, and now we see a healing cap fest. Is this objective still being held by the Greenskin? Subutai needs to get up to 1,000 points before his opponent gets to 500 um, in order to uh, win on the one objective. We're going to see if he's going to be able to work it. But Nurgle does have some Nurglings on the point, and uh, Nurgle's got a lot of units here, guys. We see a big pocket of Nurgle here. We see Double Soul Grinder, we see some Rotter Horsemen, Toads, Nurglings, and the Greenskins are extremely tattered over here, right? Beat up, beat up, beat up. Like, they're not looking to be in good shape here. We do see the Fanatics coming out again. I love that he's actually using the Fanatics, and they get their balls in chain, and they swing in. They're going to be clubbing some Plague Bearers there. Pretty awesome stuff, and uh, that's going to be a lot of damage, too. You can see the Plague Bearers get melted pretty good by those Fanatics, so... Don't sleep on the Fanatics, ladies and gentlemen. Don't sleep on them. Nurgle also taking the Greenskin home objective. So the Plague Bearers and the durability of the infantry doing well. Uh, he needs to get these goblins up on the point, get some of these bad boys reinforcing. The Orc Boar Boys or the Broken Tusk Mob should be able to defeat the Plague Toads. This is a big upset because in my experience and what I've seen, uh, usually you see uh, Nurgle um, losing this matchup. Usually. Yeah. I've seen it one a couple times, but usually it's like a 70-30 matchup, I would say. Another Spirit Leech going down from Azag. He's trying to take down old Festus, the Leech Lord, but this objective has now been taken by Nurgle, so the Plague God ca uh, cackles his day. That is for sure. Nurglings here with their Sundered Armor. Not that it matters too much. They basically don't really have armor anyways. And Subutai's going to need to get a lot of archers online and maybe kind of reconvene in the middle and try and re-secure these objectives because he's currently triple-capped by Big Grandpa Nurgle, and uh, hopefully you guys don't mind the lag. I mean, it's really cool getting to see like these uh, the off-meta factions doing well against competitive players and uh, competitive factions, but... Yeah, the lag is a little bit tricky. A couple Savage Orcs did rally back here, trying to take down the Marauders, but the Marauders should be able to defeat them 2v1, no problem. Archer's coming in for old Subes. He does have the Orc Air Boys, and they're uh, they're wearing down the old uh, Plague Bears there. Slowly but surely. And the Broken Tusk Mob, I believe, is still in combat here. They should defeat the Toads, but the Cultists are still there grinding. We got one Cultist there. Pretty good fighter as well. And Azag needs to finish off Festus. He really needs to get that pick if he can. Nurgle seems to have stabilized on many points, and the Greenskin Daka line seems to have run out of steam. We see Orc Air Boys kind of facing the wrong way. Um, a not a lot looking great, and now the triple cap situation is very much out of the picture. As Nurgle is up 10,000 against 7.5 against the Greenskins. And there's no, I don't think there's going to be too much coming back here. I, I think that that's too much of a value discrepancy. Nurgle's army is very Chad. And remember, they still have two full health soul grinders, which are terror causing monsters, which are excellent fighters too. 8,000 HP, high armor, good combat stats. Um, still have a little bit of ammo left, and they're just bombarding all these archers down. So you see Nurgle in a mass pursuit here. Toads just hunting down the remnants of the Greenskin forces. The Greenskins are going to try and reconsolidate in the middle, which is smart. I think like getting your bearings, consolidating, getting some picks on the much slower Nurgle army is going to be the only way that maybe they can find a way back into this game. But overall, it's not going to be easy at all. So Festus is hanging, and the Nurgle army, is it going to concave down here and try and swarm on this objective? Or are they just going to play defensively and say, come at me, bro? I feel like it might be a come at me, bro type thing. We'll have to see. Subutai must have been in a battle with a battle pug in his hand. Yeah, of course. Oh my god, the battle pug thing is ridiculous from that movie. Negative 28 leadership, and uh, yep, that swamp thing is going to be sent back to the swamps. That is for sure. Cult is still trolling about, and it looks like Nurgle does get collapsed on this objective, so the Greenskins are able to consolidate. Maybe Subutai could cheese, like, cheese out a win with mobility and taking advantage of the fact that Nurgle's army is very slow, but like the Soul Grinders are a good rapid response unit. They can, re they can respond and help fight against some of the bigger threats. And you can see the two Soul Grinders are going to be heading down there. Uh, Festus is going to be staying up in the high ground, probably to avoid being sniped. I don't know what the um, Spirit League situation is like. Could be a couple more for Azag. He invested so much in Spirit Leeching Azag, and if he doesn't get the kill on that, that's basically dead value, right? Azag needs to go down, because that tanks the leadership of the Nurgle army and gets rid of the AoE healing. Because right now, guys, Nurgle is just sitting here healing. Festus is healing all the HP of these units while his healing elixirs are on. It's really, really good. So here comes the old uh, Boar Boy squad. So here they come. Yeah, we got the Orc Boar Boy Biggins here and the Broken Test Mob over there. Yes, yes. I uh, don't think they're going to find too much success, though. Festus is moving down there. He's playing a dangerous game. Could the Greenskins weasel this back? We do see more Air Boys coming and more Archers. Okay, they're going to start shooting at the Marauders here. And the Cavalry are going to be swarming onto the Soul Grinder. Soul Grinders with point-blank shots actually doing a lot of damage. And these Broken Tusk Mob Boys and Basic Orc War Boys probably going to get terror routed here. You see a couple Marauders of Nurgle flanking in, so the infantry support nearby is very clutch. And a lot of the Piggies do get trapped up here. You see the Nurgle, uh, Nurgle Warriors doing very, very well as the Nurgle Marauders. A very cost-effective unit. Poison's an incredibly good stat in this game. 
And the fact that Nurgle has it on their entire roster is uh, quite good. Do we see another Spirit Leech? We don't. And this is how you would try and come back if you're Super Ty, is getting the Archers back online, right? But there are Shielded Marauders now and a Cultist. The Cultist is going to take 10 years to kill with like Ar Archer Fire. A couple Squigs maybe can nibble on him, but I don't see them easily getting this objective back from Nurgle. And Nurgle's got their, their feet. Oh, man. Double Plague Bearer on this objective. Man, the Plague Bearers are going to be so, so hard to kill. So hard to kill. But yes, that is likely going to be um, GG for Nurgle, I think. It's, it's too, it's, it's, Subutai just doesn't have enough time. Maybe after a while, if he was able to get Festus and route him off, maybe. But I just don't see that happening. I think Azag is just, just going to be, you know, maybe getting the kill on Festus in the fourth quarter. Greenskin's going for a bit of a second push here. We do see Squigs coming in, Orc War Boys, a couple Archers, and the Orc War Boy Biggins might be able to do something. But the Forsaken getting a downhill charge here will be quite good. Orc War Boy Biggins are absolute trash against infantry too. They only have 22 melee attacks. So if they're against like things that aren't big, like Forsaken, for example, they're going to get ripped to shreds. So the Forsaken get in, they get a nice charge there, and uh, Nurgle is holding on to the point, like it, uh, like it, you know, like it's something very precious to them, something that belongs in Grandfather Nurgle's garden. But the old Plague Bears, yep, 11,000 HP is super meaty. On the high ground, we do see some uh, some squigs get in, and yeah, they might be able to kill a couple of Nurglings. But overall, there's a Plague Bear unit there. The points are getting very dangerous close. Subutai does get a nice goon though. So he finally is able to take down Big Chungus. So we see Festus, uh, what the hell is that? That's a weird animation, isn't it? Oh, that was the Spirit Leech. Oh, I was like, uh, those little ghosts that are popping out. Oh, look at his bat. Oh, I like that. That's cool. It spills over. That was a nice little touch. But yeah, that is going to be the Nurgle Lord dead. So if there ever was a time for the Greenskins to take advantage of that, that would be now. The Nurgle leadership is going to be tanked down a little bit. Nice Spirit Charge by Subutai. He does get around the back, but Plague Bearers don't really care. So I think a lot of you guys can start to see why Plague Bearers are maybe good in this matchup. Just their resilience. Like Chaos Warriors might break. And they would also have their armor punished very heavily by Trolls and Squigs. Whereas Plague Bearers are only punished by Archers, really, in this matchup. And we do see four more Fanatics being loose. Fanatics right through the middle of that Plague Bear unit. On the high ground, is there any chance for the forces of uh, the Greenskins to get this? Azag's going to need to maybe try and help clear this out. But there's just so many tanky boys. The Nurgle units have such high HP. It takes so long to get them. Nurgle gets all the jiggle physics they do. It is very, very true. All right. Objective two. Nurgle's got it in their clutches. I think there's literally a 0% chance that the Greenskins can get this objective back. The Soul Grinders, well, I guess he could disconnect. But the Soul Grinders are just so tanky and they cause terror. And the Greenskin army is very tired. It's been fighting a long time. Uh, Azag is okay against Soul Grinders, but he himself is very beat up to the point where he probably couldn't even take on one Soul Grinder. Objective number one here is looking to be... Uh, Looking to be Nurgle owned. Family owned, yes. Papa Nurgle. Papa John's. Plague bearers and toads chewing through the uh, little goblins right here. So we do see the goblins getting nibbled. And yeah, I, don't, I just think Subutai doesn't, probably doesn't grasp how over this game is. Uh, currently his opponent's at 1,400 points. He's got the soul grinders. It's looking, it's looking tough. A very good attempt by both players. Yeah, Subutai had a great run today. You know, he brought the green skins, but I'm happy I didn't ban the green skins. They were being banned in some SFTs, but I don't know if you really need to. They're good, but like... You know, Scrambled Egg made that look like it was, you know, pretty solid for Nurgle. And Nurgle's considered to be one of the worst factions in the game. So, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, there's still a lot to be explored in the old meta, ladies and gentlemen. Still a lot to be explored. Not much left. 1455 or 14, uh, yeah, 1455 here. Cult of Summon's going to be going down. So the gateway to Nurgle has been opened. Grandfather's Garden is going to be breaching into reality here. And what I think I'm going to do for the Grand Finals, by the way, guys, is I'm going to let them play and then have them send me the replay. And then we'll just cast the replay. Because uh, I think Scrambled Egg's internet is a little bit haggard. So it'd probably be better than sitting through lag and whatnot. Um, unless you guys want to see it live, we could try. Um, but yeah, it seems like every game I've cast with him has been a little bit laggy. Yeah. GG, well played. 1499, and the Greenskins were defeated by Nurgle. What planet are we on? All right. Must be in outer space. So, we're going to refresh that. And let's refresh the brackets. The top game was won by Platypus. So, we have Tomb Kings versus Nurgle in the finals. All right. So, let me tag the players here real quick. Platypus versus um, Scrambled Egg. Go ahead and play without me. And send in the replay. No, I would play a land battle game in between. So, it's not like it's just going to be boring. Yeah. Send in replay. It was. <laughs> All right. 
So platypus for a scrambled egg. Do it. Send me the replay. And um, now if anybody wants to play land battle, we'll do it. So Soul Grinder's got 2k value each. That's really good. Yeah, not bad at all, man. Not bad at all. Very, very clean Nurgle play. I'm taking notes. Okay. So this can be a T land battle. So if anybody wants to play, come and get some. We'll do the pillar of bone. Yes. We got to go back to the bone zone, baby. Don't want it to lag too much. Guys need to get off. <laughs> All right, so they're gonna play their match. We got platypus. Uh, the FFA might take too long. Oh, we could do an FFA, I don't know. Do we, do we want, let's see what you guys want. So I don't know if we could get four players in here. Uh, intermission. Do you want FFA or um, battle 1v1? Oh, no worries, man. You're here just in time for the grand finals. So those two should be playing. And um, you guys put it to a vote, what you want to see. We'll let it run for a minute. Bretonia is very good. Bretonia is a very strong faction. Uh, cool, man. Oh, Blitch, you can post that kind of stuff. I, well, there's nothing wrong with posting it. Post old white dwarf stuff. But yeah, yeah, send it to me. Yeah, sure, if you want me to look at it first. Oh, wow, you guys really want the FFA. I mean, the question is, are we going to be able to get enough people for an FFA. So you guys need to you guys need to step it up then and join up. Uh cuz it looks like we're doing the FFA of the gods. All right. So do not join if you have haggard Wi-Fi connection, please. But we have four spots open. If you're new, just you need to download the map pack, the Total Tavern map pack. Otherwise, you won't be able to get in here. Um let's do a little wood elf action. I feel like playing some wood elves. Yeah, we're going to do that. All right. Very good. Okay, go ahead and play finals. Okay, outstanding. So they're gonna do it, just making sure it's very clear to them. We'll see if we can get enough. Currently, no champions have a rose. It's always hard to get community games going with the map pack thing, because they probably don't have it. A lot of people don't. Uh, you go to, you go to the workshop. So if you want to get the map pack thing, you just need to go to the steam workshop. Okay. And then you just do total tavern. You just type total tavern and it's going to be, it's going to be a pretty well review. You'll see it. It has, it has a lot of reviews and has all the maps and everything. So you just get in here and do that. So, um, so yeah, that's uh that's that and get on there and then you're going to be able to join. I would disable it, but, um, currently it's, you know, it's tricky. It's tricky hobbitses. Can the dryads for wood elves be customized? They have a little symbol on them. Um, no, this is the ROR dryad. That's why. Although that symbol, I don't know why it has that little symbol right there. We got Flamaster. Let's go. He's going to be on Bretonia. We got two spots left for anybody who wants to join. Come get in here. We need to, if, if nobody joins him and I can just do a land battle or something, that'd be fine too. How limiting is Nurgle without Champions of Chaos? Oh. Uh, you can still play them. It's it's definitely a big nerf though, because Festus is really good and their warriors are very solid. So yeah, it's it's definitely pretty limiting for sure. All right, guys, one spot left. One spot's ruled them all. Oh, he's going Slanesh. Okay, looking very speedy, very creepy. So who do we want to go for our lord? I'm gonna start picking my army in the meantime. <clears throat> we got the Chawi. We have the Chawi Czar. All right, looking good. Okay, and then and we got Bowie. All right, we got a full house, baby. Probably gonna be less laggy than the game we were just in. <laughs> so Slanesh, Bretonia, and Chaos Dwarves. Okay. Interesting. So we gotta deal with like heavy cavalry going bananas, right? Um, for you, we could do the Yeah, I like this and this. So we're gonna do a very funky build. It's gonna be very funky. Green skins and chaos dwarves, okay. All right, so we probably need to bring a wizard, so I'm not a complete potato. So for you, let's get you on the, yeah, which one is faster here? Okay, looks nice. Yes, 
Yes, Precious, let the build flow through you. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I like this build so far. It ain't it ain't too shabby. It ain't too shabby. We've got a fair amount of mobility, a little bit of poke. Mobile builds are are definitely the way in this format. They're definitely the way. We can bring you if we want to. Hmm. Yeah, the cavalry of Slanesh could be scary. They they're definitely are fast and furious. Get that, and then aside from this, maybe we just slap you on like a great eagle. Call it a day. All right, I got a pretty fun build. I don't think it's great, but it'll it'll have to do for now. Flamast, I, I, Azazel is really good. I'm a big Azazel enjoyer myself. I think he's excellent. His leadership discouraging thing is very, very strong. And uh, he doesn't mess around. Yeah. All right. So two of us are ready. The Chow, we are probably just going to go train spam. Just have like a million trains running around or or like mass artillery, I would guess. Um, the players are playing the grand finals right now for anybody just joining. And we're going to play an FFA game while we wait. And then we will um, cast the grand finals after that. Ogres are fine. Yeah, you can play ogres now. They're not they're not like OP or anything. Also, I, I'll play some ogre games. The Chowie. The Chowies are. They emerge. Okay, Flamaster's ready. We're just waiting on you, Bowie. The most degenerate way to play Wood Elves would probably be Sisters of the Twilight with like a double dragon. And just avoid getting taking damage and just like poking and breath attacks and getting value that way. But we're we're having some fun. We have a, we have a famous Hollywood actor in our in our midst here. So we're going to see what they can get done. The Chowie. Yes. I got some free spells, which is great. Not, not Ariel, no Ariel, but Gibson. Yeah. You got to go for Mel Gibson. He's just so fun. I feel like he's actually good too. Like Orion is really powerful. I don't know why he doesn't see more play. I guess it's just, there's more optimal ways to play them when it comes to like sweaty competitive and whatnot. Okay, boys, it's go time. Hammond, what chaos gods would you and your wife worship? Oh man. Well, like in terms of playing, I like Nurgle the most. But if you had if you had to worship any of the chaos gods, oh, they all suck. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Corn just being pissed all the time probably wouldn't be very fun. Uh, Slanesh, obviously, like if you look at the Slanesh followers in the Empire, they're basically just hedonists. You know, they're just in like taverns, like drinking, and you know. Hanging out with the uh, the ladies there. I don't know. Nurgle would suck too, though. Like Nurgle sucks. Like yeah, to actually worship. Probably Zinch. Yeah, I would say Zinch would probably be the best because like there, Zinch at least reveals mysteries of the world and like there's a lot of like knowledge seeking in Zinch. So it's kind of interesting and it's not like yeah, they're all like you know none of it's a great deal. Let's let's be let's be frank here. But all right, so let's get the army blocker here. The Emperor. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a different different one there, but we'll take it. So we got double Zote, and we have some Wild Riders. We have our Hawk character, and we're, uh, who, who do we have here? We have Bowie. I don't know how this is gonna go. We're gonna go like, oh, he, he could Vanguard deploy on me too. I don't wanna get like jumped super hard here. Chad Gibson's gonna be there. And we're ready to go, man. The dreaded screen block right now. Doesn't Slanesh really want to... Yeah, it, it depends on what interpretation of Slanesh you're doing. But yeah, typically Slanesh is like... Slanesh is kind of like... It's... it's How it works is it's it, it's fun at first when you're a Slanesh follower, but then it gets really dark. You know what I'm saying? Once you get really deep in it, it gets really depraved. Um, Zinch would probably be like... Yeah, like... Sure, you might be crazy and shit, but at least you can seek knowledge and be great at magic and... You know, all that stuff. Oh, it's the Chowie. Okay. So we're going to go say hi to the Chowie over here. Um, let's get the Zotes and this. And oh my god, look at this. Look at that. The Bretonians with a Marauder Horseman of Slanesh. He's, he's chasing the poor Greenskin Rogue Idol. So Bowie's got a Rogue Idol over there. All right. What kind of guns do we have? Oh god. Oh god. He's got double artillery. Oof. Oh god. Chad Gibson's going to get it. Uh, dodge it. You can dodge a wrench. You can dodge a ball. All right. Let's get you here. I think we can take this Chowie army if we can creep up on them. Right. So Chad Gibson's going to come around the flanks. He's got some plenty of shooting, but the hills are a bit problematic for him. So I don't know why those guys aren't shooting. There they go. Okay. So we got a shot into the blunderbusses and we retreat. Chad Gibson's going to throw some spears, I guess, for now. We need to get the Waywatchers in range of the artillery. That's like our only chance. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen, though. It seems like hard. Let's go around the outside here. 
And we can get the Way Watchers to start shooting into the Infernal Guard Fire Glaives, right? Chad Gibson's going to run into the Chaos for Warriors here. And you guys can just hang out on the wings, and they can actually circle around here. All right, so we're going to use some Bombardments. So let's do the uh, the call here. Way Watcher is getting good damage into those very expensive units, and Chad Gibson's going to run in and probably get Last Samurai, but we need to flank around the outside. Am I being flanked? No, it looks like those two are fighting. Okay. So we get a lot of damage on the Infernal Guard there. Let's get you guys circling. Good, good. Uh, Zotes can be pulled up now. Yeah, Chad Gibson's there. Let's get him into... Ooh, oh, oh, God. I didn't think he had line of sight. He does. He does. It's happening. All right, so the Way Watchers are just kind of scurrying. Let's get Zotes to come pound these warriors and pound these warriors. And you guys need to just circle. Mel Gibson kind of got the dirty there a little bit. All right, so how can he get away from this situation? Yeah, one of these Zotes does have regrowth, by the way. So we can regrowth Mel Gibson for free, which is really cool. So we get that. We just get it. All right, you and you. Let's shoot those guys. And uh, I don't know if we can actually take those. Are those bull centaurs with great weapons? They are. All right, so Ryan needs to find a way through if he can. We have our, our Way Watchers. So let's uh, get them shooting at these. The Zotes are going to be doing okay in combat. Let's do Flesh to Stone to give them some Fizz res. And we're just going to kind of focus these guys with the missiles. Chad Gibson's going to be trying to get into the secondary here. Let's even get him on those blunderbusses. Yeah, he's getting beat up here. But let's get our caster in and regrowth him again. Still just wearing these guys down. And um, yeah, the Zotes seem to be doing okay. But the Way Watchers are not having a good time. Not at all. I forgot my caster over there. He's certainly... Bowie's doing very good here. He's, he's holding holding like an absolute champ. Uh, thankfully, Orion's like a bit of a raid boss. So that's good. Um, can we get you? I think we can. If we get a little bit of healing in there, maybe. And let's get our Way Watchers like over the top. The Zotes are actually trading very poorly here. So I think we just retreat the Zotes and Earthblood them. Oh god, the Greenskins are coming! Oh! Okay, I actually just got a really good charge into the, um, into the big boys there. But now the Greenskins are ambushing me, so... Pretty much all bets are off the table here. I should probably withdraw um, and get away here. Do I have any more heals on these guys? Yeah, we do. But let's gather Mel Gibson back here. And I need to just escape now. We're going to commit one unit to the fight. We're going to let those Wild Riders fight hard. But I need to escape now. Like, straight up. The Greenskins are ambushing. So we need to get our bearings and get some heals going. Like, 100%. All right. So how are we looking? We have our Zotes. Orion's here. Our Caster can get away. Uh, the Wild Rider ROR did really good. They're actually killing the uh, Great Weapons here, which is good. So that got me some nice points, but overall the uh, Chowies are... Oh, no, it's a different player. Okay, I had, I had them confused. Okay, so Orion needs to heal. Let's get you guys to shoot the Hell's Riders of Slash. Actually, shoot the Horsemen. And uh, we can get some Zote healing going, all right? So we got our little pocket here. We do have good healing. Let's get the Enigmas of Giron to move in there. And you guys move this way. And Orion's got plenty of room to heal, for sure. We do get that, and are we going to get the charge here? I don't think so, but yeah, Waywatcher shoots here, Waywatcher shoots here. Keep the Zotes guarding, and just keep earth blooding and healing and whatnot. Orion can use his his, his uh, throwing attacks too. All right, earth blood right there, and the Zotes can just go bash them, and you can go bash these. I don't know what he thinks is going to happen here. It ain't going to be pretty, that's for sure. The Zotes and Orion will for sure win this fight. Uh, this is an absolute disaster on the other side. The sneaky gets coming in just totally screwed up our plans. It wasn't going well anyway, so I suppose it was it was for the best. All right, so the Slanesh Cavalry is being feasted on. We still have our two Way Watchers. Hopefully the Death Streaks get killed at some point. The Chowie are advancing with the Blazing Beards of Bashar. It looks like they're out of ammo. But we do get the Slanesh Cavalry. Let's get our uh, Way Watchers back. All right. And uh, Chad Gibson needs to get a Hounds of Gibson on these guys. Okay, so we've broken the Slanesh Mobility. The Greenskins are swarming all over the battlefield. Looks like the Death Streaks are offline. Yeah, looks like they're offline. All right. Pull you guys back. Let's get these back and uh, just retreat. How are we doing on... Oh, we're doing okay on points. We need to be the last man standing. That's probably our best bet, to be honest. Um, let's get a lot of you guys going in and just pound these dwarf warriors. I think Orion plus the Zotes should be able to get some work done. And uh, we do have more heals, too. So we can do another heal here. Let's see this. Once these guys gather up. And we just need to wait for the banner of the other one to get in. And there we go. All right. A little bit of lag. Nothing too crazy. Way Watchers are here. Let's save their ammo. I think our beat squad should get it done here. Should do some work, yeah. Although we are getting hit by a little goblin missile. Very scary. We have another free uh, Earthblood there. So we have a lot of free magic in this build. A whole bunch. All right. Let's take down those horsemen. We got to farm some points, ladies and gentlemen. And it ain't going to be easy. Farming Chowie infantry is not what I had in mind. Uh, all right. So let's do that. Get these guys. And we have our Way Watchers. We could try and snipe the Goblin Lord. Did we get those Slanesh Cavalry? We did. Okay, great. So let's move our Way Watchers up. That's going to be fat damage right there from Mel Gibson. That was the um, the bound ability there. 
All right, so he's approaching healing cap. This is a very cost-effective heal, so let's do it. And um, is there any characters or anything we can snipe? Not really. Don't think so. We have the Slanesh Cavalry. We don't want them flanking us. And we do overwhelm the Chawi there and farm quite a few points, which is good. Slanesh is coming back in with its calves, so we're just going to shoot them in the face as they try and move in. And um, do we get the shot? Is he microing? It looks like he is, but we still managed to get some good damage and force them back. That's great. The chat, we have their guns, so we need to start shooting at those and get these damn blunderbusses offline. Yeah, keep fighting here. And uh, yeah, we have more heals when, when needed. I think regrowth into Orion just so he doesn't die would be pretty strong. All right, so let's get back. Use our Waywatchers to snipe the Chawi stuff. Slanesh is over here with Sigvald and Demonettes, but it looks like they're all dying, so that's pretty good. Ooh, we just ate a ton of damage. It looks like that was a Spirit Leech, too. It's nasty. Trying to get these blunderbusses offline, man. It ain't easy. We, the Waywatchers have been shooting them nonstop, and it's um, it hasn't gone super well. Orion is getting Spirit Leech bammed, so it looks like the Deathcaster is uh, Spirit Leeching him. Is that going to be a Buna? What the hell is that? There's some weird effect coming down on my boys. So CRF is looking really good. The, oh, Rampage? Wait, oh no, Slanesh! Slanesh rampages me. Oh, and feeds my spears to the Jowie. All right, we need to save them, though. I can't afford to be, like, losing. Yeah, I'm surprised it wasn't lagging so, like, so much until just now. So we're going to save those Waywatchers, or at least try to. And uh, once again, rip another shot. Blunderbusses are the main problem. But the Greenskin Wah is going to be swarming in. They still have a freaking rogue idol over there. I'm not picking on anybody, dude. I'm in lag glass this game. So me and, and Flamaster are both tournament players, and we're both like in the pits right now. So, yeah, no, we're not. We ain't picking on anybody, my friend. All right, so Zodes come over here. Let's do this, and you can uh, Birdman kid attack here. Let's attack there, nice. Get those cavalry, and you do this, and keep those Waywatchers going. We're kind of like running out of tools here. Slanesh is kind of picking on us a little bit, but we're gonna just farm all these cav and probably chase them off the battlefield. But at this point, let's just put fire on Will on and see what happens. The Chow, we have a big legion of units, man. So Zotes, we need to get you guys away. The Enigmas of Giron need to flee. But yeah, the we've been getting screwed up here. Yeah, we've been getting screwed up by these guys. All right, so let's actually keep them here for a second. Oh, the freaking lag. Okay. So we'll keep you there. And then we can drop a fat bombardment right there on the blob. And that should actually do some really good damage. Fortunately, the Waywatchers are, uh, are, are routing. And maybe we'll get a little something there. I'm not sure. The Enigmas of Giron are shaken and stirred. Uh, that was a good bombardment by Mel Gibson. That was very good. And let's get that one right there, too. All right. Finally. Jeez. Okay. Slanesh has been trolling us. Doesn't he have, like, other things to fight? Shouldn't he be supporting his lord and shit? He's coming after me. All right. So the Zotes are going. Um, do we have enough for an Earthblood? We do. I should probably get both Zotes in there fighting. And Orion should come in and fight. I think we can actually win. The fact that he's blobbing up like this, I think, is going to give us a chance. Okay, so let's get our eagle character and move in. Um, the Waywatchers are there. And now they can just start shooting into the blob too. Cool. Okay, the Zotes are actually grinding reasonably well. Orion oh, causes terror too. Yeah, see, oh, we got the mass break on him. We got the break, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's shoot these fire glaives. Hell yeah. All right, so now this little Sorcerer Prophet of Death needs to die. If we can. Let's make sure we use the hill to line of sight here. So Chad Gibson is going to show this little sausage who's boss. And we need to keep the Zotes at the ready. Uh, you guys can just start shooting here also. See how we're using this hill? We're just kind of hiding behind it. Total War train like that can matter for sure. Uh, Orion, there's no way he loses that fight. But there's an Infernal Castle coming. They're, they're decent little fighters. So we got to wait for them to come over the hill. And then we just bum rush them, right? Yeah. Dude, the Zotes have been pretty heavy metal here. Let's give Orion... Does that guy do magic damage? He does. Yeah. Okay. So let's go. So we're going to bum rush them over the hill. And bum rush, and we will use flesh to stone on the other ones, which are going to be charging into halberds. And let's get the eagles going here, and use another earth blood. Nice, the fat heals, baby. Orion is yeah, he's winning, but he's taking a lot of damage. I think the infernal castle was shooting him too. The damn spirit leeches. Um, Kolkavisha is good, but hopefully Chad Gibson can close that one out. We do get a good charge. Um, the eagles and the zotes engaging well. We crush those. And Orion's at 700 HP. I could run away and use my Javelin, but the thing is, this guy has a pistol, too. Uh, okay, Orion connects. He's at 860 HP. There are goblins coming. Come on, Chad Gibson. Yeah, boy. Let's go. We're still in it. Oh, Orion. Okay, here we go. We got to get the ceremonial spear. Oh, Orion with the steel chair. Let's go. Okay, now he's going to die to that castle, probably, though. We need to, we need to like, get on that. Get you attacking here. Orion's heal cap, so he can't heal anymore. Orion's going to run to the corner of the map. Oh, God, the wolves are coming. The wolves! They're at the door! 
Yeah, Zotes are really cool, man. I like them. I know a lot of Wood Elf purists didn't like them when they came out, but I, I'm, I'm a Zote enjoyer. All right, so Orion's going to cycle charge this guy, and hopefully we can win it. Um, Zotes here a little bit beat up, trying to kill those goblins. We're creeping up in points a little bit. We're, we're not like... Oh, the Greenskins win for sure. Oh my god, they have a, like a full health rogue idol. And uh, there's no chat in this game, which is so stupid. I can't like communicate and be like, hey, we should probably like work together to take on the Greenskins. So Orion gets a nice charge into that guy, and he gets terrified. Um, the Zotes are running out of steam a little bit. Wolves are coming in. I think that Bowie's going to win. His Chad Rogue Idol. Slanesh, like, was weird. They, like, were attacking me with all their mobility instead of helping their main army. It was very strange. Okay. So they're worn down. We have more heals. Yeah, we do. We have some. All right. So those oats are gone and gone. Got some broken Tusk Mobs over there. I guess we could go try and route them off the map real quick, maybe. But we definitely have done well against the Chowizar army. Uh, oh man, the freaking Wolf Riders, of course. Are they gonna break? Come on, break, 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 break. Oh, he's trying to shoot Chad Gibson. No, don't let him block the shot. Oh, Ryan did get shot. That's not good. Let's go throw some spears here. I'll have our eagle cycle charge a little bit. Oh, Ryan's at 64 HP. Uh, why is he getting hurt? Who's even hitting him right now? How is he, how is he taking wounds? Oh, is there some archers over there? Oh, it's these guns. The Infernal Guard Fire Glaives. 49 HP. Come on, Zotes. Oh, we got our other Zotes back. Let's go. The Eagle character is doing somewhat well. All right. We need to get Orion over the hill. Throw your spears. Just get what value you can, buddy. Yeah, Bowie 100% has this. I agree. His arm... He still has a freaking rogue idol coming. Oh, come on, Orion. Throw your magical spear. Dude, Orion's been a beast this game. 3,000 value on Orion, dude. I'm telling you, I think Orion's actually not a bad unit. Oh, God. The guns are coming. Oh, they're coming. Get my bows online. Take them down. Come on, Orion. You can do it. Get in there, Zotes. Oh, my eagle's getting its butt kicked by the Infernal Castle, which makes sense. It's a combat character, so. We do manage to get the heal off, though. Uh, yeah, we're not going to get it. Maybe, maybe if I can run and let the Chowie and the Greenskins fight, maybe. No, there's no way. If my caster comes back, that's some heals. We do shoot those uh, Castellans down, the Infernal Guard. Yeah, they're shattered. Orc Boar Boy Biggins on the way in. Zotes are going to retreat. Okay. Bring it down. I oh, know. He's 49 HP. He's healing cap too. Um, oh, he's targeting me. Oh, can he get line of sight? We need to, like, just peace out, dude. Yeah, it's going to be a Spirit Leech right there. The Greenskin Wa is swarming over its prey now. Orion is still hanging in there like an absolute champ. We're going to try and line of sight this little sausage. Oh, my God. The Hobos are there. Okay, do we have any wins? We don't. Okay, so let's go salvage this. Uh, he's shooting at my caster. Let's attack him with the Zotes here. The Enigmas of Giron, and we could charge him. Oh no, he's coming. Throw spears, Orion. This is your last stand, buddy. Oh no! The go oh, they had the Night Shroud! Oh no, look! It's a little Goblin Hero Squad. I love that. Okay, we gotta, we gotta get back now. Zotes will lose there, probably, but they'll, they'll put up a fight. Okay, so look, 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 the little, little sausages. Oh, my character broke. Oh, I was going to try and pick the Lord. <laughs> oh, no. My Lord, we have fallen. The Wood Elves, they're out of steam. That was a really good match, though. GG, well played, lads. Let me see if I got the replay yet. All right, so I have the replay for the Grand Finals. And uh, we'll be casting that. Yeah, we got Shank, dude. The secret Gobbo mission. I know, I love it. The Night Shroud. Dude, Bowie playing, playing super well. And, uh, yeah, the Chowie lose this. I don't know, it's lagging now, so we'll probably just get ready for the Grand Finals. It's 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 just gonna be the Greenskin steamrolling the remnants of the Chowie. They have a lot of units, and they have a Chad Idol coming. Look, this thing's still going over here versus Sigvald. It's the Duel of Fates. A thousand weapon strength, just punching Sigvald in the face. Look, Sigvald's on the ground over here. It's a pretty cool shot. Yeah, we'll jump out of this. We know how that's gonna end. GG, well played. We'll go cast our Grand Finals. Uh, let me get the intermission up uh, while I set this up. All right. Might need to force quit. Someone's having some serious lag in here to the point where I can't even quit. Imagine if we had peer to, didn't have peer-to-peer, -peer though. Oh, that'd be so nice. All right, so getting the finals ready. Greenskin's got that one, so shout out to Bowie. Well played. 
Bowie, Bowie got it with the dreaded rogue idol build. Who would have thought? That green skin flank on us definitely was scary, but honestly, it wasn't going well versus the Chowie anyways. Their double death streaks just nuking us. All right, so setting up the replay for the grand finals. Been a fun stream tonight, guys. Thank you for joining. And looking good. All right, let's switch this back over. Do that and replays. All right. So here it is. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the grand finals of tonight's tournament. It's going to be two factions, which Tomb Kings have been doing pretty well this season. Nurgle's certainly doing better. I have a, a suspicious feeling, though, that Nurgle's been getting carried by good players. <laughs> a AKA Scrambled Egg Special. I think that's why their win rate is a little bit longer. Meanwhile, only two minutes have passed in the grand finals. No, they finished. They finished. So this is a replay. Uh, couldn't catch the greenskins in the bridge. I moved Cad through the other to hunt pricey watchers. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it was all good, man. You might have needed those guys to win your fight, though. That was a problem. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, spawning on the north side of the map, it's going to be Nurgle, led by Scrambled Egg Special, and he's going to be rocking Festus the Leech Lord. Very, very fun stuff. And we do, of course, have Chaos Warriors of Nurgle as well. So Chaos Warriors of Nurgle against Tomb Kings are great. Silver Shields against any of the Daka, really durable against the Skeleton Warriors and Tomb Guard. They win most of their fights and they look really cool. Plague Bearers are also excellent here. Um, like Tomb Kings are mostly not super heavily armored, right? So having units that are durable and hit hard, it's a win. So overall, I really like the opening and it's gonna be double Exalted Chad of Nurgle. So these guys are just one of the best units on the roster. Uh, they're just insane. They're basically like many legendary lords, 5,000 HP. So they literally have almost as much HP as Carl Franz on Deathclaw and similar fighting prowess. Very, very scary. Did I miss something? Did I miss something, John? Uh, let me double check that. I might've missed something, but I'll check after this game and we'll make sure that we get all the messages. GG, Chaos Dwarves, you are a monster. And now for the forces of the Tomb Kings who are gonna be helmed by a menacing platypus, one of our uh, Warhammer 3 greats. He is here with the Cambrian War Sphinx, which is a good anti-infantry monster. Certainly excellent at killing Chaos Warriors and Plague Bearers, all sorts of stuff like that. We got Ushapti Great Bows, double Bow Shopti with Cetra the Imperishable on horseback. Now, the only reason you bring Cetra on horseback is because he's an anti-large fighter on horse, which means he can fight the exalted heroes of Nurgle and the various characters and all that kind of good stuff. So, Sepulchral Stalker is going to be in the back. Unfortunately, they suck in tabletop, but they're one of the coolest looking units, hands down. Here they're good though, a halberd unit to fight some of the characters like the Exalted Heroes isn't bad. Meanwhile, the Cameron War Sphinx is getting really aggressive. He actually sends this thing straight into combat here. And um, yeah, he's doing it. But this is a very risky overextend because Scrambled Egg is going to be able to attack it with the two champions. And uh, yeah, he's bullying the Ushapti Grapos with one champion while the other champion bullies the War Sphinx, which you certainly don't want. I don't think there's any healing here. So we do see the Sepulchral Stalker shooting at the Exalted Hero. Cetra the Imperishable, does he serve or does he rule? We'll find out in tonight's episode. He's going to be hunting this Exalted Hero with a nice little charge acceleration there. And does he connect? He does. And Cetra gets a lot of damage. He pops the Blessed Blade of Petra. And this Exalted Hero of Nurgle is getting his butt kicked by Cetra. That is a lot. And he does have that sweet, sweet buff on him, which does have the blinded debuff. So very strong. So Exalted Hero is going to have to run back to Papa Nurgle and get a little bit of healing. In the meantime, the other Cameron War Sphinx is forced back. Tomb Kings have called in Screaming Meme Catapults to try and nail down the infantry. And Screaming Meme Catapults are excellent. Really, really good at taking down Chaos Warriors and Plague Bearers and all sorts of stuff like that. So it gets the job done. So a nice shot right there into the Chaos Warriors. Also some splash collateral damage on the Horsemen. And the value trading is very even now. Um, as far as the objectives go, Nurgle does have its clutches on the objectives. Most of Platy's army is skeletons. He does have the Nakar and Warriors mixed in as well, but no Tomb Guard, which makes sense. Um, you know, they're just going to trade down into the Nurgle infantry, so might as well go cheap and invest your assets elsewhere. But Nurgle is being shot up pretty good by Ushapti Grapo, which for me is probably one of my favorite units in the roster as well. And my tabletop army, um, I run six of these guys as well. I run six Ushapti Grapos. They're really good. In tabletop, they're excellent at killing monsters and monsters, uh, characters and infantry and things like that. Hmm. Very, very strong indeed. <clears throat> so they're going to continue shooting, blasting away into the Plague Bearers. So these Plague Bearers are uh, getting melted nice and good-like, and the Catapults are also not being threatened. Nurgle is not very good at diving into the backfield and killing artillery. They can use Furies, but trying to dive Tomb King's artillery with weak units is very hard because of how good Nehekara Horsemen are. Nehekara Horsemen can just beat the brakes off any of those type of threats, right? So now the Tomb Kings are going to be waddling about and trying to get their clutches on Objective 1. So they're pushing off Nurgle, Sepulchral Stalkers, 
with their halberds right here, are pushing back the Exalted Heroes, and the old Cameron War Sphinx and Skeleton Spears and Nakara Warriors are going to be arriving up on the point. While Forsaken are the Nurgle call in, Nurgle will soon be looking for a melee engagement, but Platy is really doing a good job with his, like, his spacing and his positioning and making it kind of uncomfortable for the Nurgle armies. And his Great Bows are feasting. I mean, they're just shooting the entire time at whatever they want. We already have a thousand value on these Great Bows shooting into the Chaos Warriors of Nurgle, so that feels pretty bad. Nurgle's basically just champing it and hoping that their healing is going to be able to outpace the DPS of the Tomb Kings here. So, objective does flip here. Very, very cagey game. Screaming Skull Catapults, two of them are uh, fully functional here. Yeah, shooting with good ammunition reserves. So they're going to be accruing a little bit of value. I can't help but think maybe the Tomb Kings will retreat here and let the Catapults, you know, get a little bit more sustained damage before they move in. Sepulchral Stalkers shooting their laser beams out of their eyes on the Frolicker's Bubon. So the Arwar Nurgling is going to be emerging, and these little bastards, uh, they, they do a good job in fighting. Not bad. Chaos Warrior's getting a little bit wrecked, but now Festus is going to be moving in. He needs to provide healing to this blob to make sure they don't get just folded off the objective. There is a chance that Nurgle could... I would like to see some, maybe some Forsaken through the woods pressing back here because Forsaken would be a huge pressure piece. But Nurgle does flip the objective back. They have a lot of, you know, infantry here. They have high cap weight, so they are able to get that one back there. And now Warriors against uh, Skeleton Warriors. Tomb Kings are going to be forced off the point. Meanwhile... Setra is fighting a bit of a 2v1 fight over here. He's trying to battle these Exalted Heroes, but it seems like he's been taking a bit of a beating. Blessed Blade is active, and the Exalted Hero of Nurgle does get hit and is forced back. Cameron War Sphinx also very, very low, so Nurgle is maintaining his fight here. But every time Nurgle sends forward its range units, they get shredded by the Ushapti Great Bow. And Patra's Incantation of Righteous Smiting, big, big damage buff to the Great Bows, and that damage buff does show in the form of those guys getting wrecked. But Nurgle's inexorable, man. They're pushing forward. I think we're going to need to start see to see some good quality troopers. And maybe Platypus is going to need some Ushapti, like melee Shopti, to come in and kill these warriors. Because Skeleton Spear is sure as hell ain't going to do much there. Kemri War Sphinx kind of takes care of infantry, but he's on death's bed. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit hard to hedge your bets on just that one big monster. Great Bow's trying to snipe down the Exalted Heroes, but the problem about these Exalted Heroes guys is they have a lot of healing on the table still. Festus is going to be able to heal them on this point. It's looking very good for Big Papa Nurgle. Uh, even though Nurgle's behind on value, it's not that much. Nurgle does have a shit ton of healing, so they're able to really endure well. But the Chaos Warriors of Nurgle fighting it out. We do have the Forsaken and Plague Bears pushing up and grinding through the Legions of Nehekara. So the Skeleton Warriors here having a pretty bad time, ladies and gentlemen. And I think we are going to be seeing the Tomb Kings get folded up on this point. It's only a matter of time. And as far as the home objective goes, Nurgle's pushing hard here too. Tomb King's keeping that value close, but I really do think they need something to deal with the, um, maybe some more, yeah, melee Shopti. I don't know. I'm just theory crafting right now. It seems like these two exalted heroes of Nurgle are a big problem. I mean, they're getting damage against Cetra, and Cetra is fighting back really well. He's probably over 1k value right now. Only 500 actually, so not as well as we would have thought, but... Yeah, he is fighting off these characters. You can see their HP is low, and Setra is probably responsible for a lot of that. Cameron War Sphinx charging it again against the Plague Bears of Nurgle. But the back objective is even potentially going to be flipping here as... Dude, I always thought this matchup was really cursed as um, Tomb Kings as well. Although, I guess we're not seeing, like, archers. Are archers even that good? I'm probably not against the Warriors, fam. Yeah, I don't know, man. But Scrambled Egg Special is making Nurgle look like a very respectable faction, which is one of the great things about Warhammer. You'll think that... Factions have no play, and then you just get one person who's really dedicated to a faction, and they can make it work. Um, Corn would probably be hard to do. Oh, dude, I played the original Dune RTS when I was a kid. I did. It was, it was really fun. Anyways, back to the action. Camry War Sphinx uh, bouncing back and forth. Really good micro from Platypus. He's certainly not letting it get caught easy. Over on the middle objective, the Tomb Kings have pretty much lost the point. We do now see some melee Shopti being called in, which is only a summon. Okay, so there's no melee Shopti here. Did you just knock her no, I thought my wife was knocking on the door. It's just the hallway. Yeah, you're good. All right. So the Summon Dush Shopti doing good, though. Able to help crumble down some of the Nurglings. And we do get the Kepra Guard coming in. Kepra Guard, a really good choice. Uh, they do magic damage, so they will absolutely crush Plague Bears and trade OK into Plague Toads because of the high DPS in tandem with their stats and the magic damage. Uh, but even still, we'll suffer against uh, the Festus Drain as well as Plague Toads on top of them with the anti-infantry. So goes both ways. But yeah, Nurgle has stolen the back objective here. The Exalted Chads of Nurgle doing an excellent job. And the Cameron War Sphinx. I can't help but feel these Sphinxes usually don't pay for themselves. Although, you know, to be fair, it was being bullied by two mounted characters, which in theory are very, very good against it. Tomb Kings still ahead in value, but not by that much. Tomb Kings do have good passive healing too. So remember this, both sides have really good healing because the Restless Dead passive is the same as the Lord of Nurgle, basically. Every time you cast a spell, you're healing. So the Tomb King's army has been getting pretty good healing. Granted, their troopers aren't as of good quality, so they don't benefit as much from that, right? They certainly do not. 
So Plague Toad's duking it out. Kepper Guard trying to fight here, but they're going to have a bad time versus the Harbinger of Pestilence. Festus the Leech Lord going to be draining him, draining him down. Nehekar Warriors moving on up, and more and more Toads are on the way in. And this is when Nurgle just overwhelms you with bodies. Like, they seize some little advantage, and then they just are rolling, 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 getting in there, and really, really just clamping down on you here. And Touch of the Imperishable, he said he get about 700 value. Certainly not great. I would imagine the Exalted Hero is doing better. Forsaken pushing into the Great Bows. Great Bows are running out of steam here, and the Sepulchral Stalkers are going to be forced back as well. In the back, Scream Skull Catapults still just dunk it away, so one and two. Wearing into those Marauders. Kepper Guard, how are they looking? They're, they're holding okay considering the circumstances, but yeah, they're battling an anti-infantry monster. They're battling a Mortis Engine. The Arwar Nurglings are going to be good. So I don't think that Kepra Guard are going to be lasting too much longer. These little Turd Burglars are certainly getting some uh, nasty work in there. I think that's probably GG, man. Nurgle is putting on a clinic tonight. I mean, sure, he's down in value by a thousand, but between Festus's AoE healing and the Children of Nurgle, it's likely going to be GG. Let's do a little fast forwarding to see. I suspect Platypus will be giving up soon. And now that this is a replay, we can do this. Yeah, Cetra is dying here too, guys. We see Cetra at 900 HP, and he's getting worked on by that Exalted Hero. The Exalted Heroes of Nurgle are so good. 1300 HP. Sure, one to one Cetra would win, but um, yeah, it, it's not going to be a great trade for him here. And Festus is able to crush the Tomb Kings on the objective. A couple sneaky snakes are on their way up. Catapults did really good work. Those were one of the big MVPs. Tomb Kings are getting a little bit of progress back here, I suppose. Yeah, we do see some skeleton warriors coming out in droves. But with Cetra going down, that's going to be too much. Tomb Kings aren't super high leadership on their chaff. And with Cetra being dead, that's going to be a big penalty. And he crumbles, and it looks like today he's going to be serving uh, the Grand Papa Nurgle. That is for sure. Catapults are doing a lot, man. I bet you they have at least five, 600 value. Uh, yeah, 1,400 value. So somebody in chat said the catapults aren't doing jack. Definitely not true. Uh, 1,400 value on this one, and this one has over almost 1,000 value. They both paid for themselves, and they're one of the only things that is effectively killing Nurgle infantry. One of the only things. Uh, Nurgle's really ahead on points, though, and they could honestly just probably spam, spam Plague Bears and Infantry onto Objective 3. Platypus is scrapping back very well, just showing the caliber of player he is, right? Just very, very strong. Despite being in a losing position, he's fighting incredibly well. And it looks like the back objective here is going to be going to the Tomb King, so they are going to be wrestling that one back. Sepulchral Stalker is moving up, and the Screaming Skull Catapults have done an excellent, excellent job uh, wearing down the infantry here and keeping these plague bears honest. I do like the sepulchral stalkers. Laser beam eyes onto the toads is going to be nice. So they rip their uh, their gaze. And yeah, the tomb kings maybe are back in this. I, there's a lot of pushing coming, ladies and gentlemen. There is a big, big pushing. Yeah, this is great, man. This is great. Looking towards objective three, though, Nurgle's probably going to Helm's Deep it. We do have the plague bears and marauders moving, and tomb kings are going to be desperation pushing. Although the catapults have just run out of ammo. So Platypus going to be sending him back to the Necrotex to replace the skulls and the ammo and all that good stuff. And that's a nice stream of corruption. Fest is still going to make this objective very tough to take down. Stream was beautiful. That was really, really good. Really, really good indeed. So skeletons and skeletons and skeletons. And Nekar Horsemen, which of course have good capture weight at four. Going to be trying, but I don't think Big Chungus Festus is going to let that objective flip. And I don't see any way that Platy is going to be able to get his clutches on this back objective. I don't see any way whatsoever. We got Plague Bears here. We have Marauders. And the forces of the Tomb Kings are going to be just shambling forth, but... That's going to be so hard to take. The middle objective, they do have the capture weight advantage, but they are going to lose the fight because Festus is going to drain them all down with the Harbinger of Pestilence. He himself is hitting at 2k value this game, which has been great. So, um, yeah, GG, well played. And tonight's SFT, baby, is going to be won by freaking Nurgle of all things. I, okay, when I had this tournament tonight, the last thing I thought was Nurgle's going to win this SFT, but Scrambled Egg Special has showed why... He is one of our top players. He's very, very good, ladies and gentlemen. And taking a look at the leaderboard, let's see what position he's at now. Yeah, let's see. Platypus would need to have like Nurgle to beat that probably. Or Kislev, yeah. So Scrambled Egg Special has just taken over the number two spot in uh, the Total War, uh, Total War Warhammer uh, tournament scene. So you can see him and Serkia are uh, first and second. So he has jumped up a couple spots with a 67% win rate. Very well played to the Scrambled Egg Special. And uh, yeah, things are getting fun. Things are getting wild, ladies and gentlemen. Hell yeah. Let's get it. GG. Well played. All right, guys. So that's going to be it. GG. Well played. Appreciate all of you guys playing tonight. That was very fun. Oh, I think Tomb Kings can definitely beat Nurgle. Definitely. It's just, you know, Scrambled Egg played really well. And I, I think Houseplants build wasn't perfect either. So... 
but you know, ha- uh, not houseplant, excuse me, Platy. Platy is a, of course, a probably a better player than I am, but um, you know, it's easy for me just watching from the outside to, to say things, but yeah, he, um, Tomb Kings have a two and two record against Nurgle. So yeah, it looks like it's 50, 50 this season so far. Yeah. Turns win rate setting at the blessed number. It's right. I'm at 69%. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not switching. Hey, your Ethron, your did I see you sitting in Artosis' stream earlier? I could have sworn I saw you in there. I, I usually watch his streams and I think I saw you in chat. Anyways, that's it for tonight, guys. Take care of yourselves. See you around and um, big congratulations to the Scrambled Egg Special. What an absolute Chad. And uh, that is it. Take care of yourselves. Adios. Dovizenia. Oh, and hold on a sec. Somebody said they, I maybe missed something. So let me check here. Hold on. Uh, just check in one thing real quick. Somebody said they might have sent through something through uh, Streamlabs. So I want to make sure I read the message and check that before we close it out. That was you? Yes, I was. I knew. I knew it was you. I recognized you. All right. So, yeah, continue. Sure. Okay. Okay. And uh, just check in. Let's get it. All right. Nope, looks like I didn't miss anything. All right, we're all good. GG, Ravenous Moose, thank you for becoming a new channel member. That was a lot of fun, man. And to Sean, your turn. Thanks for the years. I'm Haggard Entertainment. Keep it coming. Sean, you got it, man. Appreciate you guys. All right, that's it. See you guys later. Adios. Dobby Denya.